It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. It is so great to be here on a lovely Wednesday afternoon in New York City. And my, oh my, what a show. What a lineup we have lined up for all of you. Does that make sense? What a lineup we have lined up for all of you. A lot to get to on today's program. And yes, we broke the news on Monday's show, and I mentioned it today on social media. This is our last show before a little spring break, if you will. A little Passover break for me, a little spring break for everyone else. Uh, you know, sometimes you just need to go away for a little bit. And, uh, well, the main reason for this is due to the fact that, uh, you know, my kids have off and everyone needs a little bit of a break. So here we are, last show before that break. We'll be back on May 6th, so the Monday after UFC 301. And how about this? We're going out with some big ones. You know, some big ones on the show today. Dare I say some big guns joining us on the show today. And so let's not waste any time because we have a massive guest standing by. Later on in the program, we are going to be joined by uh, Michael Chandler. Obviously back into the show. We like to shoot on Wednesdays on the nose and the picks will be back into the show. So stay tuned for that. Michael Chandler is going to join us at four o'clock to talk about his fight against uh, Conor McGregor at UFC 303. Yan Chaonan in her first interview since her loss to Zhang Weili will join us at 3.30. Uh, at 3 o'clock, Mike Perry is going to join us to talk about April 27th, uh, Knucklemania 4 against Thiago Alves. At 2.30, Oscar Del Hoya is going to join us in studio to talk about the Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight. Yuri Prochaska is going to join us at 2 o'clock to talk about his big win over Alexander Rakic. And Bo Nickel is going to join us at 1.35 to talk about his big win at UFC 300 over Cody Brundage. Is that good enough for you? Oh, wait, there's more. The brand new UFC featherweight champion, the pride of Georgia, the pride of Spain, in his first appearance on the program since he became champion back in February in Hanheim, in defeating Alex Volkanovsky. He has taken the world by storm. It has been one of the great celebrations that we've ever seen bestowed upon a new champion in this sport. I'm talking about El Matador. Ilya Teporia is here to kick things off. Is he there? There he is. Mi amigo. My friend, Ilya. what an introduction. How are, how are you? I am doing great, and it's so great to have you, and it's so great to see you. You're such a big star, Ilya. No, I thought you'd be too big for us at this point. I see you all over the place at the Bernabeu no, with man. the president. I thought I thought it was done. I thought our time was done, so it's so nice to have you. Yeah, I, to be honest, I had a great experience since the, since the fight, since the finish. So, yeah, I, really, I'm, I feel really grateful and thankful with life for all the moments that it's giving me. I can't imagine. C could I ask, when you dreamed about becoming champion and everything that would happen, I know it's only been two months since the victory. Did you dream of this, or has this exceeded your expectations, what it would be like, what it would feel like after becoming UFC champion? To be honest, like it, it's been more that, that uh, expe ex uh, the expectations I had. And it's not about the, the quantity of the people, it's about the quality, right? The, the love I received and uh, appreciated, uh, the el amor, the love. el cariño. Yes. It, it, yeah, the love I received, it was, it was amazing. So, yeah, and what by, can I tell you? And I'm by the way, happy man. Did, you, did you just get married like a couple of days ago? Yeah, I just got married like two days ago. Wow. It was like unofficial. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do the official party in Spain. We did just like a small celebration with the with my my wife's family in Miami because they live there. So we're gonna do another official celebration here in Spain. Incredible. Well, congratulations to you and your wife. And uh, I I even saw like the night of the victory, you had like a a baby reveal celebration plan, yeah. right? It's that's we have another baby girl coming in. In July, in a couple of months, I have one boy, and now another girl coming. Do you, do you ever sit back? Do you have time to sit back now and say, look at all these amazing things that are happening to me? Look at all the blessings in my life. It, it's like it's like one <laughs> after the honest, next. I didn't have any time to enjoy 
all these moments, you know, because I had to do a lot of travels. I had to, I don't know, do so many things. But as I told you, I'm I'm very happy to 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 have all these opportunities because I dreamed it once. I asked for this life. So right now I'm I just try to enjoy the present. Uh, as far as the night goes back in February in Anaheim, you posted a clip um, on your social media right after where you were you were talking to yourself before you walked out um, in, in, I think, yeah. Spanish. You were saying something to yourself. What were yeah. you saying to yourself just as you were about we're to go through the tunnel? I was saying to myself, like, I can't feel any fear. God is with me. He going to will this, this battle for me. I dreamed this moment. I asked him for, for all this, so... Everything good is on the another side of the fear, so I just have to enjoy the process. How many times have you watched the fight? Oof, so many <laughs> times, and it's every time I watch it is so special, you know, because I dreamed it, and now I have to the pleasure to, to see it and repeat it and see it again and again and again. So. <laughs> Happy man, as I told you. Yes. Um, a big talking point going into the fight was that you had world champion and 15 and 0 in your Instagram bio, but I noticed that's not there anymore. Is there any particular, there's now like a quote there. Is there any reason for the yeah. switch? Yeah, because right now my, my goal before this, the, the, this fight was to become a UFC world champion. Right now I'm the UFC world champion, so I have a different goals right now. I want to be a legend. I just write the, the history right now it's time to to write the, the legend yes okay so now you're on to the next chapter i do have to say uh seeing you just a few days later walk out in, on the on the pitch at the bernabeu with all those legends there and seeing you kick the ball like this is not something that ufc champions get mma champions get seeing you with the president of spain seeing the attention that you got in georgia and in spain when you landed seeing you with Leo Messi and all those, like, this is, I don't know if we've ever seen anything like that. You know, even with the likes of Conor McGregor, this type of reception. And so I'm wondering if, if you have any sort of idea as to why it's been so big. Why do you think you've connected with so many people? Why do you think so many people are so excited about this? Because I called the show before. I, I, I was saying to everyone, like, I will become a USC world champion because I sacrificed a lot of things and this and that. And, I think they find they find like some kind of inspiration and motivation in me, you know. That's I think it was the main reason that I get so much love from them. It, it wasn't because I, I just became a UFC world champion, you know. This is my thoughts. Yeah, I think so. But yeah. what has been, if you can choose one, I know it might be hard. Like the most special thing that has happened to you since becoming champion. What's the one thing that has stood out above the rest? The day when I get back home, I sit in my couch and I watch my fights. The like repeated. It was like, wow, wow! I'm watching my dreams becoming in, in in reality. You know, I can watch it in TV and repeat it how many times I want. You know, that's something amazing. You know, because you you dream it so much. You you dream that moment so much time in your life, and you feel that fear. And I don't know, you have so many deep conversations with yourself. And when the day comes that you can, you go back home, you sit in your couch and you can watch it like repeated. It, it's something amazing. When, when you see... That was one of the most special moments for me. There were a lot of videos that came out of people celebrating, people outside in Georgia. I think some family members of yours crying and stuff like that. When yeah. you see those videos, how did that make you feel? It, yeah. It makes me feel very, very proud and and happy. You know, I don't know. There is so many emotions involved in, in involved in, in in that. You know, because I don't know. I don't know how to explain. You, know, I'm 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 just happy. I'm just happy. Fair enough. Um, okay, so here we are. You're you're the champion now, and of course, there's uh there's a lot of talk about when you'll fight again, where you'll fight, who you'll fight against, <sighs> all these things. So let's talk about some of these things. Um, first of all, you are at UFC 300. You are sitting in the front row. Did you go there specifically yeah. to get a good look at Max, or was there another reason why you were there? Yeah, I just uh, I was just hoping him to win because if he was uh, he was to win, I was supposed to fight him next. So he did a great job, to be honest. 
the, the, the greatest moments in the fight, we all know, was the last 10 seconds. Without that, I, I didn't like the fight at all. But what, what makes that fight special it was the last 10 seconds, the real bad motherfucker moment. So you have to you have to give him his his credit. But yes, uh, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna share the octagon uh, until the end of the year, and you know what's gonna happen, and you know what what I think about that. Okay, I, I want to ask you specifically about that, if I can, in a second. But you said you didn't like the fight leading up to the last 10 seconds. No, I, Why didn't you like it? Yeah. Because, I don't know, I didn't see any any technique. I, don't, I, I didn't see any strategy. I didn't see any power. I didn't see any, anything. You know, I didn't see any head movements. I, I just see, a, a, like, a, a bar fight, you know? Even the last 10 seconds. It was amazing as a fan perspe- per, um, perspective. It was great to watch. Yeah. But before that, I didn't was impressed at all. Do you think all the the excitement over those last ten seconds has has made people kind of think about the fight differently and and uh, maybe forget some of these things that you're talking about? Like, in other words, do you think the last ten seconds has has kind of overshadowed the other four rounds and you know four minutes and fifty seconds? Not overshadowed because you have to give him the, his credit, you know, because he did a great champ. He was winning the fight and he risked his fight in the last 10 seconds, you know, because he could be the one who, who get knocked out. So he, 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 he like, he acts as a bad motherfucker. He deserved that win and you have to, you have to give him the credit, but fighting with me, it's going to be like completely different because I don't, I don't make any step backs. You know, I, all the time I walk, I walk forward, I can wrestle, I can go to the ground, I can punch you and I move, I go inside that cage with, with that strategy. You know, I, I just, uh, I just, I don't go there just to throw some punches, you know? Mm -hmm. So he, what he didn't do, he didn't in in ninety minutes. We all we all know we, we I did it in nine. So he get beat three times by by Volkanovski. Actually, Volkanovski is a, he was a great great champion. Just imagine how bad motherfucker Volkanovski is that he beat three times Max Holloway. So um, seconds after the fight, they showed you on camera, and a lot of people have said afterwards that you looked scared, that you looked rattled. Can you tell me what you were actually thinking and feeling in that moment? You know when they showed you on camera seconds after his fight in the front row over there? So uh, to be honest, I I didn't even realize that I ha- I had the camera on on, on my face. I, I was just, I think I was talking to Israel, then I was like looking around and all that, so, but it is what it is. What can I say? What, what were you feeling in the seconds after? After seeing that? I don't know, man. It's like, mm, I know what's going to happen when we're going to share the, the octagon. I know that in reality, he he's not so good that people think he is. You just have to see his face, you know? He looks like he had an accident in a motorcycle with, with, without the helmet, you know? Um, in his post-fight interview, he said, um, "There's a there's a matador who's running away. Come, you know, sign the contract, things like that." What what do you think he means by that? Why does he seem to think that you're running away? Actually, the UFC saved him for this moment because I asked about about Max before before the World Cup fight. I was I, I I was just asking for him all the time. I wanted to I wanted to fight him. I want to fight him. Finally, they gave me Volkanovski. Because they hide, they hide him for for this moment. Mm-hmm. So, so is it fair to say if if the UFC comes to you and says, "Okay, who do you want your first title defense to be against?" Are you saying Max Holloway? For sure, Max Holloway. He's the next. Okay, um, he's the next. The the reason I ask that is for two reasons. He, Number one, he can say whatever he wants to say that I'm running and that he's the bull and this and that, come on, man. Just bring the same energy you, you had in the last 10 seconds, but bring it in the first 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. And we'll see what's going to happen. Let's bang. Do you... Let's bang and we'll see what's going to happen. I know that I will be the first one to take his lights out. I know that I'm way better than him everywhere. I can do with him whatever I want to do. I, I, I just can ask him, like, 
how you want me to finish it. You want me to knock you out? You want me to submit you? What, what you want me to do? Is that part of the motivation to be the first guy to knock him down, knock him out? Is this something that you want? Yeah, there is a lot of things involved in, in, in this fight, you know. He got that belt. He has that bad motherfucker belt. So I'm excited to 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 add that, that belt to my legacy too. UFC champion, the bad the baddest motherfucker. What else? And so if, if he and does, then maybe we go for the for the second weight class. Right, and I'll ask you about that in a moment. But if he does fight you, will the BMF title also be on the line? Yeah, of course. Without the BMF belt, I don't want him at all. If not, I'm gonna fight with, with Walk, who deserves more than him, the, the rematch. So that's what but I want. Because he, he has the, the, the that belt, I'm excited about that. That's okay. why I want him. So he didn't. He he he's being saying like I, right now I have a lot of a, a lot of options. This and that. He didn't have any options. I'm the champion right now. I choose the date. I choose the 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 the, the place. So he just has to be ready, and he has to wait for the call. Whenever I want him, he has to be ready. Mm. So what do you say to people who say that Volk deserves an immediate rematch? Like, you can't say that he, he, he didn't deserve it because the guy deserved it. He, he's been a uh, world champion. He defended the belt for six or seven times. I don't know. He's been a, a pound-for-pound fighter. He's actually a great, great fighter. You know, very, very technical. The most technical guy I, I, I fight ever. So... There's a reason he's being a, a, a world champion, you know. But I think he does. He needs more time for 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 the recovery, you know. Because even if you fight until the end of the year, and I'm I'm knocking out, um, I'm knocking him out. It's gonna be like he didn't have the time to recover. He get knocked out uh, three times uh, in one year, something like that. This and that. I I just want the best for him. I want the best version of Volkanovski. So he needs more time. He needs to recover. Once he's gonna feel like he's ready, we we gonna we gonna run it back. No problem. Okay. I'm here to fight. This is this is my business. You know, my business is to fight. So, so I never choose my, my opponent, and I'm never gonna do it. So you would be okay if you fought Max end of the year and Volk just takes time off and then he fights. You know, let's say in in your mind you win this fight against Max and then he fights you after that. You'd be okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. He deserves that shot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I remember when we spoke right before the uh, Volk fight and you said, you know, all these old guys, like, they're not going to get another crack. This is a new era. So I'm just curious, why yeah. Why do you want to fight? And I proved it. And I, and I proved it. Look, Jai, he has to retire because he, he don't going to get any more of the title shot. Brian Ortega, he don't going to get any title shot, sh shot because he's going to have to make some, some fights, some fights, with with the guys in, in 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 the rankings, so I don't think he he's gonna still winning the fights because um, I see his level going like this. Max Holloway, I'm gonna put him uh, into the retirement. I'm I'm gonna take care of that. Wolkanowski, we all know that. We are, uh, so Korean some he's already retired, so. I prove all the time everyone wrong, you know, because they being saying like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? They being a great champions and this and that, 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 that. But it's time for the new generation. It's time for the new blood. I've been saying this for a long time. When would you like to fight again? What month? <laughs> Me, I'm, I will be ready for uh, since um, September. Okay. August, I don't know, August, September, October, whatever. Always in shape, very uh, yes. always ready, ready to go and ready to kill, never ready to die. Ha have they have they talked to you about when they want you to fight again or what they're thinking or when they have you scheduled? Somebody, ha have there been those talks with the UFC brass? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think they want me to fight in the sphere in, in September. So we'll see how the thing's going to how they're gonna figure out the things? Uh, at the same time, uh, we wanna go in 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 Spain. We wanna bring the UFC here in the in the first trimester of the the next next year. So 
that's one of the reasons I want to fight like in September and October to be able to fight again in the first trimester of the year. Wow. Yeah. So you would be main event for the first show at the Sphere, the, the one in September. Yeah, I think there's no more fights. Me being like co-main event or... No, no, the, I know. The main card. I just meant like that card in particular. That, I mean, that's going to be a gigantic yeah. card for the UFC. Yeah, it's going to be a... Yeah, it's going to be a huge one. Oh, man. So that's versus why Max. I want to be there defending my belt, getting another, uh, another belt, adding to my legacy that BMF belt, which excites me a lot... Be the first one to knock out Max Holloway, put him into the retirement, and bring the UFC to Spain. That's right now my main goal. And 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 what about the Bernabeu? Have there been talks? Um, is that a possibility for that first trimester of 2025? How do you feel? We are we are doing everything to make it happen, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We ha we had a lot of conversation with the Bernabeu. I had a meeting with with Hunter and in Las Vegas with my team. So we we are just fixing the things, and we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time. Right. And and do you it's gonna be? I I truly believe that it's gonna be the biggest event event for the UFC history. Mm -hmm. They, they had an event with 80,000 people. No. The most is 55. They didn't. So this this is going to be the first time that we're going to put 80,000 people for for uh, UFC fights. And and uh, if you fight in Spain, the, the, first, the first event has to be at the Bernabeu, right? You can't do a small stadium there or a small arena, right? It has to be the big dog. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be that one. There's no other option for me. And, and and who's who's the who's the ideal opponent for that one in your opinion as as you envision everything as you laid out obviously Max you're saying Sphere who would be the opponent for that one would it be the Volk rematch or someone else for me I don't know if if Connor beats Mike Chandler we can fight for the BMF belt oh my and one seventy. If O'Malley defends the, uh, his belt, which I have many, many doubts, that's an exciting fight too. So I, have, I don't know. In my mind, I, I see a lot of big fights, you know. Even with Volkanovski, it's going to be huge. I think even if we bring you to fight me <laughs> in Bernabeu, we're going to sold out the arena anyway, so. I have a deadly ready, right, a deadly right hand. I don't know. I just want to let you know, okay? Don't underestimate this right it. hand, okay? Look at this thing. Uh, People have nightmares right. about this right hand. I just want to let you know. They don't call me Mr. 10-7 right. for nothing, Ilya, all right? You had a 10-7 one time, but I get 10-7. <laughs> they, they call you the Mr. 10-7? Ten, ten 10-7, ten 10-7. Seven, ten seven. I get 10-7 ten seven ten rounds. 10-7? Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh you, you are talking to the 10-7. I know. You are the real one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually get them. Um, and 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 let me ask you. I heard that you and Sean had a conversation on Saturday. Is that true? What did you guys yeah. talk about? Yeah, I just told him like congratulations on on your title defense, and he told me like I'm gonna defend my belt. You do your things, and we're gonna build the biggest fight in the UFC history. And this is what's gonna happen if he defends the belt. That's going to be the, the the biggest fight I think in the in the UFC history, and if we 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 make it in Bernabeu, even bigger. Mm -hmm. But he's fighting your friend Marab. So I'm ready, I'm ready for all the things. What? He's fighting your friend Marab, though. Yeah, he's fighting my friend Marab, and I truly believe that Marab's going to walk his ass. But. I don't know. If he does it, I will be waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Then he deserves. He really deserves the the, the shot. If he dominate, he he dominates his his weight class. You you have to give him the 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 chance to to move up to the next weight division. But right now, right, but right now it doesn't make any sense, you know, because he has a guy who is a number one contender. He really deserves the the, the shot. Who is Marab? And I truly believe that he's gonna he's gonna beat him. 
Uh, by the way, I, I spoke to Marab on my show last week, and he was telling me that a few years ago, he, you know, he's hanging out with you, and he he looked at your phone, and he saw all these celebrities who would write to you on Instagram, and you were like, nah, I don't care. Like, there were so many unopened messages from celebrities, from from famous people, from models, from things like that, and you're like, you're not even opening them, because you said, I need to be focused. And so now I can't imagine what your DMs are like. Do you ever have interactions with people with famous people, with anyone who reaches out and say, I can't even, I can't believe like what, what my life has turned into, the people that want to talk to me, the people that want to reach out, the people that I've inspired, the people that are rooting. Do, do, you, do you have those moments when you think back to you as a kid and you're trying to you know come up and now the whole world For wants sure. to talk to you? I, 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 I've been like a couple of days ago, I, I, I meet Messi. I've been talking with him for, I don't know, for five, 10 minutes. We, we've been talking, uh, I don't know, about so many things. So... Yeah, of course, I get a lot of DMs, but it, it, it's not like I don't care and this and that, that I respect every people who, who text me and who, who want, I don't know, who wants me, who wants to reach me, you know, to to tell me, hello, how are you and all that. I respect always that. And I text a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Could I ask, was that the first time you met Messi? Yeah, that was the first time I met Messi. He was like the one of the persons that I always had in my mind that if I see him, I'm going to ask him for a picture. That's the only person, him, and I think Michael Jordan, I would ask him, ask them for, for a picture. And and could I ask, what, what do you guys talk about when you're speaking to one of the most famous people on the planet? What, what are you talking about in the tunnel over there? So first of all, he told me, like, congratulations on your fight, what you're doing here in Miami, and all that when's your next fight i invite him for my next fight he told me like i have to see my schedule i would love to come wow Did you hear me? Did uh, I, you hear me? I I just get the call. No problem. Yeah, i heard that you said you invited him and he said i have to check my schedule. Yeah, he told me that. Wow. That he has to, yeah. So maybe, maybe, who knows? Um, can I ask you, and I'll just, just a couple more questions, then I'll yeah. let you go. Um, your your relationship with your one of your managers, your main manager, Jose, I think is very interesting, Jose Diaz, because he's yeah. a very young man, yeah. right? And I was just he's the man. Can you tell me about how you you know you could you could you could sign with any manager, and and I know you guys have been together for a long time, so. What is that connection that you have with Jose? Because it's cool to see such a young manager, you know, be a part of the success of of a great champion now in the UFC. So my relationship with with him, he's he's like my um, right now the old. He's almost like my my family mem member. You know, I spend more time with him than with a lot of my family members. You know, I I, I love him and I respect him so much because he 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 doesn't work like you don't feel like the, the guy is working he does it because he loves it you know he he, he he loves what 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 he does and i respect that fuck you know he really takes care about me and he's one of the best right now right now in the, in, in the game and yeah i respect that guy he's the best it. trust me i love it um and what about this rap video yeah. there was like a music video there's a song written about you i saw on your instagram what is this this is yeah. uh, El Hormiguero. El Hormiguero. No, yeah. that's a show, but the song is uh, something different. Uh, the song the song comes from El Saico. It's a singer here in, in, in Spain, and my brother Omar Montes, they did this did this song for me. They dedicated it to me. So, yeah, it's a great song. Crazy. It's be, uh, attended here in, in Spain, in the, in the whole world. I believe it. Unbelievable. Look at you. You're having songs written about you. You're on the Bernabeu pitch. You're hanging with Messi. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. A little bit tired today, to be honest. I just arrived here in Spain. I just came from the airport a couple hours ago. No, it's okay. You're great. You're great. And yeah. and uh, in two hours or an hour and a half, we have uh, Real Madrid against Man City. Yeah. All day, every day. Real Madrid. I love it. Um, and, and so finally, um, Ilya, what, what is the, you support Barcelona, right? No, no, I, I don't support any La Liga team. I support Nottingham Forest of, uh, Premier League. I don't have, okay. 
I have no allegiance. I have no allegiance, okay? <laughs> Although they had a tough game yesterday, Barcelona. Sorry about that to the Barcelona fans against uh, PSG. Um, but I, yeah. I wanted to ask you, Ilya, what is the message to, to Max? Because uh, he, he has said a lot over the last couple of days, what is the message? I saw you guys go back and forth on Twitter. You had a, a, like a Bible face-off there. You put out the, the verse. He put out the verse. What is the message to Max Holloway now, the BMF champion? The BMF champion, what's the message for Max Holloway? The, mes the message is clear, right? Just get ready. Be waiting for the call. I will be thinking about the date, about the place, and be ready and bring that that energy that you had in the last 10 seconds and bring it in the first 10 seconds and do the same thing you did, but with me and try that. And trust me, I'm going to put your lights out. I will be the first one. He actually knows that. That's why he started to call out another fight. He started to call out Conor McGregor. And I don't know, I heard so many names he started to call out after the fight. Now, I don't know why he lost the, the interest in to, to fight me. Before, he was like, wow, I want to fight him. He's running from, from the bull. I never run from you. Never, ever. I had your name in my contract. But right now, I'm going to ask for you. And trust me. It's going to be a hard night for you. What, do you. what do you envision? How does it finish? How does it end? And what round? In the first, second rounds, I'm going to finish. There is no doubt that I'm going to finish him in the first second, in the first two rounds. I told you, I can ask him, like, how you want me to finish him? You want me to submit you? You want me to knock you out? How you want you want me to finish him? I can do with you whatever I want to do. Whatever I want to do. I'm be better than him everywhere. Everywhere. So, yes, you were a champion, and you're, you are talking to the current baddest motherfucker in the world. Yeah. And, and so my last question is, how do you not let all this other stuff happening to you right now, all the attention, all the fame, make your head too big and, and, and you know, not focus, not have the same drive and determination and motivation that you had when you were coming up? How do you no, stop right, that? right now I'm going to... I'm going to stop with everything. I did everything I, I had to do. And right now I'm, I, I will be like completely concentr uh, concentrated in, in my training. So I'm, I'm going to go back home and start like full time training. Okay. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do now. And then the plan is? Because, you know, I'm a little bit tired. Of it. Sure. Yeah, it's a lot the of plan stuff. Is, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. But it is what it is. I'm happy. I'm glad that I have so many things to do. Yeah. Okay, so the plan is Sphere, September, Mexican Independence Day weekend, Ilya Teporia, Max Holloway, featherweight title, BMF title, main event, first ever show in the Sphere. Let's go. Let's go. One of the biggest fights, I think, that the UFC can make right now and would be oh, one of the biggest pay-per-views oh, ever. Oh. Love it. Thank you, Ilya. Yeah, Thank you so much. We believe that. I right. believe. Oh, a hundred percent. That's one of the big, I said, I think it could yeah. sell out better. This could sell out Bernabeu, but I understand why they would want it at the sphere, but this would be an instant sellout in my opinion. My man, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's always nice to talk to you. Always and a thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. A great day. Same to you. A la Madrid. Thank you so much. Ilya. A la Madrid. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye-bye. There he is. Have a good day. You too. Ilya Taporia joining us. Um, yeah, that, that would be pretty big. I would say. Taporia versus Max at the Sphere. Sign me up. Imagine they do Taporia versus Max at the Sphere and also Marab and get, get, against Sean as the co-main at the Sphere. Ah, uh, yeah, know yourself. The two Georgian fighters, one going for a belt and uh, the other defending his title. And I like it. I like Ilya say, like, I got the sense at the beginning of the interview. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to talk about, you know, what I've done. I'm not here to talk about the, uh, the media tour. I'm not here to talk about Real Madrid. I'm not here to talk about the president of Spain wanting to talk to me. I'm not even here to talk about, you know, hanging out with Messi for the most part. He had a message, something that he wanted to say. And I think he said it pretty clear. Ilya Tepoy versus Max Holloway, the sphere would be nuts. That sphere show is going to be special. And uh, just think about it, 300 in April, 303, the return of Connor in June, potential Manchester pay-per-view, end of July, 
Perth, August, and then the Sphere, even, even the June pay-per-view. Once we get by this little stretch here, which admittedly is not the best, then it's just like banger after banger after banger after banger. Can't wait. Now, another person who had a massive uh, night on Saturday, a massive week, been a lot of fun watching him climb. It was great to see him back. First time since July. Of course, we're talking about Bo Nickel, who went into the second round for the first time in his career. Always a finish. This time, second round. And afterwards, he was going He was going like this. He was giving himself the old thumbs down. I wonder if his feelings about the fight have changed. We are joined now by the great Bo Nickel, the undefeated. There he is. Hello, Bo. How are you? Doing well, Ariel. How's it going? It's uh, it's going really well. Could I ask first, before I ask you about the fight, and thank you as always for the time. It's great to talk to you. By the way, great to see your dad. Great to meet him. At yeah, the, I did yeah. not expect to see him at the uh, Jorge Masvidal Nate Diaz press conference on Friday night. Of all places, yeah. but it was mm-hmm. it was a nice surprise. Why, by the way, why was sure. he there? Does he does he help Jorge? He he's helped Jorge um, in the past, obviously, uh, just with wrestling stuff, MMA stuff, you know. So they, they've uh, he's helped him train and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go out and support him. I love it. Okay, so that was the night before your fight. But just for you, you know, um, because you were surrounded by all these legends and the card and all that. The week you're you're focused on your fight. You're not there to be a spectator. You're not there to be a visitor or a tourist. Did you have a moment, maybe at the presser, when you're sitting up there and you're like, "Holy shit, man! I'm I'm you know five fights into my pro career here, about to have my six, and I'm sitting next to these people on this card with this pomp and circus." Did you allow yourself to smell the roses last week? And in, in in short, oh yeah, it was definitely cool. You know, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed being part of the whole week. You could just tell that. It was a big event, a historic event. Um, even, you know, I don't have a ton of UFC experience, but in my two previous fights, there was a difference. Um, UFC always goes all out and the production's insane and there's so many moving parts, but it seemed like it was, you know, on 11 uh, relative to the other UFC events that I've been a part of. You know, every other one's 10 out of 10. This one to me was 11 out of 10. And it, it was cool. You know, I'm, I think that it's something I'll, I'll be able to uh, remember and just appreciate that I was a part of it. Um, all that talk going in that you shouldn't be on the main card, you you kind of brushed it off. Did it annoy you? It it, it did and it didn't. You know, it, it annoyed me, but at the same time, I just feel like, um, you know, I'm not I'm not. This isn't I'm not the very beginning of my career, and people are going to get to know me. And there, I don't think that in a year or two years, three years, that people will even bat an eye at that. They'll be like, "Wow, that, that made a lot of sense." Like, of course, you know, he was on the main card, and uh, so. I think that my perspective is always that I never take things personally. Um, and at the same time, I'm trying to build my reputation and these people don't r- r- quite know me yet. They don't quite, uh, um, understand like me as a person or what I'm capable of or what I'm going to do. You know, I have the vision and people are starting to come around and there are more people that are starting to see, but I think the mainstream MMA fan is still, they just still need to get to know me. Um, you have, um, you know, you have all this talk about you on the main card and whatnot. I was just wondering if you ever spoke to the UFC and said, "Hey, why did you put me on the main card? Like, what, what, what is it about me? Did you, do you ask that, or is that something that doesn't need to be asked?" I don't think it needs to be asked. I didn't ask it. I think that the reason, you know, it kind of, it kind of is is obvious in my mind. You know, there's nobody else that's five and zero, six and zero on the main card. So to me, it's twofold. It's one. The UFC believes in me. They have a vision for me. They know where I'm headed. And two, they also know that I'm a draw, that people want to watch me. And, you know, people wouldn't be upset about it if, uh, like, they're regardless of whether they're cheering for me or booing for me or booing me, they're going to watch the fight. And, you know, they, they either want to see me win and smash this dude or they want to see me get upset and uh, lose. So, you know, I think that. Um, I just bring different eyes to the sport that most MMA fighters don't bring. Um, I, I said this in my interviews uh, during fight week, but 90, 95% of my fans aren't diehard MMA fans. They're wrestling fans or, you know, um, moms or grandparents or whoever, you know, th- these are the people that like enjoy me who want to watch me. And I know that because of the people that I'm interacting with regularly of just the support I get on social media, like this is stuff that I pay attention to. So um I can just, I just think that there, there were, you know, multiple reasons and, and obviously, uh, the UFC has that, has that vision as well. So they, they kind of share that, um, foresight with me. 
And by the way, for the record, I'm not asking these questions because I, I believe this. Uh, I thought it made total sense, A, to have you on the card, and I like the fact that it became a talking point where you're like, who cares, right? You get paid the same yeah. if you're on the main card, um, not. And, and what I would say to people who are like, this is so disrespectful. Well, if you're so mad, you should be happy because if you're mad that, uh, I don't know, Yuri Prochaska is on the prelims, be happy you don't have to pay for it. So what are you actually mad about? Like, what's the, this right. is all silliness. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, they're, they're, I mean, there might have been more eyes on the prelims just with it being on ESPN and being free. So, you know, that, that, that's something where it's like, to me, again, it doesn't really affect me. I could have been the first prelim. I could have been the main event. Like, I'm going to fight the same and I uh, get paid the same. And the UFC, you know, they're a business. So they're trying to make money, right? Like that, and, and it's their decision. So they're doing what's going to be the best for their business, right? So that, that's where I'm like, I don't know, the, the, the people getting upset about it. I'm just like, I, I don't know what to say to you guys. It's like, yeah. it's weird. <laughs> it is weird. By the way, is it is it true that in your contract you have to be on the main card? No. No, okay. I like that. <laughs> no, it's not. That's not my contract. <laughs> um, obviously, our, everybody talks about that first interview we had where I said that. And, you know, I, I've had a change of heart, but I don't think that, like, if I'm thinking about it in an unbiased perspective, like trying to take a step back and not be myself, like they're doing what they should do, right? Like the places that I've been, are appropriate. Um, the, the placements on the cards are, are appropriate. So I think that, uh, obviously people took that as me being arrogant, but it's just the reality of the situation. Even when I take a step back and try to look at myself from a, a different per like a different perspective, it's, I still agree with it. This was your first fight in nine months. Did you, did you feel that at all? You had been, you know, relatively active. You're used to being so active in your athletic career, but you took this little break. Did, did you feel the nine month layoff at all? I felt like the only thing it did was get me a little more excited and amped up, um, which can be good and bad. I think that that initial flurry um, coming into the fight, it got a little wild. And uh, that's something that I think can be definitely lack of experience. And also, as you mentioned, the the little bit of a layoff that I had. So, you know, um, I feel like it, it did have a small effect. Okay. You you also mentioned in the post fight press conference that the the three hundred k bonus maybe affected that a little bit. You you were really swinging yeah. for the fences. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was trying to knock that dude out. So uh, I think that um, when I went and watched the fight back, it looked a lot better than the way I pictured it in my mind. Um, but it, so I don't think that. Uh, I was definitely hypercritical of myself and I'm still critical of, of a lot of things, but I, I do feel like I, I can see a, I have a, a more well-rounded, better perspective after watching it back. And so I feel better about it, but I definitely wanted that bonus. That would have been nice. Uh, it's all good though. And I think that, um, there's, uh, that's just a good learning experience for me. What prompts you seconds after getting a second round finish, UFC 300 pay-per-view card to go like this, like literally seconds after what, what, what is it about you and your makeup that makes you feel that way? You know, it was weird. I think that there's a couple things. First and foremost, to me, the result of the fight isn't indicative of how my judgment and how I feel about it. You know, it doesn't matter if I get a knockout in 30 seconds or a decision or even lose it's, that's not, the, the way that I determine, you know, my feelings of the fight, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's more just about how I felt I fought and whether or not I did what I needed to do and did, did my best. And I felt like there were things that I need, I should have done better that I could improve on. And so for me, um, that initial reaction was based on what I felt was just, uh, a little bit of sloppiness and, um, not keeping everything as, clean and sharp and tight as I would have liked to, and also just not being able to show um, all the skills that I've developed and been working on the past nine months. And so uh, initially it's, a, uh, I would say more of an emotional reaction of man, like I wanted to do better and I wanted to do more. Um, but like I said, I feel like after having watched it back there, I definitely still agree with the sentiment, but I don't think it was as bad as uh, what I perceived initially. So do you regret that? Do you regret doing that? No, I don't regret it. I don't really, it's all good. You know, I think that, uh, I'm just, I'm critical of myself. That's, yeah. that's part of what makes me really good. And part of why I, um, have been a successful because I hold myself to 
an impeccable standard. And so um, that that's just kind of a blessing and a curse, right? Like I perform at a very high level, but I'm also just very hard on myself. That's how I feel genuinely. And so I don't regret um, doing that at all. That was how I felt in the moment. And I still think that, again, the sentiment rings true where I do have a lot to improve on and get better at. And uh, I will, I'll make the adjustments. What did you say to Dana and what did he say to you? Yeah. So initially coming up again, it was like, obviously the emotions are running high. And so I was like, I'm sorry, man. I wanted to put a better performance on. Like, you know, that was, uh, it was what it was. And he was just basically told me to like, that like I did amazing. And um, he said that, uh, it was actually crazy cause I didn't expect, I saw him walk over to where we exited the octagon. I was like, what's he doing over there? And it was, I've never seen him do that before where he just kind of greeted me after the flight. And he told me that, uh, I'm going to be, you know, the, one of the biggest stars this sport's ever seen and to keep what, uh, doing what I'm doing and, um, to not, uh, just basically like not let anything, any of that stuff affect me and just keep, keep grinding. And uh, that, that was cool to hear just because out of anybody uh, that can predict those types of things, he's a guy that I would, I would respect uh, his opinion. So it meant a lot to me coming from him. What is it like? Cause you know, you were so dominant in, uh, in, in wrestling, Penn state, et cetera. And now it's not like you have to reinvent your life, but you are, you, you become a debutante and there are things that you feel like you need to get better at. And I'm sure the, the competitor in you wants to go back to that dominance that you had when you were, a collegiate wrestler. So how do you, how do you have that internal struggle and how do you deal with that? That's a great question. I think that what from when I got to college, right? Like I'm an 18 year old kid and I have big, big goals and I want, I want, I'm, I'm kind of in the same place, right. As what I was then. And, uh, you know, people knew me, but I wasn't dominating the way that I wanted to be. And I kind of had this vision of where I was headed and then, you know, you put so much work and time in, and then you get there. And then, um, I guess now where I'm at, I look back on my experience of having already done that. And I feel like what I, in, in, in that previous experience, I was so focused on getting to where I wanted that I almost didn't enjoy the process as much. And now I really love the idea of being a beginner and having the opportunity to get better and improve it's almost like getting to relive that college experience. And there's something about it that's, it's obviously a struggle and it's difficult and there's a lot of work to be done, but it's exciting and fun and cool at the same time, because I don't think very many people get to experience that in their life in multiple arenas, right? Like, you know, maybe you have school where you want to compete and do well, or you just want to do well in your classes and then you get a job and maybe you get better and you get a promotion, but you're kind of staying in that same lane. Whereas for me, this is like, it's a similar lane, but at the same time, it's completely different where I have to learn all these new things. And so I just embrace it and I have fun with it. And now my perspective has, I feel like all the lessons that I had to learn, I get to almost expedite the process with them. And so my focus is just on improving, getting better. It's not on the results. It's not on getting, it's not on just, okay, I just want to fast forward everything until I'm dominating. It's like this, this part of the process is fun and gratifying as well. First fight as a dad, did that feel different? It did, yeah, yeah. I think um, just the the training camp and um, having um, my baby around and stuff is it's. I feel like your perspective and your whole life does have to change just because you're caring for you know just a little soul that like you know it's just it's just a cool thing. I don't think that I was more motivated or anything like that because. My motivation, it all comes just internally. I'm doing this because I love it and because I want to do it. And, uh, you know, I think that the biggest thing was during fight week, I just missed them and missed my wife. And they, they hung back in Pennsylvania. And uh, he's a little too young to come to the fights and stuff, obviously. But uh, I just missed them and wanted to get back and see him and hang out with them. But I think people talk about, oh, I'm more motivated than this that now that I'm a dad. And I'm like, I don't feel more motivated. I just, I just guess like he's a massive priority for me and I love him and I want to take care of him. But I don't think being a world champion MMA fighter makes me any, any better of a dad. Like I just want to be the best husband and the best dad I can be. And then also, you know, this goal of being world champion pound for pound number one is kind of like, that's just something that I'm also doing. It's not like my identity or anything like that.
someone asked you in the post fight press conference, like, uh, what are you going to tell your son about being on UFC 300? And you said, like, you're probably not going to tell your son and maybe kids, you know, God willing, down the line about your athletic achievements. How is that possible? One of the greatest American wrestlers of all time, and, and you're going to be a legend in MMA. You're not going to, I don't, I, I don't know if I believe you that you're not going to tell them about all of this. You know, I just, that doesn't really feel like, uh, something that I need to bring up again, like to me, being a good dad is way, way more important to me than any of my athletic accomplishments or anything like that. So, you know, I think that when my son's old enough to understand sports and to kind of be living his own life, it's, we're going to be focused on him and I'm going to be pouring everything I have into him and doing, you know, loving him and getting him what he needs. And if he's as passionate about something as I am, like, that's what I'm going to be focused on, whether it's, football or golf or tennis or, you know, whether he wants to play the violin, like that's what I'm going to be into. So I don't think that we really need to focus on anything I've done in the past. I don't ever talk about winning. The only time I talk about winning national titles in wrestling or my fights is when I'm getting interviewed um, by, by the media. So, you know, for me, I, I'm focused on again, like being a good dad, that's more important to me than any of this other stuff. That's fair. Um, seconds after your fight, Hamza Chamayev weighs in. I know you've you've seen his tweet, um, but it, it felt like one of the the first times that he's like kind of taking a shot at you, and so I, yeah. I'm wondering what you thought of that. No, it's good. I love it. I love it. I think he uh, the fact that he's recognizing it, and he, I think he sees what's coming too. Um, I think that it's it's good for good for everybody. Good for me. Good for him. Good for the sport. So we're gonna make that fight happen. Um, I would just in response to that, I like to say, yo, who are you fighting at five and zero, bro? Some random dude in Europe. Like I'm fighting in the UFC on UFC 300. So, um, there's levels to this. And I think that people just need to get to know me. The more they get to know me, the more they're going to realize that, um, Hey, like I'm that guy. And, uh, there's nothing anybody else can do about that. I wouldn't be surprising to me if when we fight, I'm like a minus 1000 favorite, the same as I have been in all these other, uh, these other fights. Um, I know it's not going to happen next, but they book you against him right now. How does that fight go? You know, I think I'd do very similarly to him what I did to this last guy. Uh, take him down, ragdoll him, throw him around. You know, he's not a big 85-er. Uh, he, he gets tired. So, you know, is his first round going to be a little better, more competitive? Probably. But if that's if that fight's five rounds, I don't think he makes it five rounds, if we're being honest. And um yeah, that that's to me, you know, kind of a an ass- a general assessment. It, will it be tough at the beginning? Is he going to come at me? Absolutely, but I don't think he's going to be able to really hurt me or do anything that um, inflicts so much damage that I'm not going to be able to just widen the gap on him as the fight continues. Do you think he beats Robert Whitaker? I do. You know, it's going to be a good fight, man. I don't really care um, who wins the fight. The only personal kind of opinion I have on the fight is if Hamza wins, that's a bigger fight for me and him down the line. So, you know, if there's any type of personal bias, it would be hoping that Hamza can win. I think there'll be a challenge for him, but that being said, I, I don't know that Whitaker can uh, hang with him in the grappling. Um, again, I don't really care who wins. Uh, I'm not that invested in it, but uh, I, I think Hamza will probably win. I think a lot of people thought eventually you guys would fight for a title but now, especially after his last fight against Usman, it seems like maybe the jury is out for the first time since he entered the UFC about what his ceiling is. Do you think he ends up becoming a champion or at least fighting for the belt at some point with you involved? Or, or do you feel like maybe, you know, maybe maybe it was a little bit too much, all the, the praise and hype that we were throwing on him? There's a lot of tough guys. I think anytime there's praise and hype on somebody, it probably goes too far. Even with myself, you know, I think that it can get out of hand quick and you know there's there's the negative side there's the positive side and then reality is probably somewhere in the middle um with everybody and so i think that uh with all that considered i do believe that with his skills he could still be champion and um he, he just has built himself such a reputation that guys are scared of him like i guarantee you whitaker's terrified of getting taken down just because of his style and what he's been able to do you know regardless of whether Um, him and Usman had a close fight. Like he has built that reputation and solidified it. The difference with me is just like, I've also built my own reputation. I also know what I'm capable of. And I know for a fact, there's zero chance of him doing that to me, which is his strongest asset. So 
you know, I think that uh, that was what has a lot to the reputation aspect has a lot to do with it um, and why he has won the fights the way he's won them and the why, why he competes the way he competes. But I do think he does have skills that, you know, he could he could be the champion. How soon do we see you again? I want to fight right away. Uh, I'm end of July, August, right in there. So um, for me, I'm ready to go. Uh, didn't even really get hit this fight either. He landed a couple strikes from the clinch and when I was on top of him, but it was more annoying versus like actually damaging. So, you know, I was back in training on uh, Tuesday and I got the Olympic trials this weekend. So I'm coaching guys at the Olympic trials and helping them get ready. But other than that, I'm focused on getting back in there and fighting. Is there a name that comes to mind? Really, whoever, you know, I, I got to talk with uh, the UFC about that and talk with the coaches. I think that I just can't want to continue to fight better and better guys, um, guys that are, you know, I want to start approaching the rankings here soon. You know, it's funny because once you get in the rankings, you don't really need to fight. Like there's 15 guys ranked. I don't need to fight 15 guys to get to the belt, right? Like, right. I only need to fight two or three. So um, it's like if I fight a ranked guy, then it's feasible that within six months I'm fighting for the belt. So I think that uh, I want to get maybe one, two more guys that are a little bit better right outside the rankings. And then, you know, maybe early next year start rank guys uh, and then uh, maybe 2025 fight for the belt. So that's kind of where I see it going. I don't see a lot of people calling you out. I did see Jacob Malkoon call you out. Does that interest mm. you? Maybe, you know, I think he he's definitely been a name that's on my list. I think that, that being said, he doesn't really have like the record or the recognition to be a guy that I compete against. I think he's eight and three. And uh, so it's almost like a step down, um, which makes it tough. Not that skills wise, he's a step down, but the perception and things like that. I think he does have some good skills, but um, it's tough when I'm fighting guys who are 10 and five and everybody is like, this fight's a joke, yeah. you know, this and that, like guys that have multiple fin knockout finishes and in the UFC, like those guys to, are a joke. That's what the media says and stuff. So, um, I, I don't know that that would be appropriate. Like I said, it's almost like if I fought him, well, let, let me ask you, if I fought him, did, would that seem like a step down from Cody Brundage in a way? Nah, I, I would say it's like just more sort of the same yeah, type it's of stuff. even, yeah. right? Yeah. So me, I'm trying to fight better guys. So that that's where, uh, that's where I'm at in my career. Like, you know, I fought Jamie Pickett, obviously then I had to fight our last minute replacement. And now I'm fighting Cody Brundage, who's a guy with a better record, you know, finishes. And, uh, now I want to fight another good guy. So maybe somebody on a little bit of a win streak or somebody that has a little better record. Okay. Fair enough. And, uh, by the way, I saw you tweeting about WrestleMania. You're going to make the yeah, move. Heck yeah. You're going to do it. Maybe. Yeah. Get me in there. Let's go. I think that, uh, it was super fun. I, I watched one WWE event live, maybe, seven years ago it was at penn state and then watch wrestlemania on the on the tv and it was awesome i was like this is freaking sweet so i think eventually um i'll i'll you know dip my toes in that uh arena and see what it's like but i feel like it would it could be good i'm a good athlete and i think we could do some some cool stuff or i could do some cool stuff in, the, in that sport too you versus jordan burroughs in, in WWE. Uh, fight, WWE, yeah, wrestling, what yeah. are we doing? In WWE, I feel like that's the feud right there. With his manager, <laughs> Daniel Cormier, as his mouthpiece. You take on Let's those go. guys. I love it. I'm, I'm here for that. I would prefer to actually fight him or wrestle sure. him, but that works too. <laughs> you guys good now or what? Who, DC or Burroughs? No, Burroughs. I mean, I'm good with everybody. I think that uh, I didn't like what he had to say about one of my teammates and close friends, so... I let that be known, and you know he 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 has a he it's, it's it's him with the problem. So you know he can't really do anything to me at the end of the day. <laughs> did you did you uh, talk about this with DC when you were doing like the fighter meetings and all that? Yeah, we talked about it briefly. He was like, "Well, I was the one that asked the question," and I was like, "Well, he's the one that answered it." So you know you got to be if if you're going to answer the question like a big boy, then you know you got to take the heat too. So I didn't like it. Um, you know, people have their opinion about it, and he has his opinion about it, but. For me, you know, if you're coming at, uh, to me, a family member, a brother, a teammate, then I'm going to step up and say something because I don't appreciate that. So yeah, that, that, that's really all it came down to at the end of the day. It's not personal. Had it been any other guy in his position that would have said something about my teammate, I would have done the same thing. I respect it and, uh, and like that very much. Well done. Congrats on the win, Bo. 
Very, very fun to watch you do your thing, and uh, hopefully now you feel a little bit better about what you did because uh, another press. But I'm sure there's a part of you that hates that your first round streak is over, the competitor in you. Yeah. But it it could be a finish streak now, so you'll be okay. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. No worries. But I, I appreciate your time, Ariel. I got a I got a gift coming your way too. So oh. uh, I'll text you. Send me your address, and I'll uh, I got a gift your, uh, headed your way. A vegan steak because you're a vegan now, right? You've seen the light. <laughs> You like that yeah, one? That yeah. was good. That was good. Well done. Good acting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I, appreciate I appreciate it. it. Thank you, Bo. Congrats. There he is, Bo Nickel, joining us. Um, I do have to let the uh, crew know in the back over there that it appears as though my internet isn't working here. Hopefully, uh -huh. that's not affecting our stream. Not at all. So I don't ha I don't get messages uh, when you guys are trying to tell me anything. So I don't is know. Is your Wi-Fi off or anything? No, no. Um, what do you think? I'm that dumb that yeah, I'm telling you my internet's not working? Um, you said it. Yeah, yeah. But do you need us to go grab your laptop or anything? No, I have a laptop right in front of me. There's just no internet. What I'm part of my to grab internet? Grab your laptop and fix your internet for you. Oh, you're gonna fix the internet. That I mean, the sure. Uh, but now that you've taken this attitude of me, wow. You know <clears throat> Enjoy I, your offline. Yeah, so I can't like. Usually, the flow is Joe tells me when the next guest is coming or what's going I on. I can put it in your ear. Okay, but is the next guest ready? Yes, he's ready. Well, that's the best thing and the most important thing. Okay, well, yes, you do need to tell me because I don't know what happened um, if my thing is not connected. Nevertheless, that is not important because we have our next guest lined up and uh, I'm very excited to talk to this man because it was a big fight for him on Saturday and what a performance. And I thought he was getting the fight of the night. I thought it was a shoe in And then, of course, Max Holloway comes around. Of course, we're talking to the pride of the Czech Republic. Dare I say, the samurai from the Czech Republic, the one and only... Yuri Prochaska. There he is. Hello, Yuri, my friend. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hi, Ariel. It's nice to speak to you. On the streets, where are we? On the streets of Prague right now? Where is this? Uh, on the streets of Brno, my city. Okay. Second biggest city in the uh, Czech Republic. So there I am. Tomorrow I'm going to Prague. So. Okay. Yes, I should have known that. That is that is where you're from. So um, it's great to talk to you. It's great to, to have you here. And congratulations on the win. Uh, we're a few days mm -hmm. removed from the uh, fight on Saturday, UFC 300. How do you feel about the fight? Because obviously, initially, it was looking a little bit scary there for you, and then you came back with the great comeback. So how are you feeling about what you did on Saturday? Man, I feel great. I feel really great that, uh, that I mission was successful. And uh, especially this fight, was for me, uh, I don't want to say like personal, but it was it was for me uh, something something really important important because all that preparation after the fight in uh, after the fight in uh, in New York, uh, it was for me uh, a big fight. So maybe that's why I took that like so seriously. And I was so much focused for for targets targeted uh, the head of uh, or important places of uh, Alexander's body. So maybe that's why I catched a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of punches, and I forgot to 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 play more, to be more relaxed. So that's why. And, and so I'm wondering, you said it wasn't personal, but it was very important because I was just going to ask you, was this personal because of maybe your history with Alexander and because of things that were said at, at, at any point, did it feel personal, different than some of your other fights? Like you mean, uh, because of his, his, uh, trash talk or yeah. his, his, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It was not because of that, but, uh, just because one reason, because of the New York, New York's fight with Pereira. After that one, I felt like, man, this next fight, I have to, I have to give everything in, in a preparation, in a time before the fight. So I was like too much intense. And now I, now I, I'm calm, and uh, I feel everything is on the right way. Is is that good? Like, 
in 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 another fight in another situation should you or do you want to be less intense to put less pressure on yourself in a situation like this or do you need that in order to perform at your best i don't need to like too much pressure on myself but uh especially this one maybe these uh some talking from from alexander uh help helps to to be more in that focus but uh, the most important for me was to win this fight and uh, show that that's the my place that's my space in the cage and uh, no matter what you what you want to do your your punches i don't want to say are nothing for me but uh, i know how to catch a punches and i know how to how to go through like totally, totally through the opponent. So after New York, after the prayer fight, was there any moment, you know, we spoke a couple of times, but I'm just wondering now that it's over, was there any moment where you doubted yourself, where you wondered if you can get back to your old self, if, uh, you know, you'd, you'd be able to get back on the winning track? Did you ever have moments where you were questioning your skills and yourself as a fighter? Sure, yeah. Yeah, That's that was, that was, because... Every time, every fight is showing, not just me, showing all the fighters how we're living, how we uh, doing our preparations, how we living our way in a, in a life. So every fight is for me like the the mirror of of my life, yeah, and uh, because especially when you when you are when you're giving everything in every fight in every training then you then you live good life um, i spoke to one of your managers tim tim simpson last week before the fight yeah. he was on my show and oh. and it was a lovely conversation and and he mentioned that you uh you had to deal with a lot of things going into new york staff infection all kinds of stuff issues that you really weren't yeah. healthy at all and so i'm yeah. wondering if you ever regretted taking the fight if you ever had a moment where you were like ah, I, sh I shouldn't have done that that was not smart never never regret never regret and uh, i took that because uh because the main event fall down john jones versus uh, miocic so i felt like this is my time, no matter what's happened uh, right now. Okay, I am just with uh, one arm. I have staff infection. Uh, there was much more problems, antibiotics, and uh, a lot of things around. And uh, so I said to myself, "Let's go through. Let's go through that. Give everything to 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 the fight, and uh, still in every every time believe." Belief, belief. That's that's it. That's all. But next time, in that case, like I said to myself many times, <laughs> I want to be more professional in the in that. So, so I want to give, I want to give everything. And uh, so that's that mean I need to be healthy for 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 every fight. And and how were you going into this one? Into this one, healthy. Okay, good. Healthy. Uh, of course, there is uh, every time like because we are we we training by fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there is, there is every time every time something, but uh, this time I felt I felt good mm -hmm. because I I was very uh, strict to to be and everybody in my team. That was the first thing in all the preparations to be, to be healthy, to be healthy, and full power strong. Did you allow yourself to enjoy being a part of such a historic card? Did you did you take it all in, or were you so focused that it didn't matter what was going on? You weren't paying attention to it. Uh, in the, on the start of preparation, I didn't realize that how big it can be this uh, this card. But when uh, when it when it uh, when it was closer and closer, that fight, fight night, 
event, <laughs> I felt like so many people. Uh, there is a much much bigger uh, much bigger focus than other events. Yeah. So I felt like it's it's look like it to be it can be a really important night. So I really appreciate it. Doesn't matter for me. It was no matter if I'm on the main card or on the prelims because every fight, every of of that fight uh, from that event. Uh, should be uh should be the main event of of some of some uh fight night and 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 what about this video that we saw on saturday morning where a fan saw you outside the arena <laughs> this is an incredible video <laughs> and especially the yeah. commentary did you see this video of of the fan and he's yeah. he's uh, he's afraid to go up to you like you're a lion in 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 the zoo or something like that so could i ask what were you doing like what time did you go there and why did you go there uh i think it was it was a night time and uh i'm doing that every every night if you if you're working with uh like with uh, visualization with your higher yourself and uh with the most beautiful idea of your life the vision so then uh, then and when you are open to follow that idea because ev sometimes it's uh it's not easy but we all we 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 doing that we doing that uh we do that like uh, harder and harder sometimes to ourselves so that's the like uh law of it it have a name it it have the name like, like law of uh percept no attraction percept, how, attraction yeah, yeah that's the right word thank you that's that's it and when i when i started to do, i started to do that on my high school when i was 17 year old and this technique uh it's just about ourselves about every people on this planet to to have a focus for that because when you keep when you use this your ability to 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 do this uh, beautiful work then is then you then you realize so there is no limits really there is there is no limits everything what's what you can imagine it's that's your that's something what's uh, what is connected when it's connected with you and when you feel you are on the same vibe that's uh that's beautiful way then so every night that you were in las vegas at night you you would go there to the arena it wasn't just friday sure. Every night. And and did people come up to you? Did they recognize you? Uh, many times I just took a cab and ah, uh, nice and uh, to to be to be to be in a secret. And how long are you there for? <laughs> it's no uh, listen. It's no matter the place. The yeah. place is no matter. I I just uh, went there because I wanted to to feel to feel a wipe of the arena. Yeah. I was in the arena more than five times, so I know the know the space inside and and but that's something what I'm doing like uh like ritual. I love it. So yeah. It's very unique. You don't see a lot of fighters doing this. Sure. It's <laughs> I think I'm I'm not uh <laughs> I'm uh not uh like it seems like it's unique, but when you really follow the your way, your connection with your with your with your gut, so then then you will see what's what's your way, and you, then your mind will be more calm 
like uh, peaceful and uh, then there is no fear then is just there is just a pure belief and you will just follow the way that's all uh, and c- could i ask are do you consider yourself a religious person uh one more time please do you consider Sorry? are are you a religious person are you religious sure yeah that's 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 my religion that's my regi- le- religion and all the all the reg- religions uh you you can find this uh this uh, talking about about that in in, in every re- religion so so there is a <laughs> i still respect all the religion but you can when you really understand how this world working was the matter then you will step outside from these uh, uh, trying to be uh, richer or uh, bigger or better than than uh, whoever. You will just follow the, your way to be happy, to live fully. That's all. I love it. Um, as far as the fight is concerned, going into the second round, how are you feeling in between the first and the second, considering his first round? Were, were you starting to get nervous? Question: Did you realize, okay, I have to do something dramatic? What are you thinking going into the second round? Uh, before the end of the first round, I started, I started to feel calmer because uh, I realized how to find a way to to catch him. So that that was uh, the pause, the the break between the rounds was for me like uh, really um, I get more peaceful more self-confident and uh, and I started to uh-huh. I started to be to be ready to be ready to 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 end end the fight okay and and um when you when you did win, when you tasted victory again, did it feel like a weight was lifted off your shoulders? You know, after New York and everything, like how would you describe what that feeling felt like to get the stoppage? Yes, that's 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 right. I uh, I felt like <laughs> that fight. I put it on the on the like on the too much one side like pure aggression pure hunt pure uh following just one target pure violence and i totally like forgot to be uh in the mastery to be more technical to work more and to to do more setups so uh, after that i felt like I need to I need to work more on that, but yes, how you said how you said I I felt uh, really like like yeah the weight lifted it relief. Fell down. Yeah. yeah relief yeah um, were you disappointed I thought for sure you were going to get a bonus um, fight of the night bonus were you disappointed that you didn't get that one <laughs> man it's not about the money. It's about the performance. Yeah. And the money will come with performance. And that's all what I can say. Yeah. But you did get you did get one of the bonuses, right? Yeah. Yeah. That that must be nice though, you know? <laughs> yeah, Extra. sure. Yeah. Everyone wanted that. Um w- w- the, the 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 samurai comment to me, can I ask what does it mean to you to be a samurai? Like what does that mean? Because maybe people don't understand. And that's why they try to say this. So what does it mean for you to be a samurai? Thank you for that question. Thank you for that question. For me, to be a samurai, that for me is uh, is uh, about the altitude, what you have in, in your life, about the paradigm paradigm in, uh, in your life, how to see some situation. And sometimes you don't need to be samurai because these... Uh, uh, this attitude, this role, is not effective effective in every 
time, every piece of your life. Yeah. So that's why I'm uh, not just using that for fight, but uh, we, like I said many times, we all need to follow something. We need to uh, understand our lives, like our brain, our mind needs to understand our our lives and what we're doing, why we are doing that by some uh, theory, by some ideas. And uh, these ideas about Bushido moral code helped me to be honest, honest to, to the way what I, what I, uh, what I'm following. And uh, that's all. That's all. You have to be just you have to find just something what resonates with you. And samurai ideas resonate with me. There is there, there is in the world there is not just samurais, but there is uh honor warriors like uh, knights. Yeah, like uh but everywhere there is uh, some rules and I respect these rules because it helped me in uh really dark moments of my life to overcome these moments and be stronger, be more human and be uh, like live fully, like totally fully without fears, without any like trying to be uh, like to think to be better than someone or trying to be uh, richer than someone. No, like no thinking because that's mean, that's fear. That's, <laughs> that's just, there is no place for these things. And for the fa like a uh, false for, for something what's not true. Yeah. And that's, that's why it helped me to be, to live fully and I'm I can I never I don't know what how to how what's what's to give to my coach to 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 paid him for these lessons mm. especially for for that book and uh, because I'm that's something what resonates me in me so deeply that I can't uh, I can't fight or do this show whatever without speaking about that without to know to give to let them know the people about these things because I think these especially in this age there is uh, too many people who's just uh uh, trying to understand their life, trying to understand why to uh, wake up and find some way. And that gave me the meaning in my life. I saw a video yesterday of you outside, um, the video that you posted where you're, you're shirtless outside. What do you do? It looks like you're in the woods. What are you doing there? Yeah, this is my training place. And uh, I had a training there, my morning training so that's from that. All right, back at it. Uh, were you surprised that Alex knocked out Jamal in the first round? Ooh, I have to say, beautiful work. Like, re really beautiful work. And uh, that's all I have to say. That's all I can say, because it was really, really nice work. Uh, but were, were you surprised? Like, did you uh, think that was going to happen? A little bit. A little bit, but uh, I thought, like, Jamal uh, can show more. He, can, he, should, he should show more, more action because everybody knows he's, uh, when he, when uh, Pereira keeping the pressure, it's, it's a, 
it's a lot of it's a big problem same as me <laughs> and uh when he's under the pressure then uh then then it's much much like everything going on your way the best way do do you uh do you agree there are some people i've seen them say that they like the idea of you fighting jamal next do you like this idea or do you like another idea for you next i'm like i like to fight for the title especially after that decision in uh in new york after that i uh when i'm taking the fact i won the won the fight last saturday that's only thing what i what i just feel right now to be because i feel that that uh, maybe my uh performance last saturday was just like uh like get getting uh getting uh, punching get yeah to to accept the punches and these will not work with pereira mm. but people have to understand that i know how to make a fight with uh with this fighter i will fight like another one and with another fighter i can fight like uh, another another man so do do you That's think it. do you think that will happen do you think your 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 next fight will be for the belt have have you or your management talked to the UFC about this That's what what I'm working what's my management working on Okay are you confident I am Okay amazing um and when if it was up to you when would you like to return when would you like to fight again When uh, when it will be happen or what you what you ask? Yeah, or no? When would you like to fight again? Uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. If that will be for for a title with Alex, I am open to to take a date in uh, in Brazil. Like in two weeks? In like yeah, like in two weeks. Wow! And uh, if there will be another date. Let's, let's see that. Okay, so you're that willing. I, I understand he broke his toe in the fight and had a broken toe going in, so I don't think he's going to fight yeah. in Brazil. But that, but but if they did call you, you would do it in two weeks. You would have no problem. Yes. Wow, okay. That's pretty big because most people would want a full training camp before their, you know, their next title fight. I had a full training camp before this fight and this can, training camp was much more... Uh, for me, it was like I had <laughs> I trained much more than uh, for 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 fights with Pereira. For Pereira, I trained <laughs> just just <laughs> almost just six days or one week. Wow, that's because, crazy! Because yeah, because there was a lot of a lot of struggles and and all these stuff infections and antibiotics and doesn't matter yeah yeah no i understand and by the way i think i saw you were you at the barber did you did you go to the barber uh before, after the fight the hair's still there right all good i can't see because it's sure. dark okay oh it's still there okay. it is. everything <laughs> you didn't you didn't did you even cut it did you did you make it shorter no no no, no. okay it's, I think if, if it's working. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Okay. It's my antenna. Yes, yes. I <laughs> love the it. Best, best uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations on the win, Yuri. It's always so great. I, I really enjoy any time that you're on because uh, you're so insightful and, and, and honest and authentic and spiritual and uh, thoughtful. It's, it's really a pleasure. So very, very happy for you. Congratulations. Welcome back to the, the winning side, and I'm looking forward to what is next for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm really appreciate your question. No problem. Anytime. Thank you. There he is, Yuri Prochaska. What a guy. What a legend. And uh, what a pleasure it is to speak to him. I always really enjoy speaking to him because uh, you could tell, obviously, you know, English isn't his first language, but he tries so hard and he is so thoughtful and, um, and spiritual. I love spiritual people. And he, uh, he just, he exemplifies all of that. It's really a pleasure. And what a fight. He did get the performance bonus, tremendous. Thought he was going to get the perform. I thought he was going to be max. I thought he was going to get the performance and the uh, the.
the fight of the night a bonus, but um, you know, Max happened and everyone understands. So internet's still not working, Frankie. What do we got here? Um, um, you told me in my ear that uh, now, now we're now the world is gonna have to see how the sausage is made. Yeah. The so now we're three minutes till he's here in the building. Oh, so okay. Just give us a few minutes after that to have him ready to go. So so. You know, we I had him slotted for thirty minutes because Mike is at um, at three. So let's say right. he at, let's say he sits down at what do you think two forty? Let's say that. Then if we could just ask for three ten and then you got it. You know, move. You know what I'm saying? I got you. This is what's happening. And by the way, I have to say my laptop is on fire. What did I tell you on Monday? Yes, I know, but uh, you know, I I had a situation with my laptop last summer where I closed it on um on a like a cord right. and um it screwed up my screen and and when i brought it to the apple store they're like oh yeah internal there's things moving around we're gonna like take apart your laptop and we're gonna give you like a whole new processor right and i was like all right well that's kind of annoying because i need my laptop but uh you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander type of thing you know what i mean um, yes. I don't think that's the line, but no. you get the point. What is it? What's good for the goose? Is... I don't even know. It's so far off. Yeah. Um, and so I thought I had a whole brand new thing, but now you're telling me I need to send it back is what well, you're you saying. You need to take it to the Apple store and let them assess this heater thing that's going on. And while it's you're so with hot. Oscar, you don't want us just to grab your laptop and try to troubleshoot it. Um, in terms you're not of... going to use it during the Oscar interview. Sure, sure. I, I just restarted it now, but yes, I think that might be a good idea because um, uh, it's weird that the internet isn't working, right? I'm plugged in. All's good in the hood. Sometimes there's a problem between the chair and the keyboard, and we just want to... Wait, are you trying to say I'm the problem? <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, no problem, no problem. Yes, you can have it. All right, You cool. can do whatever you want with it. In fact... Uh, I'm actually trying to restart it as we speak, and um, it's not. One of us is going to run in there right now to grab it. Oh, right the second. Okay. Yeah, and then after the interview, we'll bring it back. Well, that's fun. Um, okay, so a little bit of a of a of an intermission here. Whoa! Did you see that catch? Who saw that catch? Are you taking this? That was great. Uh, thank you, thank you, Andy. Okay, here it is. Here's my precious laptop that's on fire. The top isn't on fire, but the bottom certainly is. Do you feel that, Joe? Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Does it feel too hot to you? Yes. Abnormally hot? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Don't let him close it because then we'll need your password. Oh, it's closed. Cool. So this is that, that is a useless thing that we just did. It's a nice hot brick. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to have to bring it back now. Boy, I feel naked. Look at this. Even the desk is hot. Um, so, still to come in a matter of moment. Yeah, you're going to have to bring it back, right? He's coming back. Okay, yeah. just, you look so exposed right now. Can you move yeah. the statue in front of you? I, I don't know. What? The Shama? <laughs> yes. Good job. Good job, Joe. That worked out. I, I feel so naked at the moment. Um, what am I doing? Oh, it just uh, restart. Wow, it is really hot, huh? What do I do? Frank, I'm so nervous about this. I, if I have to say, take it to the <laughs> Apple Store one more time. Oh, my God. Maybe it's a sign that the the computer just needs a break. I bought. I Frank told me to buy a thing where you like you you spray it. The canned air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that will work or no? You did you? I watched you order it. Yeah, yeah. It, ha in? it hasn't arrived. We yet. have some here. We oh. can shoot it out for you. Oh, can you shoot it out for me? Yeah, we'll take care of the whole thing during oh. your interview. With this will be great. <laughs> I'm gonna get a brand new computer. Uh, it looks like it's uh, yeah. Just don't drop it because it's boiling hot. Um. So, what do you guys want to talk about? Hold <laughs> your hands like that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we had Ilya, we had Bo, we had uh, Yuri. Still to come. Michael Chandler, Yan Shaonan, Mike Perry, and Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya is here because on Saturday. At the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, it's Devin Haney defending his WBC super lightweight title against the great Ryan Garcia. And a lot has changed since they were all in our studio back in, when was it, early March, I do believe? Very early March? Or is it late February? It was around that time. It was around the time of the, the Jake Paul, Frantz Ngannou fights. And uh, so much has happened. And even yesterday, more things happened. 
They were yesterday, we could show you right here atop the Empire State Building doing a little face-to-face. -face. We even have the audio for you, I do believe. And it got a little ugly, and that actually bled into what happened later in the day. Here's uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia atop the Empire State Building on Tuesday late morning. Go kill him! Damn. Ryan kept saying, Where's your mom B? And then after that he was Rah. Um I don't I don't know what the angle is with, with talking about his mom. Obviously, um Devin Haney's dad is very much in his life. So I don't know what's going on there, but clearly that struck a chord. That's it. We're good. You did the you did the thing too. Yeah. Did a lot come on out? the wrong Wi-Fi network. No, I know. So we've changed it, and I deleted that other one so that doesn't happen again. But did you do the spray? No. You told me you were gonna do. It. I was so excited yeah, I about lied. that. I was so excited to get it connected again. <sighs> I was like, Can we do the spray? Yeah. Joe. <laughs> he um. He said he said he quit. Yeah. Okay. We'll spray it after the show. I was just so it's boil boiling hot. So I, I get it, excited. but it's not like the spray would make an instant change. You don't think so? I know it won't make an instant change. You told me you were gonna spray it. And I lied to you. I All was right. so excited to see the internet come back on in ten seconds and I'm like, I'm gonna have Joe bring this back in, beaming, and then here you are with if you give a mouse a cookie, he's gonna ask for some milk. Here we are. Uh anyway, it got very heated and then they were scheduled to go to City Field to throw out the first pitch, both Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. And uh, I, I was told, you know, Ryan Garcia was was excited. I was told he was ready to go. I was told that he was, like, legitimately pumped, like a little kid pumped to, you know, take part in this great honor. And then what I was told was because of what happened at the Empire State Building earlier in the day, the security for the New York Mets decided to scrap the whole thing. Now, you know, we live in New York. Not everyone out there knows about New York traffic and where City Field is in relation to Midtown Manhattan, but it's quite the trek, I'll tell you that much, especially in the middle of the day. It's at least an hour to an hour and a half, depending on where you are. And so you're talking about now an hour, an hour and a half, then you're there for at least an hour, and then it's a drive back. You're talking about, you know, three and a half, four hours during fight week. Um, not ideal. Not ideal at all. And so I think the original thought, here's here's Ryan and Oscar leaving City Field. Obviously, Ryan not very happy about what just transpired. I think the original thought was like, oh, something happened with Ryan. But what I was told was he was uh, very well behaved and it had nothing to do with him. So... Let's see. Uh, today's the open workout. Tomorrow's the press conference. Friday's the weigh-in. Saturday's the fight. And it's really the biggest fight of the weekend. There is a PFL on Friday, but there's no UFC on Saturday. There's no other real competition. They kind of have it all to themselves. There's the NBA playoffs. Knicks um, game one at 6 o'clock on, uh, on Saturday. So I'll have to... Uh, have to do some double duty because I will be working for DAZN. I'm very much looking forward to that. A part of a great team. They've got a, a star-studded cast of characters working on this one. So I'm looking forward to that very much. But I think there's a lot of intrigue, a lot of people wondering which Ryan Garcia will show up, what kind of shape he'll be in, how he'll fight, how he'll look, how he'll act. Um, there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders here because this is his first chance to fight for a big-time belt. And, you know, after what happened back in April of last year, almost exactly a year ago against Tank Davis, uh, this is an opportunity to get back on track and, and to prove a lot of people wrong. As of right now, I don't know if, uh, if GC knows off the top of his head, I would imagine Devin Haney's a big favorite. Yeah, he's sitting around like minus 800. What? Really? Yeah. Holy yeah, yeah. shit. And that's on DraftKings. I've seen some books with uh with like minus 1100, maybe even uh maybe even bigger than that. Yeah, it's wow. it's widening. What did it open at? I want to say in like the minus 500 range, minus 400 range, but yeah, it's just gotten bigger. And uh do you think all the the drama has made more people just slam Devin Haney? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I'm seeing a lot of money coming in on uh, Fight Doesn't Go to Decision as well. Wow. And, like, KO props. Really? Yeah. What are you yeah. feeling? Have uh -huh. you done anything? Yeah, I got a couple of plays. We'll Ooh. get into that later. Okay, all right. And uh, by the way, like the Dortmund uh, kit that you're Oh, rocking. yeah, shout out to the Bs, baby. Yeah. BVB, semifinals. What does shout BVB out. stand for? Uh, Man, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Borussia something. But what, what, uh, what are, are they known as the Bs? No, I mean, just yellow and black. You know, you got the B in there. So I just, you know, I call them the Bs. Sure, sure, sure. And that is a, uh, a Holland jersey. Yeah, I mean, we've been here. We've yeah. been here. From Yo, the pandemic. Yep, 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 there it is. I don't love the name on the bottom, if I'm being uh, honest. Holland. Do you like the name on the bottom? Uh, it's all right. I mean, I couldn't. I didn't really have much say in it. Uh, BBB stands for uh, sure <laughs> Ball Spiel uh, Varane Borussia. There it is. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so shout out. On to the semis. Uh, taking on PSG. Can't wait for that. Um, yeah, PSG. Yesterday. Wait, th is that is they don't they don't redraw them, right? No. No. No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, yeah, so we got the semis. PSG going to be great. Two big games today. Yes. Don't watch them, everyone. Just stick with yeah, us. I will not be watching. Second no screen. Doubt. Second screen experience. Yeah, second screen for sure. For sure. You have it on the side during all these great interviews. What a day. What would you make of Ilya? Oh, man. Confidence to the roof. Yeah. Sign, sign me up for him versus Max wherever. At the Sphere, sphere or Spain. That's, that's the thing. So, like, I want it to be in a special venue. So the Sphere works. First show in the sphere, that's going to be very special, or do it in Spain. Uh, yeah. Oh, would man. Would love to be at either of those. Like, would love to be at either of those as a fan. That I do, would be I do really, As much as I love the sphere, we got to drive by it on Friday, first time I ever saw I do really love the idea of him at the Bernabeu. Because what happens if he loses to Max? Do they still Don't go to say Spain? That. Don't say that to him. I mean, of course I'm not going to say that to him. You know, I'm just saying that there's always a possibility when you get into the octagon. So... What if he loses? Do they still go to Spain? It always feels like this is the case with these stadium shows. It's That's like thing, Katie and Croke wins. Park and, and Connor and Croke Park and uh, Aspinall and Manchester. You know what I mean? If he wins, though. Then it becomes even bigger. Then he's got the BMF belt. Then he's got a defense of the featherweight belt. And then we head to Spain in February. I'd be sick. But then who's the opponent? Is it is it is it the Volk rematch? Is the Volk rematch as big? Probably not, but I mean, you still got, you got some choices. I like, like he said, he he thinks that you could fight him in the Bernabeu and and it would sell out yeah. uh, for eighty thousand. I mean, the guy is a hero in Spain. It seems like just from all the footage uh, and everything that he's done since he since he got the belt. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that fight in Spain is like bucket list for me. If they really book that, I'll I'll buy a flight the day they announce it. Oh yeah. That would be incredible. Um, all right, more on everything else and Ilya to come. But for now, let us say hello once again to our in-studio guest. Huge week for him. Huge Saturday night coming up. What a huge stretch they have coming up with this fight on April 20th. And then, of course, May 4th, the return of Jaime Monguia against Juan Canelo Alvarez, a fight that will air not only on DAZN pay-per-view, but on Amazon Prime pay-per-view as well. We've got the CEO of Golden Boy here. We've got the great... Oscar De La Hoya walking in any second now. I can't wait to speak to him about everything that has transpired since we last had him on. Um, maybe a month and a half or so ago. Is he there? Is he there? There he is. Up, My old friend Oscar De La Hoya is oh, here. Oh, Good to see you. Thank you for making the time on a busy week. I really appreciate it. Have a seat. Thank Always. you so Thank much. Thank you for having me, man. Yes, it. it's a busy, it's busy time. You're going to the open workouts after this, yeah, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All good, brother. Oscar, you're the man. I still love that line. One of my favorite lines ever on this show. Ego is not my amigo. Ego Remember is not when my you amigo. said that? Oh, yeah. Ego is not and my amigo. And look at you now. Not only April 20th, but May 4th as well. Yeah, What a May stretch 4th. for the company. Uh, well, we have we have three big fights back to back to back. Um, in between, we have Virg Ortiz. Yes, Who's uh, my next big sensation, man? Twenty and 0, 20 knockouts. He's he's knocking on on the uh, world champion's door. So, yeah, it's 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 gonna be a good stretch for us. Um, yeah, just keep chipping away, man. That's all I do. You know. Does it feel like maybe at one time people were like, oh, you know, maybe Oscar lost his fastball. Maybe Golden <sighs> Boys and what it once was, and this is your fu to everyone. Like, look at us. <clears throat> Massive show here. Yeah. The next week, and then the big one on May fourth yeah. as well. Like. 
maybe maybe the uh, the funeral was a little early, right? That you guys were all right. celebrating. Do yeah. you feel that? Because I feel like some people were trying to say that you were you were oh, losing yeah. your your fastball. You didn't no, have stars. No, what, what happened? What happened was so. When I when I started Golden Boy many years ago, we had all I mean we we built all the world champions that you see now that are on their way out kind of. We built all of them, you know, from Errol Spence to to uh, to the Charlo brothers, you name it, everybody, all the world champions, Deontay Wilder, all mm-hmm. of them. Then then you know they jumped ship um, for re- some reasons, you know. Political reasons, but then we're rebuilding once again now, and so now we're just you know making these big fights happen, uh, like Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia, uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend. So that's going to be huge. Yes, and and I'll ask you about that in a moment, but I have to start with you were in the studio very early March. Yeah. We spoke on that on that very exciting day, and that was kind of like the kickoff in terms of media that day, that week, you know, because then you had the press conference in New York and then the one in L.A. Mm-hmm. And you know, I don't want to take credit for this, but perhaps you can you can tell me if I'm on the right path. I was asking you about your relationship with Ryan and why don't yeah. you guys just go for dinner? Why don't you go meet? And then that night, exactly, I saw you on Instagram. You went for dinner with him. Yeah, we did. So How did this happen? You. Did thank I make you. this happen? You made it happen. It's all me. I appreciate it. I can it, take credit thank for you. this. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah. How, how did um, it actually happen? Because in the moment you were like, I, we, you know, it's not, well, it's you, not getting you done. Well, actually, you actually gave me the idea. So I just, I text, I actually called Ryan or text him. He goes, dude, let's, let's, let's break bread, man. Have, let's have some dinner. Um, and sure enough, we talked. Um, it's, it's kind of like... It's kind of like uh, we we reunited again, you know. It's because you got to think about about this is that there's a, a lot of whispers in, in in fighters' ears all the time, you know. Oh, he's no good for you, uh, you know. You can do better, you know. This that just a lot of chatter and whispers, you know. And a lot of times fighters listen listen mm-hmm. to those whispers, you know, often. So when I had one on one time with Ryan um, in that dinner you made happen, Thank you. it uh. Yeah, everything's all good. W- was it awkward at first? No, no. It was like, it was literally like seeing a little brother, man. You yeah. Know, hey, what's up? We embraced. What's up? All good, you know. And we talked and everything. Had a nice dinner and and things are great. And and so, how would you describe the relationship now with him? Oh, it's awesome. It's great. Look, he. One thing about Ryan is that he he does want to be great, and I respect that. I really do because when you fight Tank Davis, yeah, you got knocked out, body shot comes back and fights Duarte, who is a tough, tough Mexican knockout guy. I, I was actually worried about that fight because he hits so hard. Ryan knocks him out. Right. Now he's back with Haney. You got to respect that. You know, he, he, he wants to fight the best and he wants to be the best. So it's, I, I respect that from him. So obviously a lot of the talk going into this fight has just been his behavior. And there right. have been some people who seem concerned sure. and it has seemed a little bit I don't know if it's erratic is the word or troublesome. And yeah. you don't know if he's trolling, if he's putting on an act. What has been your impression of, because this isn't the same guy that we've seen even going into the sure. tank fight. It, it's a different version of him. It's a different version, a, a, a version with a chip on his shoulder in, in a way. And I think you need that, um, especially when you're fighting the top guys, you know. Like you have to prove to yourself, like especially after losing to Tank Davis, like he has something to prove. And he's, and he's, and he's living it. He's, he's, he's demonstrating it. He's showing it. You know, he has that chip on his shoulder and he's like, I don't give a, you know, about anything. I just want to fight in there and fight the best and and win. And so I, I I respect that. Has there been anything that he has said or done that has concerned you? No. I mean, that's concerned me. I mean, obviously when, obviously when he was talking about the whole, you know, situation with, you know, uh, uh, what was it? The 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 kids and this and that. Yes. You know, it wasn't really explained. Yeah. Good enough. You know? Okay. Um, that was concerning. But look, I I'm not his babysitter. I'm not. Right. I'm, I'm his promoter. I I'm not with him 24 seven. You know. And um, um, but he uh, yeah, he gets it, man. He gets it. I mean, it was ironic how all this news came out afterwards about. P. Diddy and this and that. And mm. so I don't know. I mean, look, Ryan, Ryan knows what he's doing. I, I think he does, you know. He knows what he's doing. And if he cares for a subject that he wants to talk about, he's going to go all out. Do you, do you ever, do you have the relationship with him now where you can call him up and be like, hey, you want to talk oh, yeah. about anything? Oh, yeah. Has that happened? Oh, yeah. It has happened. Okay. Yeah. And I, I always tell him, hey, you have, you, you're in a special 
place and opportunity um, where you can, you can look, he is, believe it or not, he is the cash cow. He is the money maker. We'll have a sellout crowd here and, at Barclays. Well, the, the pay-per-views are going to go through the roof. It's going to be crazy. And it's all because of Ryan. You know, yeah, he's fighting a, a top world champion who is serious, who, uh, who wants to be great as well, who is a master boxer. Um, but look at what Ryan has done to him, like psychologically. Devin Haney pushing Ryan at, at the Empire State Building when they meet. I've never seen that from Devin. I think he's a little rattled, mm -hmm. you know? So Ryan's doing something that only he knows he's doing, you know, and he's getting under his skin. You, do you think he's officially under his skin? Do I believe think? so. Yeah. I believe so. Just like Mayweather would get under everybody's yes. skin. I think, I think, I think uh, Ryan took a page out of Mayweather's book. Um, and so how much do you think is this being, like him being a showman and him just telling us who he is at this point in his life. Yeah. Because the reason I, I asked this, Oscar, is because what I love talking to you about is like your life and you're always so honest about yeah, things sure, and not that sure. you don't beat around the bush. And so a lot of people are like, he's going down the wrong path. Uh -huh. And Oscar could be the one to tell him he's going down the wrong path because maybe at one point you did go down the wrong path. And so do you see warning signs there where you're like, I don't like this, I don't like that. We need, you know, because you've lived it. Yeah. You've walked yeah. A million miles oh, yeah. in this game. Oh, absolutely. So do you see stuff that reminds you of the stuff that you had to deal with that maybe other people didn't warn you about? I think, I think what, well, first of all, in my career, when I was fighting, I was, I was a straight arrow. I mean, I was like, I was taking care of business, winning world titles, fighting five times a year, world title fights five times a year. So I wasn't really out there as much, you know, I wasn't really drinking and this and that. And, you know, what, what I see with Ryan, yeah, I do have to talk to him and say, hey, Ryan, look, you do want to be the very best. You want to, you know, be great. All right, then look, you have your window of opportunity. Just make the best of it. Just focus on your boxing. Focus on, 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 on your craft. Forget about, okay, maybe you want to be a, a, a Calvin Klein model or you want to be whatever, you know, or you're talking about these subjects, this, that, or you're, 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 you're making news, you know, for the wrong reasons, maybe. No, just focus on your career. Stay focused, you know, leave the drinking alone. Or, or if you're having a glass of wine after training, no, just be an athlete now because your window's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. That's what boxing is. We have a window of opportunity. Take advantage of it. Are his trainers, Derek James, are they saying anything to you? Are they telling you? Are you checking uh, he's, in? He's just in great shape. Okay. They tell me he's in amazing shape. And then I've seen him spar and train. Sure. He looks, he looks phenomenal. Last question on all this. At any point did you say you might want to postpone the fight? There were people calling for the postponement of the fight. Did you ever consider that? I wasn't. I was keeping in, in touch with Ryan. Okay. And um, I wasn't. I know people looking from the outside in, how they can be concerned. You know, when you see a post and this and that, and what you have to keep in mind too is that it only takes five seconds to put a post, you know, mm -hmm. 10 seconds, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Ryan, you know, he's, he's, he's finger happy, you, yes. know? And you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but he's, he's, he's doing his job, he's doing his work, he's, he's training, he's, he's in great shape. I mean. We don't see as much, and I tell him too, like, maybe you should post, you know, videos when you're knocking out your, your sparring partner. Yeah, yeah. Do it more, you know, not the other stuff, you know. Uh, he's like, oh, okay, 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 I'll, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it, you know. But he gets it. He's, that's why, look, that's why this fight is, it's going to be crazy successful because Ryan Garcia knows how to push everybody's buttons. Right. So you're expecting a sellout on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No doubt. No and and uh, what, like, what's the ballpark in terms of what a success would be on pay per view for you? Like, what are you what are you hoping for in terms oh, of buys? I'm I'm one of one of the biggest uh, top ten uh, pay per views of all time. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. That high? Oh, you think over a million? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, this is huge. It's really big. It's successful. It's successful already. I mean, you know, I think I think Ryan is a master. A master artist when it comes to uh, promoting and promoting himself and promoting fights and getting under somebody's skin like he's figured it out mm -hmm. he has the talent and that's when I you know that's when I can come in and talk to him as as a mentor you know inside the ring because I don't I don't really get involved outside I'm sure. not really you know it's not my job to like you know babysit or whatever you know 
My job is to obviously organize the event and promote and, 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 and find the fighters. And guess what? I found, I found a diamond in the rough with Ryan. He is a hell of a fighter. And come Saturday night, I mean, he's, he's going to be in tip-top shape. Who has more pressure on their shoulders going into the fight, in your opinion? I think, uh, I think Devin does. Why is that? I think Devin does. Um, just with all the talk that's been going on, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been watching him closely, right? And, and everything that he, from, from the start to the finish, right? I mean, the finish would be actually getting inside the ring. That's mm -hmm. the finish. But the start, the buildup, Haney was calm. He was like, you know, he's, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. But then when he sees Ryan, he gets all just wild up, you know. And, 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 and now lately, come fight week, he's pushing Ryan. He's doing this and that. And he's really pissed. That's, that's a sign of, uh, it's, it's a sign of like just frustration, you know. And what I can see is Devin Haney getting so frustrated, wanting to knock out Ryan and making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ryan has to capitalize on. And I think that's what he's going to do. Is it better for Golden Boy if Ryan wins? Um, yeah, I mean, he's my fighter. Right. He's, he's under Golden Boy promotions. I mean, obviously, you know, Ryan Garcia, um, you know, we're building and, and, and uh, you know, we, we've gotten them the right fights. And, and you know, together we've built, we've built, uh, We've built an, an amazing career for him, and uh, you know we we uh, we're in his corner a thousand percent. Is there a rematch clause? Um, there's no rematch clause. Okay. Yeah, but uh, if it's a great fight, of course, of there course, has yeah. to be a rematch. Sure, sure. These guys fought six times in the amateurs. I mean, this is the seventh game right here for yeah, all yeah. the marbles, man. So you can imagine how intense it's going to be. Um, it's already intense outside the ring, yeah. but I, I cannot wait for them to take that intensity inside the ring and just give us a f great fight. Just a great fight. Like the UFC 300. Yes. Did that you watch awesome. that? I did. I paid for it. I Come watched on. it. Hell you yeah. bought a UFC It was actually good. It was actually it good. It was good, right? And I actually took, you know, I took a, a page off of uh, Dana White's book there. Um, it reminded me uh, when Don King would promote those, those, those big fight cards with... Julio Cesar Chavez and, and, and Trinidad on the same card and some other world champions, Mike Tyson, I think, uh, all on the same card. That's, that, those were the glory days. Sure. I think that's what boxing has to do. Yes. You know, we can sprinkle a huge fight every quarter, you know, kind of like this one, yeah. every quarter, but then sprinkle like one of those mega events like UFC 300. You yes, know? it's important. Once a year. It's important. Yeah, it is. You keep the fight fans engaged. And uh, because right now I think boxing it's, it, it is in a good place. We're seeing good fights. Um, you know, this whole thing with Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, you know, attracting new eyeballs, you know, a younger demographic, you know, you call it what it is. I mean, headgear, bigger gloves, but it's still boxing and it's still attracting fans, new fans. Um, yeah, I think boxing is in a good place right now. We so, just have to continue. We have right. to keep on chipping away, make sure that promoters work with each other. See, boxing is so fragmented. Right. That's the problem. UFC is under one umbrella. Easy to make big fights. It's great and it's awesome. Boxing has to continue to chip away and make sure that we work together to bring the big fights to the people. I see you're rocking a uh, Mike Tyson ring, yeah. uh, old school ring yeah. magazine. It's a, it's a great shot. Uh, yeah. I love Tyson, man. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this fight? Him at, he'll be 58 when he fights Jake in uh, July. Well, look. Uh, and for the record, I, I don't yeah. think there'll be headgear in the fight. Oh, there won't be, because I heard there will be. No, that's the latest yeah. I heard was okay. no headgear, uh, but they haven't quite nailed all the rules, but... That's not, okay. you know, but let's see, let's see. Yeah. In any event, just him going in there against someone who's, yeah. you know, as young as Jake. Well, look, um, I, I, I actually like Jake Paul uh, um, uh, for what he's doing and the attention he's bringing to the sport and what he wants to do with his promotion company and help the fighters. I love that. Um, but he also talks about, you know, being a world champion and, 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 and taking it serious. And, well, this is not serious fighting a Mike Tyson. Yeah, I can understand. It's a lot of money. It's going to attract a lot of eyeballs. It's great. But the only critique I have uh, for Jake Paul is that, you know, if, if you want to take the sport serious, then, then take the route 
that world champions take, you know, fighting top 20, top 10, top five, and eventually becoming uh, the, 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 the mandatory to the world champion. That's how you do it. That's how you gain the respect from the fight fans, you know, not, not fighting Mike Tyson. You know, that's the only critique I have. But look, hey, God bless him. He, he, uh, he's making money. He's, uh, he's you know, uh, pumping up his brands and all that. And, uh, you know, he's going to have a sellout at the uh, Cowboy Arena with Tyson. I just, I worry about Tyson because I, we all love him. Sure, sure. We all love him. And, and you know, he is 57, is yeah, he? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, he's, he's no spring chicken anymore, that's for sure. They did announce uh, Amanda Serrano, Kitty Taylor as the co-main, which I think if you're like a purist, right, yeah. that's pretty damn yeah. huge. No, it's great. It's awesome. I mean, the rematch. Yeah, it's going to be huge. And they're also they're also uh, talking to us about putting one of my kids also uh, on the oh, card. Really? Yeah, two Who undefeated fighters, a uh, kid Austin. Oh yes. So yeah, no, it's it's I I strongly feel that what Jake Paul is doing, and Mike Tyson as well. I mean, they're brilliant. They're 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 geniuses, and uh, it's all good for the sport. Okay. Um. And so going back to this fight, what happened yesterday at City Field? Mets game. Um, tell us your side of the story. I saw you guys walking out, and obviously yeah. Ryan was very upset. What so, happened? so I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, I walk. Ryan's in the in the uh, in the VIP section already. So I walk into the to the uh, to the field to the to the stadium, and I I'm going to Ryan to go say hi to him, and and I come across uh, the owner's wife. And we're talking, she's a big fan and, you know, she speaks Spanish and everything. Okay. And she's like excited to see Ryan and this and that and excited to, for them to throw out the first pitch. And, and then all of a sudden we hear that I think a security made a call that, you know, it, it'll be too dangerous for, to have Ryan and, and, and Devin Haney together throwing the first pitch. And so they called it off. Wow. And, and I don't think the owner knew that. And so I was kind of like puzzled, like what's going on? I mean, I thought, you know, you know, Ryan was looking forward to it. He was practicing. Yeah, so. I even told him, look, aim for the head. When I threw out my first pitch at Dodger Stadium, um, the catcher told me aim for my head because you're gonna be in the mound. Yeah. And when you throw it, you're gonna hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So aim for my head. And sure enough, I threw a bullet right there you know, when was that? Was that after the Olympics or later oh, this on? This was recently. This okay. was yeah. This was like a couple years ago. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so they just said they were they were concerned. And after so they what were con they said they were concerned that maybe something would happen because of the push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Empire State Building, and then they offered for me to throw out the first pitch, and I was like, no, you know, I gotta respect Ryan, and that's it's his moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that, you know, to my fighter. I mean, you know, he seemed so. pissed. He was pissed because he was looking out. He w he was looking forward to it. Right. He's 25 years old. He's like, you know, he's never done that before. And he was looking forward to it, you know? And also it's a bit of a trek, right? To go out there, like you're, you're driving like an hour or so, you're hanging yeah, it's out. it's an hour, whatever, you know. It's pain a, in the ass, no? It's a pain in the ass for the fighters, you know? So it's, yeah, it was, it was a uncomfortable situation, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Okay. Um, I'm a Yankees fan anyways. So. Yeah, right, fair enough. Yeah. Um, some of the talk from the Haney's, you know, like about, killing and all that stuff you know it's gone very personal as you said yeah. intense how do you feel about this well look i mean you never want to even think about or wish that upon anybody especially inside the ring or the octagon because we're, we're we're in a dangerous sport you know and uh when i heard that i was like no oh, come on you don't don't, don't go there mm -hmm. you know but but that again that's how brilliant ryan garcia is right he got under their skin, you know? And, 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 and again, it reminds me of Floyd Mayweather. Right. How he would do his, his, his antics and, and, and it works. And it works. So we'll see. We'll see Saturday night what kind of fight we're going to watch. Uh, how has it been working with the Haney's? Pleasant. Okay. This, is, this is, I'll tell you one thing. Bill Haney, Devin Haney, nicest people. Had him over my house in Vegas. Made the fight in a day. Mm -hmm. Literally. It was easy. It was pleasant. Um, you know, yeah, good people. Okay. We, uh, we flew over um, uh, on the press tour when we were promoting, flew on the same jet, talking. We had five hours together, whatever. Yeah, just good people. I respect them. You know, uh, you were talking about UFC 300, and uh, I mentioned this, that one thing that I wish boxing promoters and broadcasters would, would, would 
see from the UFC and implement yeah. into their own product is the pace of the card. You know, they had 13 fights on that card. And yes, it was like seven and a half hours, but it was boom, 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 boom. Uh, the UFC, yeah. Yeah, 13. you know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 there's a lot of filler sometimes on boxing shows. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Do you think it should be tighter or do you like the filler? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree a thousand percent. I mean, there's there's a lot of tweaks here and there that I must change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it also has to do with production, the network, this, that. So, but um, yeah, look, I, 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 I have no shame in saying that watching the UFC and, and taking a page out of their book is, is, is a positive thing. I can take that and, and tweak things, you know, across the street in our sport. Right. You know, um, you know it's, it's, all, it's all God. It's all good. It's all positive. What about that Max Holloway? He points to the middle. Did you see that when he pointed in the middle of the cage and then he knocked the guy out with one second it left? It was crazy. Is that nuts? It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. For the, I, I have to admit for the, cause I've, I've, I'm a boxing purist, sure. obviously. And I, I love watching fights where you, you, you get off your seat and yeah. you're like throwing punches yeah, yeah. and oh my God, for the first time, seriously ever, I was off my, off wow. my seat in the UFC fight 300 and just cheering, just screaming. It was pretty cool. It was cool. Amazing. Yeah. Now what about, um, Mongia Canelo? How hard was it to make this fight? Um, so I, I'm, I'm a co-promoter with Mungia mm -hmm. and Canelo didn't want to deal with me. Why not? He, uh, I, I, I think, I seriously think he, uh, I, I seriously think that, that he doesn't, he doesn't like the attention taken away from him. I seriously think that, you know, because every time I'm, I'm remembering now, every time, every time I would you know, be around Canelo or, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a 10 time world champion, six divisions, gold medalist, like, you know, uh, you know, taking the attention away from him and this and that. And, you know, um, I don't think he likes that. And so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want me around. Um, and so my co-promoter from Mexico who handles Munguia dealt with the, uh, with, uh, under my guidance, he dealt, he dealt with, uh, Canelo's people and, the fight was actually made pretty easy. Okay. You know, I'll tell you why. Munguia is very respectful. He respects Canelo. He, he knows it's going to be a freaking war. He knows it's going to be a tough fight for both guys because you got to think Mexican style, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're going to go at it, at it each other and it's going to be a good fight. But um, I, think, I think that uh, the fact that Canelo had only two choices, he had Munguia or he had Benavides. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he probably thought, okay, shit, they cornered me. Mm -hmm. Let me, t let me, let me pick, let me pick Munguia. How do you think it plays out? <sighs> I think it could be the changing of the guards. I really do. Um, you take a look at Canelo, which, which I respect. As a fighter, I respect them, you know, because as a fighter, I respect every single person that steps inside that inside the you know, the ring or or the octagon. You have to, right? Um, but you take a look at his career and the decline, you know, slowly has been happening. He's had operations on his knees, his shoulders. You know, he's got what over sixty fights. He started professionally when he was fifteen. Um, you can see the wear and tear. You can see the decline. Um, Munguia's 27 years old. Canelo's 35, 34 years old. So this could be the changing of the guards. This could be De La Hoya Chavez all over again. This could be, uh, you know, it, it happens in the sport all the time. The young fighter comes in and just handles the, uh, the old veteran. So we could see that come May 4th. Do you think it's going to be awkward on fight week between you two? No, no, no. Will you like try to I speak said, to him to, to bury the hatchet? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna speak the truth. Right. When I'm promoting this and, and on the podium, look, I, I'm not gonna hold back. I'm not. I'm gonna wait it. till fight week. I'm gonna go hard. You are? Oh, hell yeah. In what respect? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean go hard? I'm gonna talk shit like there's no tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. On Canelo? Hell yeah. You know the shit that he's talked about me? Yeah. You know? I see I mean, when you're up there on the day, it's like he's kind of like dismissive of you and stuff like that, like his oh yeah. body language and yeah. all that. So you got some stuff in the chamber. Oh, I got all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. I got all kinds of stuff. Just okay. Wait, fight week. And what about like tomorrow press conference? Will, will Eddie be up there? Um, 
Because I have to admit, I, I do I, like your dynamic. I like, I like it. It's fun. I have to say. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. We, people like that. Yeah. Well, look, what I've learned, what I've learned in this promotion is that, look, yeah, um, I think Bill has something with 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 uh, with Eddie Hearn or something. Right. You know, I'm the promoter. Sure, sure. It's the Golden Boy Show. It's yeah. Golden Boy Show. Uh, but I think I think Bill Haney has something with uh, with Eddie Hearn. So he's requesting. Are you okay with Eddie that? To be there, ah, I'm okay. Hey, ego's not my amigo. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be up on the day. What about at the fight? Will he be ringside? Uh, I'll, I control all the tickets, so we'll see where we put him. Rafters, maybe <laughs> in the back. Well, he's got some nice binoculars okay. that I can give him to. <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. But you think this time, like you know, I remember last time you were walking to the locker room. You couldn't go into Ryan's locker room. There's going to be none of that drama this time. Now you're like fully. Team Garcia, he's Team De La Hoya, he's Team Golden Boy. Yeah, look, I, it's one I'm, big family. I'm, I'm Team Event. I yeah. want this to go smooth, you know. I want this to be successful, and so again, I don't, I don't promote Devin Haney. I promote Ryan Garcia. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's under the Golden Boy banner, and so obviously, you know, it's it's un, unless Devin Haney wants to work out a deal with me, then hey. Welcome to the family, right, right, right? right? But no, I have a lot of respect for the Haneys. I really do because they've treated me, you know, right. How do you think this one plays out? What is your gut saying right now? My gut saying, uh, my gut saying knockout. Knockout. Yeah. My Ryan. gut saying knockout. Yeah. What a left hook. Yeah. I, I don't know which, which punch. Okay. I don't know which punch. I mean, yeah, he does have that devastating left hook, but I think people forget about that right hand. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Cross right hand that he has. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. What, what it's going to be intense. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be. Crazy intense. Who who does he get if he knocks out Devin Haney and then he wins the belt? Who 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 do you think is the next fight? Well, Ryan wants to. He wants all the smoke with everybody. Yeah, he does. So I mean, look, there's Teofimo. Oh my gosh, yeah, That'd which be would be insane. huge. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of fights out there for him. Tank you know? rematch at one forty. Yeah, I mean, it would be gigantic. Hit bull. Oh yeah, would be another one. You know, at one forty right. with no rehydration no class, yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. bullshit, yeah, none yeah. of that shit. You know, so yeah, there's a lot of good fights to be made. Well, can't wait for this one. Yeah, and I'm going to be on the broadcast. I don't know if you know this. Did you know I this? Do. Yeah, of course. They said they needed the big guns. Well, we need all the all the muscle we can that's get. That's right. That's right. That's for uh, sure. Thank you for coming by. Thank I you, really brother. appreciate it. Appreciate good you. luck to you. It's on DAZN pay-per-view this Saturday from the Barclays Center. Sold out, uh, Oscar said. So you got to get it on pay-per-view. It's Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney for the WBC super lightweight title. Can't wait for this. Really, can't it wait will, for it. It will sell out. It will sell out. It will, it will be. Out. By the time all the is time, said and done. Yeah, Saturday it will be sold out. Okay, so um, looking forward to it. Looking forward to being a part of the broadcast for the zone. Quick break. We'll say goodbye. We'll be back with Mike Perry right after this. Is he here? Is Gamebred here? The legend, the original BMF title holder, the one and only Jorge Madvidal. How are you, my man? Good to see you. Thank, Thank you so much. Please, have a seat. You've never been in this studio, right? You were in the old one when you talked about the... Uh... I don't want to... Hey, man, you promised me cheeseburgers, pizza, Did all I? types of... Where, where's the food? What do you, you can't be eating that. I can Of course I can. I'm on weight already, bro. I'm always on Are weight. you really? Fuck yeah. How much you wear right now? Uh, probably like... Too sexy. Okay, that's right. You look fantastic. Thank you, my brother. It's so good to have you in studio. I'm training my ass off. Um, it's a long training camp, man. You know, the fight was supposed to take place at a certain date, and then it got pushed back, got pushed back. So I've just been training nonstop, you know, getting myself ready for this uh, for this fisticuff. This what, what was the original date? For the band. Yeah, it's great to see you, my man. What was it? Um, we, were, we were targeting March, and March moved to April, now June. And And why? Um, Why did it keep getting pushed? Different things, you know, a uh, little bit to do with the UFC and, and things like that. Nate Diaz as well side, so I, I just, just the way it happens, the cookie crumbles. But it kind of worked out for me because I've just been training this whole time, like the fights tomorrow. Okay. Um, how do you feel about the fact that you guys are going head to head with the UFC pay per view? I've, obviously, I, I don't like it. You know, I never um, want to go against. Ah, uh, yes. So that was my conversation with Jorge Masvidal. Uh, he was in New York on Monday. They had the press conference on Tuesday. They're going to Miami tonight, then uh, Inglewood, L.A. So, so much going on in the world of boxing and, uh, and MMA. Great to have Oscar in. Ego is not my amigo. What a time. What a line. Can't wait to be a part of it all. Can't wait to witness it all on Saturday at Barclays. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, WBC, super lightweight title. Ooh-wee! It's actually happening. All right. 
So that's this weekend. Next weekend, the big fight is Knuckle Mania 4 in L.A. First time for BKFC in California, and the headliner has to be Mike Perry. It doesn't matter really who he fights. If it's a big BKFC card, it has to be Mike Perry, and it is Mike Perry. And there was some talk of some other people, but in the end, it's Mike Perry against Tiago Alves, the longtime UFC fighter, former title contender, former BKFC champion. Perry Alves, Knuckle Mania 4, main event, April 27th on Triller TV, formerly known as Fight TV, the platinum one joining us right now. First time in a while. It's been a while since we talked to Mike. There he is on the set of his own show, the uh, the Overdogs podcast, right? Yes, sir. What's up, Arrow? How are you, brother? It's good to talk to you. You're trying to you're trying to give us a run for our money here with your show, with the big guests and the big names and all that stuff. Thank I like you. it. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. It's just it's good for me to talk to people. Uh, I got to get more. Just vibe, you know, I just got to vibe with the people and uh, see where things take us. Make no mistake about it, though. You're the king of violence. We're the king of MMA shows. I just wanted to let you know. All right. So if you come at the king, you best not miss. That's fine. I'll beat your ass. <laughs> that is true. You will beat my ass. That is 100% true. Um, all right. Knuckle Mania 4, April 27th, BKFC. By the way, is your belt on the line? Yeah, man. I mean... Yeah, actually, I have a, uh, I mean, that one, that one there was shared, you know, that was me and Eddie Alvarez. Look, it's, it's going to remain here because it's coming back home anyways. Okay. Um, I will, I will bring my chain. Uh, it's a king of violence. It's a replica pretty much of that, but it's a chain. And, um, you know, I'm going to have David, I'm going to ask David Feldman to put it on me after I beat Tiago. So, so I had heard that they were talking to a few people, and in the end, you know, they they went with Tiago. I'm assuming you heard the same, right? Yeah, I mean, his name kind of came up like the day it happened. Like, uh, I wasn't he wasn't on the radar for me at all. That's not something that um, that they had been talking to me about. There were other names, and then. Uh, Tiago's name came in, well, which reminds me, like, the video, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it just popped of uh, the, like, Road to Nuffelmania 4. Um, he he was saying how he had been waiting for this fight, and it seemed more to me like as soon as I got to BKFC, he dipped out. Hmm. And... You know, he, uh, there was never, when he had the title, it was never, oh, I'm going to give Mike Perry a shot at the title uh, for BKFC. It was like, Mike Perry come, is coming to BKFC, and Tiago is like, I'm out. So, And now he has to come back. Do you think they called him because they couldn't find someone else to fight you? Um, I don't know that answer to that question um i think maybe he's been out for a while and he was like maybe i have an opportunity here to get a check and that's what he's coming for so you know he better bring a um a neck harness with him so he can wear it after because you're coming for that check i'm gonna break your neck i heard they offered a lot of money to darren till to uh fight you on this card yeah i heard he said no to you know, over two million dollars. So, damn. You know, are you surprised? Uh, Darren, Darren is just—he's just yapping away over there. Um, you know, that a lot of guys say they want to do it with boxing gloves or with with gloves uh, at least of some kind. And you know, with the UFC, with the BKFC contract, you know, I have. I have that money is there. Those fights will happen in the future at some point. Uh, but it gives me, you know, a big part of the contract is that I can do uh, other things as well. And if the right money comes along, it just has to be right because I'm being paid very handsomely over here in BKFC. And uh, if, you know, after this fight, it's like all I've been doing was promoting for them, and, and I'm focused on this fight. But 
you know, just to branch out and, and put my ideas and my, my thoughts uh, that, you know, I have a big opportunity to make the same amount of money if the right promoters come together uh, to make fights happen in other uh, places. So, you know, Darren Till said no to that much money, then, you know, I don't know what he's looking for. Um, and it's fine because I'm the one here. I have a competition to compete in. I have an event to be the face of and, and the main event. And, uh, you know, I'm out here working. I'm promoting. I'm pushing. I'm fighting. At the end of the day, as a fighter, that's that's one of the main things. That's the main thing to focus on is the fight itself. And, and you know, it, it gives you a freedom to where – you don't always have to answer your phone or reply to a comment or a DM. Uh, I don't, I don't need others. Um, I'm good by myself. And if others want the experience, um, you know, a couple hundred million, we can make the experience happen right in your backyard. Has it come to the point where you think that this fight will never happen? I mean, I feel like we've been talking it, talking about it for, I don't know, six, seven years now. It's crazy. Uh, now that this last opportunity fell by the wayside, are you moving on? Um, you know, I'm in, I'm li I'm over here in my own zone. Uh, you know, I'm on my own level and I'm competing and I'm working and I'm, um, I'm putting it all on the line everywhere I go. Uh, you know, the King of Violence belt is, is more suited as, you know, I don't carry that belt around because my face is the king of violence. Take that as you will, whether that mean I'm ugly or I'm pretty damn handsome to be the king of violence. So, you know, whatever that means, whatever that title comes with, I prepare myself for that. I'm in fantastic shape right now and uh, I'm ready for a fucking battle next week. So King of Violence, BMF title, they'll, I feel like they'll be always kind of compared to each other. What did you make of what Max Holloway did on Saturday? Shout out to Max Holloway, man. It was incredible. I thought it was Justin Gaethje's time. I thought the way he had looked has been superb. And um, Max Holloway came out there. I mean, his physique looked incredible. He looked like he had been running 12 miles a day all through Hawaii, up and down them hills. Uh, he looked you know, sharp, uh, it was touch and go. He just kept touching them and moving. And, um, you know, I saw that Ilya was like, oh, he didn't see this. He didn't see that. No technique, no game plan. I'm like, you know, Max came to fight and to move. And uh, I thought it was beautiful. You know, that was, he stole the show that night. I mean, he got paid two bonuses, amazing. Uh, and then, you know, Alex Pereira carried himself like the main event. He went out there, he handled business. Um, you know, and both of those guys, I just, I had picked the other way. Uh, I was rooting for Michigan boxing with Jamal, and and uh, he just didn't, you know, you look at Pereira, you're like, gosh, look at the shape of the guy. He's a brick wall in there. And then, uh, you know, the other guys, Gaethje and, and Jamal just, didn't look to be in that type of shape. And sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, you get, I think of DC and he's, you know, the, uh, what does he say? This is the, the perfect male body or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, John Jones doesn't even always look so incredibly fit all the way, all the time. And, but, but he still performs and he fights like a dog. So, you know, that's what it's about. You ever watch like a big event like that and you say, oh man, I, I miss my MMA career. I miss the UFC days. I watched, you know, I watched the fight. I had a great time. I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I, before that night, before UFC 300, I was at BKFC live on Friday night and it was a, it was a fantastic show. Um, it was brutality at its finest. Um, you know, the bare knuckle, the hits the guys take. Uh, the main event was the best fight of the night. Those guys did a great job battling each other. Um, 
I like what I do. I like the standing and banging and and uh, shit. I can't lie. You know, I called UFC and and uh, a couple of times. I don't think Hunter Campbell will pick up my calls anymore because I I guess I blasted him, but I didn't really put it out there like that. And and uh, it's not like I've tried to call him since. You know, it's just. Uh, I used it, what I had, and and I told him a while back, I was like, hey, man, before I even signed my contract, you know, I could go from these two-minute rounds just standing to everything back to five minutes, back to punching, kicking, grappling, uh, but you guys got to make it worth my while, and, and they, don't, they don't need it. They don't uh, need that, you know what I'm saying? So I still think that, it is a is a possibility in the future. I still see the idea of a Vitor Belford or a Vandalay the Axe Murderer, Silva, or um, you know Rampage or Chuck or or Dan Hendo. These guys back in the day, you know, obviously those were different people running it back then. The Fertitas and and uh, you know it's. Look, I'm here to, I got to keep this going for myself. I got to keep this success and keep driving myself up. And people know that Mike Perry is a force to be reckoned with in the combat sports industry. And, um, you know, like I said, the fight is the most important thing. And that's all I have to do is just just be the best me I can be. When you said, I'm not going to lie, I, I reached out to the UFC a couple of times. What, what do you mean by that? Reached out? to them about fighting on this card or or before signing no. the No. Before signing. Okay. When was that? Before signing. Yeah, I was like, you know, um well I texted Hunter. I was on my way to the to the uh gym about to train. I had my wife in the car and uh as soon as I texted him, I was like, you know, this man I was like, hey, this amount of money and we can make it work, man. Let's you know, give me guarantees. Give me, give me uh, this many fights. If it actually, I asked for more fights than I would have had on my BKFC contract, um, and you know, just to try to make it more worth their while. It was like a little bit more money, but more fights. And he called me, and he was like, ah, you know. Pretty much the same thing he said before, like, I have a better idea. And then his idea was just, you know, he didn't, um, you know, they they say that uh, if it was, you know, if it wasn't for their cameras and, and this and that, the opportunities that they gave me, I wouldn't be the Mike Perry that we know today and, and uh, have the influence that I have or whatever. And. You know, it's not like I got 40 million followers out here, right. but, but, you know, 40 million people aren't tuning into any fights anywhere, uh, or, or, or they watch the highlight on Instagram the next day, or they're streaming it, uh, who, you know, I guess a lot of guys aren't paying for pay-per-views, um, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm lucky that I get to be a fighter in this world. I'm not sure what else I would be doing with my life and time. Um, and I need to take the opportunities that it's given me, the the abilities, the money that it's given me in fighting, and you know, invest it in the right places and make sure that after fighting, which I still like to think I have another. 12 years. I just got to keep everything together. My mind, my heart, my soul, man, keep it strong. And just, that's what working out does anyways. If, if I go without working out, I just, I'm like, damn, I need to go work out. I right. need to blow off some steam. And, uh, so it wasn't really much, you know, it's just, what was his better idea? He did say, he did, Hunter did say something about, you know, he he tried to call he tried to call me out and be like you know I don't think you can be one of the top five guys in our division right now and I'm like well sign me for one of the fights and you gotta fucking pay me like I'm fighting a top five guy and bring me in and watch what happens and he didn't he didn't have any he didn't want to do with that he didn't you know so that they were just looking other places 
um, you know, they want these bodybuilders that come in for 10 and 10. And, you know, that's on them. Everyone's going to watch UFC anyways. But obviously, the UFC 300 card, obviously, there was lots of money thrown around there. And because um, they can do that. And, uh, you know, obviously, I'm still a fan. I love the game, you know, so I keep winning. I keep fighting I'm, and be undeniable, like Max said. Maybe. Was there any talk of you fighting Nate Diaz before this Masvidal fight came together? Just just the fans. Just uh, just some well wishes, you know, in the, in the social media world, maybe. Um, but that's, you know, good for those guys, too. It's the Nate Diaz proved to be so durable in their first fight, Jorge Masvidal. Um, you know, I don't have any ill will towards these guys because they're they're getting big money fights and this and that, and and I am as well. And if I was to have ill will, you know, sometimes I think, oh, how was I supposed to do it? Was I supposed to steal the fight from Dylan Dennis for a bigger paycheck back when he fought Logan Paul? Was I supposed to stop Dylan Dennis from coming into his locker room that they gave him the same night that they gave it to me? And me tell Dylan and his security and them, and no, this is my fight. Y'all not coming in here and fighting. And and was I supposed to take that opportunity away from him and Logan Paul, who, you know, all the beef that they talked online, I just, I just didn't have any place really there to try to take that fight. It wasn't just about money. Uh, maybe it should be. Maybe you know, things should be more about that money that I can get, but money comes and goes and, you know, opportunities matter. And, and, um, but that's, that's confusing too, because if I, if I did try to start some shit and try to take that match for myself, you know, who knows what would have happened. And, hmm. you that know, be nuts. I don't know, man. Did that thought cross I'm just your mind? preparing for my own, preparing for my own stuff. Did that thought cross your mind while you were there? I didn't. I don't know. I didn't really see an opening. Right. I didn't really see like, you know, what was I supposed to do? Just be an asshole. There was some talk of you and Idris Virgo, right? Because of what happened at the weigh-ins, but it was too short. Yeah, but why they? Why they not allow that? Because they would have got the deal of the century, the deal of a lifetime, for me to swat that boy. I was gonna accept it. And then all the fucking, the UK guys over there, I did an interview or whatever. They're like, oh, I heard you outpriced yourself. Listen here, bud. I'm set to make a million dollars in a couple weeks fighting Eddie Alvarez. Who is this guy that was on Love Island? And they're going to give me a hundred grand for it. And I said, yes. I said, let's do it. And then they were like, oh, no, we can't. We can't add another fight to the card this time. We can't do this. We can't do that. Then why'd you offer it to me? Why'd you get this little bug in my face flying like a little buzzer beater? So they offered it and then rescinded it. Yeah. What? Maybe why? Because I called him the F word. I called him a cigarette. And then a lot of people would have been like, oh, why do you give the guy the, the, pro, the platform to fight on this card? You know, they they did their best to keep me out of the news or the headlines and that thing. Well, you don't need, did you have ever any talks with them afterwards about this? Misfits offering you something else. How do you know what's real and what isn't? Right, right, right. Lots of people are like, Oh, you should do this, you should do that. Oh, I work with this person, I work with that person. Let's we wanna talk about this and that. Why are you even talking to me? Anybody who knows anything knows who to call. I got people for this. I don't deal with these deals. My people deal with these deals. It fires you up. I just bought a fight next week, bro. It's a hell of a battle. Uh, uh, Tiago's a little muscle head, but, but he's capping, bro. He's full of... What do you mean? Why is he he's capping? He's just making shit up, saying, saying that he was waiting for this fight and, and that... Uh, they protected me and 
Um, you know, I'm gonna fuck him up, bro. Did you have a relationship? I got sparring tonight. Oh shit! All right. When you spar, by the way, what do you what do you wear? Gloves wise. Sixteen ounce gloves. Okay. Headgear. But like, about, you know, what's that? I battle capable uh, friends. I have lots of warrior friends around here who want to be great themselves. Uh, shout out to Fusion XL and Technique Boxing, the two gyms I work with. Fusion XL is is mainly MMA fighters and um, a lot of great guys there. Uh, great attitude spiritually and great skills and abilities. Uh, obviously there's lots of guys everywhere all over the world that want to be great mixed martial artists, great fighters, great athletes, great just in the, in the eye and, and be great when, when it's time to shine under those lights and, you know, props to all the guys with a dream. Uh, this was my dream a long time ago, and I I put in the efforts and I worked for it. I had fight after fight, and uh, you know, I stayed in it. That's one one of the main things you see on social media. These guys who do motivational whatever videos, and they say, you know, you get you fall down seven, you got to get up eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. You get up, right. getting up. You know, can I can I say something? And I wonder if you agree with me. I hope you do. I see BKFC now getting more and more legitimate. Uh, this is their first show in California. These are like if the California State Athletic Commission is sanctioning the event, is overseeing the event. If they put their stamp of approval, to me, you're legit. I think California is the best commission in the country. Andy Foster is the best. Like, you know, you can nitpick anything, but this is a very important moment for the organization and the sport. And I don't know if they get, you know, if they get here, if they open these doors, if these doors are open for them without you. I think that you being the face of BKFC, because you're not, you know, you're a former UFC star who came over in his prime doing what you're doing. Everything is, is on the up and up kosher, whatever, but you're also producing great events. You're taking it seriously. You're not just some like old timer who's looking for a payday. You, I, I hope you're getting that credit from the company and that respect because I really, if they don't have you unequivocally the face of BKFC as their front man, I don't know if they get to this point where the likes of California and Nevada are, are agreeing to sanction their events. So it's not really a Thank question, you. but I, I, I really do believe that it's, it's more of a statement. And I wonder if you feel the same way. It's it. I feel like it's, you know, combat sports is one big family. Uh, it takes two to tango, uh, you know, plus all the others behind, behind the scenes that make it all work and run. And uh, like I said, I'm grateful for this, t that I get to do this. Um, could be out here waking up every day, going, doing whatever, you know, construction or something to do to try to find a a dream or a business idea. And then I just kind of fell into this and this fell into my lap and combat sports, baby, it's always been a thing. And um, I'm grateful that people say what they say about me and BKFC and I'm the face of it and this and that. And there's even great BKFC warriors that would agree with that. And um, I know what these guys go through, you know, taking punches to the face with no gloves. Is, it can be brutal. And um, one thing about combat sports athletes is, you know, it's a humbling game. You can try your best. You can be ferocious and vicious and talk all the shit you want. I mean, you should talk your shit. You're going to get in there and fight. When the time is right, you're going to get in there and have to back it up. And and um, there's lots of ways to back it up. And, and uh, you know, I just do my best. I give it my all every time. And um, I try, you know, I try to find a way, like, uh, to, to talk that could be more drawing and entertaining. And, and but, I, but I'm just a guy. I'm an old school guy, man, that just likes to fight. I'm... I'm kind of like a lumberjack, you know, I would 
I would make campfires and chop the wood and cook. Uh, I'm, I'm a simple guy, you know what I mean? So I'm old school, and the fight is is always the dream. The fighting itself, the greatness in the ring, those 10, 15 minutes that I'm in the ring, that's the dream. And it's a journey to get there. And then once I'm there, I very I live in the moment as much as I can and and um I feel every bit of it and for the for the two days after that you get this peace and relief it's very it's very valuable just the the feeling that you receive after uh, all goes your way on April 27th are we getting the uh are we getting the Jake Paul fight is that the one that you want Do I, you know, I do I be ready? Quick turnaround. I mean, Mike Tyson looks great. I don't see why they wouldn't fight. I'm sure. No, he's I mean the winner. Like, like, like once once that fight is over. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dar- Darren Till is just talking, not doing nothing. Like I said, he said no to X amount of dollars. Uh, there's probably incentives in there as well that made it more. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm tired of that question. Yeah, I know. I'm I've sorry. been saying it. A lot of people online have been saying that. And, you know, Jake has a lot of advantages. Um, and he's still trying to learn more before he fights me. You know, I'm focused on Tiago. I got this little muscle head in my way. I'll punch him out the way. And, you know, like I said, be undeniable. Like Max Holloway said, blessed man forever. Um, let's go. I I'm 190 it. pounds right now. I weigh in at 185 next week. And which is light heavyweight in boxing, 185, 186 to 200 or so. And, uh, you know, Jake's at least 210, um, smaller, faster, tougher, more real fighter. He's, he's a kid. He came up with a dream. Uh, he's not, you know, he's more of a kid than I am. I'm 32 now. I'm no longer a kid. And, and Jake, he's been doing great and, um, he's strong. But I think it would be exactly how the sparring was a while back. He hit me with some good shots, and I smiled and just walked him down and started putting that platinum pressure on him and making him run into shots. And, um, you know, I think I wear him down in there. I wear him out. I wish, you know, I would like to say I could beat him as fast as he's beating these taxi drivers, but I, I'm into the fight for all parts of it. I get hit, I hit you, and we we see how far we can go, how deep it can get. Well, next up, April 27th in uh, in L.A., Knuckle Mania 4, Mike Perry against Tiago Alves. Always a pleasure, Mike. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you. Shout out to my sponsor. Shout out to Helwani, man, Marcus Cypher, Kim Pai. Salute. Yeah, there he is, the platinum one, Mike Perry, kind enough to join us. All right, uh, we move along now, and we go back to UFC 300, co-main event, Zhang Weili, Yan Chanan. What a fight. Obviously, Zhang retained, but what heart, what soul, what determination um, exemplified by Yan Chanan in her first title fight. Uh, a lot of people thought it should have been done in the first round. She kept on fighting, and then she had her moments later on, and it seemed for a minute that it could get dicey. It was just amazing to watch. So we wanted to talk to her about it. She didn't speak to the media afterwards. Let's go now to Yan Xiaonan, who is kind enough to join us. Thank you for the time, Yan, and we're joined by your uh, manager and interpreter, Leo, who's here as well. Uh, thank you so much. Leo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, Ariel. Uh, hello, Ariel. hello. I'm doing great. And uh, Yan, thank you so much for the time. Hello. Hello. Great. Okay. Um, so, we're a few days removed from the fight against Zhang Wei Li. How do you feel about what happened on Saturday? So, Xiao Na,距离 UFC 三百跟韦利那场比赛已经过去几天了。现在你对这场比赛又有什么不一样的感觉或者感受？就是呃，当时我感觉这场这场比赛就是太盛大了，让我很激动吧，很兴奋。
，完了比赛完了，就现在我就感觉，终于就是整个人松弛下来了，就是一直备战呐、啊，还有比赛啊，都让人一直在紧绷着嘛。现在终于可以松下来了，而且我觉得 UFC 三百真的是一场盛大的比赛。Yeah, now I just feel like okay. Finally, I can relax a little bit because UFC 300, my first title fight, that was too big to me. So big. This is such a big event. So during the fight week, even through the whole camp, I was so excited. So for now, a few days after the fight, a huge event. So now finally, I can be a little bit relaxed. Were you were you very nervous as well because it was so big? So, in the whole fight, 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 Then nervous before this fight, so I'm not more nervous on this fight than my previous fights. But just because it's UFC 300, it's a huge event, so I was more excited than before. Because of the、um, historical nature of the fight, because it's two Chinese-born fighters fighting for a UFC title for the first time, could you tell? Even though you were in America, could you feel that it was such a big deal back home in China? 所以呢，除了这场比赛三百之外呢，另外就是这是第一次，有两个中国选手来争夺 UFC 的腰带。那即便你备战期一直在美国，但你有感受到就是中国的全民或者粉丝对这场比赛的关注和热情吗？我有，就是我没有去打比赛之前，就中国已经就是有很多报道，完了很多人在关注一场比赛。当我从比赛场出来的时候，就是举着国旗出来的时候。有很多中国人就是喊我的名字，完了就喊 China 呀、啊、什么的，就是比美是在美国打比赛的中国人要更多。Yeah, I can feel that. So even before the fight, I I know that there are tons of report on Chinese media regarding to this fight. Even after this fight, when I walked out out of the the arena, when I was holding the China flag, and、uh, I heard a lot of people. Shout my name, and they just say my name and China, China. So yeah, I do feel the the energy from all the Chinese fans. Was there anything about Zhang that surprised you that you weren't expecting from her? So, 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 呃，就是转变特别快。比方说，第一回合刚开始前半部分还占着优势，他马上就改变了他的战术。完了，还有第三回合我也给他击倒之后，他第四、第五回合马上的去调整。他的经验其实挺让我就是惊讶的。对 ，I I think it it was her experience. I think experience does matters in a fight like this. So, like for example, the first round. I start pretty well, and then Willie switch her 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 strategy, her game plan immediately. And also, it happened in the third round. So after the third round, I dropped her a few times, and then she switched very quickly, and then、uh, retained her advantage over me. So I think her experience did like shock me a little bit. Okay, so speaking of the first round. Um, last few seconds in the round, it seems like she she has you you know in a、uh, rear naked choke that looked quite tight, and then the round ends, and then we wondered if you were asleep, if you were out. It looked like you got on your feet and you were a little bit out of it. Were you in fact out in that moment? So, 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 so,
十几秒，就十秒钟，完了我就觉得我我肯定能挺住，我肯定能挺住，我就告诉自己我一定能挺住。完了最后的话就当就停了之后，我就感觉忽悠了一下，就是会有感觉，就像就是你平时在训练中也会被人被别人打到嘛，就感觉忽悠了一下子。完了后来我就觉得我一定要站起来走到那个，我还要继续比赛。Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, since she took my bag and she got the rear naked choke position very quickly, and but I still, at that moment, I still believe that I can defend that. And then when she sweep me, I, I was facing on the uh roof of the arena, and then I could see the clock on the big screen. So when I saw that there are still like、uh, about like ten seconds left, I think okay, I can I can go through this round. So. But at the last second, when the when the ring bell, I was almost out. Wow! So just like somebody、uh, almost knocked me out, but I still、uh, recognize that I need to stand up immediately and、uh, try my best to、uh, walk through my corner to show that the fight is still be able to continue. Would it be fair to say? Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, okay. Well, 之前我我觉得我觉得当时我也是失误了，就是抓这个的时候。之前我这个拇指嘛，不也受伤了吗？我还是反应慢了，我觉得是我失误了。对。Yeah, and because my thumb got injured before the fight, so, uh, when I grabbed her hands to defend, I also made a little bit mistake, so let her to get the rear naked choke really tight. When did you injure your thumb? 你什么时候手指受伤的？呃，在比赛前。六个星期左右吧，我这个韧带可能是大拇指的大拇这个韧带可能是断，已经断掉了。但是我我不想放弃这场比赛，因为很重要，又是 UFC 三百，又是我的一场冠军战，所以说我必须要打。我也就一直就是带着伤嘛，反正一直不敢这么抓，因为就是别人我在训练中，别人在撬客我的时候抓这面的时候，我也不敢，因为。这边真的挺疼的，就是，对，抓不住，对。Yeah, I think it's uh six weeks before the fight. I think the my the the ligament of on my thumb was broken. So、Ooh. even during the rest of the the fight camp, I can barely grip anything. Even uh when I roll with my teammates, they got my rear naked choke. It's very hard for me to defend it because my 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 thumb. How is it now? 现在怎么样？这个大拇指？嗯，现在也不敢使劲抓，但是这两天我回去做核磁共振，看医生下来之后怎么给我安排，是做手术啊，还是怎么样 ？Yeah, still feel bad, cannot uh grab anything. So, uh, for the next few days, I will do some like CT and get some treatment to, uh, talk with my doctor to see how can we uh heal that. So, so would it be fair to say that if there were ten more seconds in the first round, that you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was it was that tight? So, then you think, if there were ten more seconds, you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was that tight? So, then you think, if there were ten more seconds, you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was that tight? So, then you think, if there were ten more seconds, you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was that tight? So, then you think, if there were ten more seconds, you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was that tight? So, then you think, if there were ten more seconds, you would have gone to sleep? Do you think it was that tight? Yeah, I think if you give Willie like ten more seconds, I I would definitely complete out. But this is just like、uh, any game, basket basketball game. If you shoot ball at the last second and it、uh, you make the shot, it's a、uh, yeah, it, it is. So, sure. Yeah. So so then you went into your corner and they were talking on the broadcast about whether or not they put、uh, smelling salt in your in your、oh. nose to、uh, to wake you up. Um, which they believed was illegal.、Um, did that in fact happen? Because then later、uh, they said, "Oh, they thought it was ice that woke you up." So tell us what 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 did happen there. So, when you first went back to the corner, when they were broadcasting, they said, "Ah, they must have smelled the salt." But later, the DC didn't clear that it was that. So, when you were in the first corner, what happened in the first corner? What happened in the first corner? What happened in the first corner? 就是我走到我边角，我就坐在那里了。坐在那里，我就看见飞波和丹尼叭叭叭叭一顿说话，就对着我一直在一直在说。但是，我当时因为比赛每人就会
很累，你就集中不了精神。完了，我也看到医生就是在检查我什么的，当时我都没有注意这些细节，但是我知道他们在给我倒水啊，什么乱七八糟的。我当时没有注意这些细节，就跟每次比赛一样。So to be honest, I didn't notice what the conman was doing uh, between the rounds because when I went back to my corner, I was still recovering from the the, the choke. So the only thing I can see is Uriah and Danny stood in front of me and they are talking, but I cannot absorb anything they they said. So uh, I actually I didn't notice what the conman was doing, but yeah, did it work? What well, that's it. Oh, but that's it. Sure. But that's it. 我一定没有用任何东西，这个我敢保证，没有人在我身上说什么秀颜什么，我就像每场比赛一样，没有人在我脸上就是用过什么任何东西。But the 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 smell salt thing is is make no sense. I、uh, definitely nobody put those to let me smell that. No, nobody used those things to to wake me up. No, it make no sense. Yeah, just like all my previous fights, you guys know it's it it, it was not. Allowed to be to to be used, right?、Um, whatever he did, putting his finger up your nose—if it was ice or something—did it work? Did it did it help you regain consciousness? So, that you think that that time that the work worker he should have used his hand or his nose or something? That you think that that really helped you, made you feel more calm? I don't think there's any big difference. 会有吧，我相信 UFC 他们那个医疗的专业性也也许会给了我一些帮助，但是我觉得一样的，就是没什么感觉。我觉得就是头上有水了之后，让我瞬瞬间感觉很凉快。对。呃、uh, ，I didn't feel that much difference. I think, uh, the thing I can feel which wake me up is the the water and ice they they pour over my head. That helps me to. Uh, to be more clear, my mind to be more clear, but the press on my under my nose is I don't feel it really helps. But I, I trust the, those conmen; they're professional. They know what they were doing. I, I was wondering、um, when the second round started, if you know, if you were still out of it, if she would have hit you really hard, that you know the fight would have been over. But it seemed like right away you were you you had gotten back on track and you were you were still fighting and. You looked great out there, and so what did it feel like for you? Like, do you even remember the beginning of the second round, or were you just going off instincts? So, he, he, the second round at the beginning, you seemed like you were immediately into the fight state. So, when the second round at the beginning started, what was your state? Do you still remember what happened in the first round? Or, 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 do you still remember what happened in the first round? Do you still remember what happened in the first round? Do you still remember what happened in the first round? Do you still remember what happened in the first round? Do you still remember what happened? 我我就是想这回合我一定要拿拿到拿下来，但是，对，我还是知道我第一回合输了比赛，这场我一定要拿下来。对，完了我也能听到我教练喊 “side kick”， 什么 “right hand” 的，我所有的都能听见。Yeah, I was uh, my mind was very clear uh at the beginning when the second round started. So I know I I I lost the first round. I need to get the second round. Uh, I can also hear one my corner. Told me during the fight, or said kid cross, but unfortunately, just、uh, I still lost the, the second round. But I, my mind was clear during the whole second round since the beginning. Yeah, the 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 most impressive part I think、uh, for a lot of people, including myself, and what we took away from the fight was just like your heart. You just you never gave up. When there were moments where I think you could have given up. And no one would have blamed you for giving up. You just kept fighting. You kept fighting. You kept looking for ways to improve position to to try to reverse course. And so I'm wondering, despite the fact that you didn't win the fight and win the belt, do you take pride in the fact that you fought hard till the end? And are you receiving that kind of love and praise from people for the way in which you fought? So yeah, that from the second round and on, from the next fight, is that you give you show out that kind of 不放弃，然后一直追求胜利的决决心，就是让所有人都特别惊艳。所以那比赛过后，虽然自己输掉了这场比赛，没能赢得腰带，但你对自己的这种表现，你感觉到骄傲嘛？然后你有感受到大家对你的这种赛后对你的这种支持和赞扬吗？就是说，虽然比赛输了，但你展现出来的东西还让大家很欣赏，很、很、很赞同。呃，就是。我觉得我比赛，我我知道我输了的时候，白大拿也上来了，他看我耳朵这个就是纹身嘛，不 n to f 我就能感觉到他其实挺
挺欣赏我，挺佩服我的。完了之后，我又回到今天，我去了拳馆，所有拳馆的人都感觉就跟我说什么，我就是他们很自豪，就那叫 apart， 反正他们每个人都跟我说这句话。所有的后来我去见了我的体能教练啊，他们都就是说我头脑强大，心理强大什么的。其实我也没有骄傲，我还是有些失落的，因为我觉得我可以做得更好。其实我还是有些遗憾的。但是通过这场比赛，我知道我还是有一天肯定能能拿到腰腰带的。对。Yeah, you know, after the fight, I can feel the love from、uh, many people. You know, right after fight. Dana came to the cage and he he came to me and checked the tattoo behind my ear. Born to fight. He just said, "Let me see your tattoo," and、uh, just checked the born born to fight、uh, tattoo. I think it's kind of he also recognized my performance. I think I was born to fight. And even you know today I return to the gym. Everybody from the, my gym, the coaches, my teammates, they all told me that. Yeah, we are so proud of you. Proud of your performance, your heart, your will. You show your championship will. But you know, I still lost the fight, so I it still make me a little bit sad and also regret about my performance because I do believe I can do better in the fight. But you know, this is just a lesson. So I will keep working on my way to improve myself. Yeah. And 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 what do you wish you could have done differently? What do you wish you would have done better? So, you think you think you think you think this fight maybe some places can do better. So, what areas could you do better? For example, the first fight was, uh, I didn't make any mistakes. And the second fight was, I got knocked out. I need to keep fighting consistently. I lost this opportunity because I got knocked out many times. I didn't keep fighting. I had some doubts. 这个是我很后很后悔的，完了，就是我觉得我还能做得更好，就是还有心态，因为我们两个是中国人嘛，我总是想证明我自己很强，我太着急了往前去打，我以后会调整我的心态。Mm, I think, for example, that the first round to how to defend the rear naked choke, if I can do it in,、uh, in a more、uh, appropriate way, I think. It won't be looked that bad. And also the third round, I dropped her a few times. I now I think if I keep punching or to be more aggressive after I I knock her down, maybe the result of the fight will be different. So that is the most regret part to me on that fight. But you know also also about my it's also about my mindset. So because you no know, both of us are from China, so I want to prove. That I am the best girl from China, too badly. So it's made me、uh, not calm in, enough during the fight. I think that is the part which I I could do better, and I need to learn and adjust in my in the future in my next fights. When would you like to return, and against who? Ideally, if 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 you were given the option, against who? 所以呢，接下来你有什么计划吗？什么时候想回归比赛？然后想打谁？然后对未来有什么计划？有什么想法？有什么设想？我现在的计划就是先把我的手指看一下，完了这两三个星期先休息一下，两三个星期之后我就会回归我的训练场。如果 UFC 给我安排谁，我也不挑对手，差不多谁都可以，我就可以去打比赛。Yeah, I think I will take a break. Two, three weeks、uh, to rest and check my thumbs, and then I will return to training and just see who UFC gives me. I can fight anybody. Yeah, they give me. Yeah, just back to the winning.、Uh, there's there's a big push to see、um, Zhang Weili fight Tatiana Suarez. I'm wondering who you think wins that fight if they fight each other. Now, now, everyone is saying that next week Weili will fight Tatiana. If they fight, 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 if they fight. 呃，你更看好谁？就是我肯定是支持张伟丽的，我觉得看他俩的状态吧。张伟丽更全面一些，对我希望他可以赢。完了，我也在赢一场，我去跟他再打二分的。Yeah, of course. I hope Weili can win this fight. I think Weili is a more completed fighter than Tatiana, so I hope she can win her next uh 
by defend her title, and I get another win, and hopefully I can get a rematch versus Whaley to fight for the title again. I love it. Well, uh, congratulations on a, a great fight, a great performance, great spirit. I'm sorry it didn't go your way, but uh, I think you gained a lot of new fans as a result of the way you fought and refused to give up. So uh, congratulations, and I hope your, your thumb feels better, and we see you out there sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you, Yan. Thank you, uh, Leo. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There they are, Yan Chanan and uh, and Leo helping us out. Pretty incredible scene there at the end of the uh, first round. Um, and I respect her for admitting that if there were 10 more seconds, maybe even less, um, maybe she goes to sleep. Doesn't look like she was looking to tap, but you never know. Uh, that was pretty darn close. And I didn't personally, I, I, I saw the moment. I actually rewatched it today because I will be honest, the, uh, the first round of that fight, I still felt like I was in a daze from what happened in the fight prior to that one, Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. And so I remember them talking about the smelling salts, but then I went and, and watched it and it didn't look like there was anything in his hand. It just looked like he was putting his finger up her nose and maybe there was something on his finger. I don't know, but it was more of them hypothesizing. And then they did say they got word that smelling salts were not used. So either way, the fact that she came back and went four more rounds after that, pretty damn amazing. Let's see where she goes from here. And of course, where Zhang Wei Li goes from here. And so when UFC 300 was done, we all waited for the big announcement. We did see Michael Chandler on the screen in attendance during the fight, and he did give us a little bit of a hint with the 303, and I had been hearing that they were going to announce it on Saturday, and I had been hearing, to be honest, that it was going to happen at the post fight press conference, but I was wondering how it would all go down. Would there be another video? Would there be a promo? Whatever, whatever. In the end, we did finally get confirmation that Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler is finally going to happen at UFC 303 on June 29th, later on this year, in just about two months from now, a little over two months from now, amazingly, at T-Mobile Arena, main event, five-round fight, 170 pounds, international fight week. You know the story by now. And so, what a massive deal this is, what a massive fight this is. feels like we've been talking about it forever and it feels like we've been talking to Michael Chandler about it for quite some time as well. Well, now we can actually talk about something official and not beat around the bush. He's kind enough to join us as our last guest of the day. There he is, Michael Chandler, June 29th, What's up, Ariel? headliner. How are hey, you, sir? 70, 73 days, but who's counting? Wow. Uh, 73 days. <laughs> 70, that is amazing. That is nothing, by the way. That That is a quick turnaround from the time it's announced to the time the fight happens, right? It's really not, you know? I mean, I, was, I found out, you know, I've actually, I've known for months, obviously that we're, you know, we've been targeting June 29th. I haven't really talked much about it. Um, and, uh, obviously we've had it inked for a little while and, uh, you know, just kept my little mouth shut and, uh, kept training, kept my head down. And then, uh, yeah, I, uh, I knew they were going to announce it after. And the way that Dana White announced the biggest fight of the last decade, possibly with Connor coming back and all that stuff was on a piece of paper. So, yes. uh, yeah, man, it was pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So you say funny. Okay. I, 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 I did like a one hour glowing. Like I was showering the UFC and Dana White with praise. Everyone says, Oh, you don't, I was it, the, the top of my show on Monday was me just saying that was the greatest ever. And they nailed it. And I said, can I offer one critique, one small critique? I think the return of Conor McGregor against you, a fight that we've been talking about for deserves a little bit more than a piece of paper deserves a promo on the ESPN broadcast on ABC on the pay-per-view something you weren't bothered by this. You didn't think that it, it, it needed a little bit more of an oomph. I actually thought it was a baller move. Honestly, you know, I, I think, you know, cause we've, we've had it done, you know, it's, if they wanted to do that, they would have. Yeah. Um, I think something like that on the UFC 300 broadcast would take away from UFC 300, right? All of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, forget, you know, halfway yeah. through the card, forget the next couple of fights. Everybody starts talking about, you know, the big fight that everyone's been doing, you know, and, and you know, Dana's, I think Dana's pretty uh, romantic and nostalgic about what he has built, you know, and he, 
and he, and he built up UFC 300 to be the greatest card and it delivered. And I, honestly, I'm glad they didn't, man. Let those guys and gals have their shine. Let UFC 300 be its thing. Um, and what you realize too about the UFC as big as they are too, that doesn't mean everything needs to be bigger and bigger. Sometimes simple is just, uh, it's sweet. It was funny. It was cool. And like, and I knew it was coming. I was watching the post fight press conference. I was about to do a an appearance, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the piece of paper came in, and I'm like, "This has got to be it." And I, I never once had the thought like, "Oh man, I want a big promo or I want flashing lights and stuff." Man, a fight's a fight, and obviously, it's it's a huge fight. And I think the way that they did it is was kind of baller because it was the exact opposite of what you and everyone else expected. Okay, fair enough. Um, could I ask when did you sign? Um, a couple weeks ago. Okay. And so once so that happened, now. did you know that he had already signed too? Well, I, yeah, I would, I was expecting one, one guy, one guy is notorious for, yeah. you know, and then one guy's like, yeah, give me the contract. I'm going to sign it. And, right. and that's not just the counter fight. That was, that was Dan Hooker and my beginning of the, my UFC run all the way through. It's like, give me the opponent, give me the date, give me the contract, check the numbers, check everything. We're good. Sign it done. Get to work. Um, so yeah, I knew Connor had already signed it, um, because obviously they're going to go through him first or go to him first. And then, uh, then I'll sign it. So I signed it. Was 185 ever discussed? It was discussed. Um, but obviously it, it didn't really make sense. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, I love it. I love the, that the fight's at 170. Um, I love that it's five rounds. I love uh, the prospect of be, it being at 185. To me, 185, 170, 155, it's the exact same training camp. I just get to eat a little bit. I would have ate a little bit more at 185 and a little bit more at 170. But um, I was cool with 185. Um, but obviously, 170 is perfect. So 170 is a, a, a great weight class for me. And, and just curious, was 155 ever discussed? <laughs> Not really. I mean, once, uh, you know, once Connor has been talking about the bigger weight classes now for years, right. Um, obviously I can make 155. I don't like to make 155. Um, I'm, it's gonna be tough for me to even make 155 unless I'm fighting for a belt, a BMF belt or the, the lightweight title belt, um, at this point. But, you know, um, I think 170 is perfect. 170 is enough to keep us both disciplined enough through a training camp. And it's going to be a little bit of a cut. I spoke to Connor, um, about a month ago and uh, one thing that was interesting about it was he he pretty much said I got the call I'm good to go all that stuff, but he did he did kind of make the case for liking the idea of it being a three round main event, and uh, I was wondering what you thought of that and if that was ever discussed. It's a very I mean it never happens anymore unless it's a fight that was put together on like five days notice. And so what did you make of him throwing that out? And was that ever something that was brought to your attention? Yeah, it was very interesting when I heard it. Um... You know, I think I saw the clips later on. Um, I, I like five rounds. I like the idea of five rounds. I like the idea of of the the training camp you have to put in for five rounds. I like the idea of the immense amount of the road in front of you, the toil in front of you for a five round fight when you step inside of the octagon. One of us wants it, and one of us didn't. So uh, that's that's a good indicator of uh, of who's ready to go to battle. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad it's five rounds and. Uh, you know, I think it was more discussed on his side more than it was on my side. Does that give you any insight into where he's at? The fact that he's asking for, like, do, do you do you say to yourself, like, okay, he doesn't have the cardio, he doesn't have the gas tank, he's looking for, you know, something a little lesser than your typical UFC main event. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I've gone on record many, many times and said, you know, respect to Connor, he could come back and fight anybody and... I'm a very, I'm a tough fight. I'm a tough fighter, a durable guy, um, fight hard, dangerous guy. There's a lot easier fights he could have taken besides me coming back from this injury. Um, so I give him the respect there. Um, but no, I mean, I don't know where his head was that on the, on the three round thing. I mean, conventional wisdom would say, obviously it's easier to, uh, fight a three round fight than it is a five round fight. But what does it matter if you, you plan on going out there and knocking a guy out? Um, what's it really matter, man? The time doesn't matter. Cause I don't, I don't expect, uh, to see that fifth, the fifth round bell or, or even a third round bell. So, um, it's, uh, it's interesting, man. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a bad look. So it's, uh, it's a good look for me. By the way, did you see roadhouse? I've not seen roadhouse yet. <laughs> Are you interested in seeing it? I am. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't yet. Um, 
you know, I, I didn't want to watch it. I didn't want to watch it when I was at my house. My wife was like, I don't want to watch it. That's pretty much the only time we watch TV. We like lay down and, and watch TV and then choose something to fall asleep to. Um, but no, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I mean, I've, I've heard it's done great. Obviously, um, that makes me happy. It's going to do nothing but increase the pay-per-view numbers, increase the the eyeballs on Connor's comeback. Um, what he has built is is uh, is massive. So it's it's cool, and uh, I'm excited to to train for this thing. Okay, and so uh, speaking of lying down and you have a, a moment of uh, peace with your wife, did you ever have a moment in all of this where you're lying down, you're just reflecting? And you look to her and say, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. Did you ever doubt for a moment that all of this would be for naught? Absolutely. You know, there, there was, there was times, um, I think overall the, the general sentiment, you know, cause there's so much more reassurances behind the scenes than our for front facing to the media, to the, to the fans, uh, insiders, inside information, all that kind of stuff. And it was chaotic. There was a lot of chaos going on, man. I mean, take you back to Connor calling out basically every single person on every single card for a couple months straight there, Justin winning the BMF bell, calling out all these different guys. And, and Diaz was kind of throwing his name in the mix and and then UFC 300 and the, the time or the, the whole USADA thing up and down. And then the, the fight date getting pushed back. And obviously, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a human being. I can, it, you can have, you can have unwavering faith. You can have great, confident expectancy. You can expect great things to happen. You can, you can build yourself up and do the right things for the right thing, the good things and blessings to, to be bestowed upon you. But it doesn't mean that you can't be so naive or so, so uneducated throughout life to know that bad things are going to happen. Like doors might get closed. Right. So I have my moments, of course. Um, but overall I stayed in the gym. All I did was tr- try to focus on what I can control, man. When, when everything is taken away from you from a control standpoint, even though you know, you're doing what you need to be doing, even though you know, you're making the right decision, even though everyone is criticizing you and pointing the finger at you, I stayed steadfast. I stayed immovable. Um, the little bit of time off was good. You know, I looked at it from that perspective, man. I spent more time with my, my wife and boys in the last 15 months that I have my entire Hap's entire life and Ace's entire life. Um, shoot, my wife and I's entire marriage. We were we married 10 years this September. Um, my body needed a little bit of time to heal up. There were so many blessings on the business standpoint. I'm crushing it in business. So it's uh there was a lot of blessings in there, and I could I could count those blessings, even though my flesh, my human, every now and then was like, dang, dude. You're going to look like a big idiot if this thing doesn't happen. And that's that's the ego talking, and ego is the enemy, and luckily here we are. And, and sometimes the UFC is in a pinch. They need something. They put. Did they ever try to convince you to take another fight? Uh, we need you for this one. We need you to headline this. We need you to do was, – was there any offers thrown your way that you had to decline? Never, man. And it's bad business. It's bad business for me to be, for me to be sitting on the shelf. You know, if you look at the UFC from, from a business standpoint – it's bad business for one of the most exciting guys on the roster, if not the most exciting guy on the roster, to be sitting on the sidelines this long. Really bad business. And these are smart businessmen. Um, you got to remember, too, man, what did we just have this past weekend, man? Gaethje got booked. Gaethje's been booked twice, right? Or Poirier got booked twice. Mm-hmm. Armin, Oliveira, Benil Darius, all of these guys, I was all in the rankings with all of these guys, never once got a phone call. Now, if I would have called the UFC and said, forget it, I'm done, done waiting on Connor, they would have put something together. Absolutely. Chandler, we're going to put you on the next big card because you're one of the guys who can sell a pay-per-view. We need you on some pay-per-views. So that was one of the big things for me as well, man. It's bad business knowing that I was sitting out and the UFC, if the UFC didn't have a plan and they didn't have confidence that this thing was going to happen, maybe it didn't happen in September like we wanted or December or then January, then UFC 300. Maybe it wasn't going to happen on the timeline that we wanted, they wanted, maybe even Connor wanted. Um, but obviously here we are. And now the waiting felt so long in the moment. And now we are so close to this next fight. And now that waiting that I just did feels like a blip on the radar especially because it all came to fruition, you know? So anybody who is going through a season like I just went through, eventually you'll get to that point and you'll look back and you'll say, man, I added so many layers to my human. I added so much to me and I can stand on my own two feet right now, knowing that I made the decision that I want to make. You can say all you want and put me in a box and tell me what I should do and everyone else can do it. But I made this decision. 
I am in charge of my life. I am running my race and I'm going to focus on winning. So I take confidence from that. I draw confidence from that. And yeah, I had so much, I had so many, I had so many conversations behind the scenes that nobody ever heard for me to have enough reassurance that this fight was going to happen. I preface this question by saying, I don't believe this and he doesn't have a history of doing this ever, but I did see some people saying, ah, I'm only going to believe it once I see them in the cage together. Is there any part of you that worries that doubts that he doesn't show up? Listen, man, I, I, I might have some doubts that he's training as hard as me. I might have some doubts that he is taking it as serious as serious as me, but yes, exactly what you said. And you're an insider, man. You've studied the sport more than anybody else. And I'm a guy who doesn't have too big of an ego to give my opponent, the man who I want to dismantle, give him some props. He's had multiple opponents in the past, pull out short notice Diaz, which he lost by the way. Uh, Aldo pulls out, he fights Chad, man. As he, he, when he signs his name to the dotted line, yeah, he's going to throw some smoke and mirrors. Yeah. He's going to troll. He trolled you. He trolled me. He trolled everybody. He's going to, he's a showman. He, he likes to be the puppet master, right? He likes to, he likes to get the reactions, but when it comes down to Conor McGregor, the Mac is back, the greatest comeback in combat sports history that he has been talking about now for this long. It's on this date. He has signed the contract. The man will show up. It's going to be it's going to be an act of God or a ridiculous, crazy set of circumstances for him not to show up. That's my personal opinion. And that doesn't and that's coming from the guy who's not supposed to be giving him props. Right. right. Everybody. Everybody loves to say I'm a bootlicker. I want the red panty night. I want this. And I want that. But if you look at my, my track record, man. I have no problem giving my opponents props. I have an immense amount of respect for anybody who lives this lifestyle, anybody who trains the way we do and makes the sacrifices that we make. And Connor is an exception to the Connor is exceptional uh, when it comes to that. He's a man of his word. He's going to show up. I actually think that's the right thing to do is to give your opponents prop because if you, you know, this is the example I always talk about. Like if, if you, if you crap on your opponent and say he's lesser than, and that he sucks and this and that, leading up to the fight, and then you either A, lose to that person, then what does it say about you, or then B, beat that person and are crying and you're emotional because you just want to fight. Well, you just told us for three months that that person sucks. Why do you care so much? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the Tommy Fury, yeah. Jake Paul thing. T Tommy Fury was telling us Jake Paul's a bum. Bum, 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 bum. And then he beats him and he's crying like he just won the biggest fight of his life. I was like, wait, I thought he was a bum. So this is the way you should promote someone. You build them up because then when you beat them, it looks even greater. No one wants to think that you beat a bum. Yeah, I mean it's it's a smart promotional tactic, right? But it's also just the way that I operate. I mean, I can, I just, I, I mean, I think I've I've always I've always wanted to go against the grain, right? I I was wrestling in college and started watching mixed martial arts and watching how fights were being promoted and dudes trashing each other and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, I get how how you're supposed to sell a fight, right? But it just doesn't it doesn't feel authentic to me. I mean, yeah, I've had my. I have my convictions. I have my beliefs. I have my my vision for how fights are going to go down, how I'm going to beat a guy, where their where their deficiencies are. Um, but and I can have confidence without also without in the same in the same breath trashing my opponent, right? I can have confidence, but also in the same breath uh, speaking highly of my opponent because also we're in the valley. We are in the muck. We are in the suck. All, all as long as we are doing these training camps and this lifestyle that we live and it live in and this sport itself the grind it will beat you down to your knees right so i have a ton of respect for anybody i'm stepping in the cage with and then you're at the highest level man i have fought nothing but absolute killers since i came into the ufc i'm making good on the promise when i looked hunter campbell in the eye and said i want to come into the ufc i want to fight the toughest guys right away either i am who i say i am or i'm not i'm not here for a long time i'm here for a good time everybody everybody knows all the lines, right? And that was the truth. And it still is the truth. It hasn't been that long. It's been a little over three years, right? So, um, man, I got a ton of respect for him, but I can't wait to dismantle him. Do you think he's training as hard as you? Nobody trains as hard as me, man. <laughs> uh, no, so, I mean, I uh, he's training, you know, he's sparring, he's putting he's putting the rounds in, he's putting he's putting the work in. Man, I uh, I truly believe, man. I mean, there's there's some pressure on me, right? I can't lose to the guy who's been out for three years, right? Mm. I can't lose to the guy who's who's been written off. I can't lose to the guy who who gave up and he's sleeping on silk sheets and on his Lamborghini. Yeah, I, I can't lose to that guy, right? So there's a lot of pressure going on, and I do know and think training to fight the most motivated Connor that we have ever had. It's going to be hard to top Connor 
the motivated Connor from 2016 and 2018 and all the fights that we all loved and all watched and watched his meteoric rise. And how he captured the hearts and minds of not just the mixed martial arts community, but the entire world. Now, coming back, trying to prove a point, trying to trying to silence the doubters, um, but also prove your, your supporters correct. That's a dangerous man, you know, and he's got it's when he gets the passion back and the bug back. It's a dangerous man. And he's well-versed in stepping into absolutely huge, massive stages. And uh, 73 days from now, we find out who's the better man on, on that night. The idea of retiring Connor being his last opponent, is this motivation to you? You know, um, kind of, you know, I mean, obviously you're always thinking about, um, you know, the different outcomes. You're always thinking about what it means. Um, you know, I've, I've said and I've gone on record now saying everybody has to buy this pay-per-view because one of two things is going to happen. Connor either succeeds in coming back and, and it being the greatest comeback in combat sports history and he gets a win and he's back on the he's back on the horse. He's back in the win column and he's probably fighting a huge, huge fight, whether it's the BMF belt, whether it's the lightweight title, whether it's the welterweight title, whether it's something right that's scenario one, but the most likely scenario is I go out there and absolutely dismantle him. And it might be the last time we ever see Connor fight. Right. And I don't, I don't say that with ill will saying, you know, I'm going to retire him. I'm going to put it, put him in a body bag and I'm going to bump all these different things. No, man, it's uh, we'll see where he stacks up in, in, in the world of the um, high class fighters in, in this, uh, in this division, whether it be 155, 170, um, I'm a top ranked guy ranked inside the top. I guess the new rankings came out. I kind of dipped a little bit now top seven. Um, so we'll see where he stacks up and it could be the last time that we ever see him. So people have to buy the pay-per-view because it could be the last time that you see Connor. Um, and you see me climb up to the next rung and then there's bigger and brighter lights on me after this fight. I understand if you can't answer this question, but I'll ask it anyway. And, and, and you do with it what you want to do with it. Last time we saw Chris Weidman, when he debuted, when he came back, I should say, after the injury, Brad Tavares attacked his, his leg, right? I mean, who wouldn't? It's fair game. Will you do the same? Man, I'm not a big leg kicker. Yeah. Um, honestly, throwing leg kicks hurts me most of the time more than it hurts my opponent. Um, now, I do have a feather in my cap that I, you know, I put Justin Gaethje in an ambulance via leg kicks, you know, the biggest leg kicker, which it's tough to talk about him right now because of what just happened. And God, I love freaking Justin Gaethje, one of the best to ever do it. Um, so, but that was obviously an orthodox versus an orthodox matchup. This is going to be orthodox versus Southpaw. Um, his hurt leg, if you would, going after it, it's his back leg. So me focusing on anything other than just, than just being me and focusing on my strengths uh, which is always punches in bunches, big punches, punches to the head, punches in the body, pick them up, put them down, type it in your face, put on the gas type of Michael Chandler style. Um, it would be silly for me to think about anything more than that. Um, you know, obviously, Weidman's, it was Weidman's back leg and Tavares was beating up the front leg, which then, you know, any, anytime you can mess up a guy's foundation, it's good for you. Ch changes their movement, messes up the power in their punches. But um, I don't see myself throwing a lot of leg kicks in this fight. Um, so haven't really thought about it that much. What about wrestling? Wrestling? What is that, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, people always say, hey, you're going to use wrestling. You're going to use, you know, you're going to use more grappling, more cage control. Um, you know, obviously, the last fight with Poirier took him down, held him, down, held him down the entire five minutes, stayed on top of him, beat him up a little bit, captured a wrist, suffocated him a little bit. Um, and that felt good. Um, the fight before that, um, taking down Ferguson, holding him down. But if I get somebody down, they're not getting up. Um, so I obviously know that is there. It has a lot to do with, with the style of, uh, of the guy you're fighting. It has a lot to do with their movement, has a lot to do with where their weight is. Is it the weight on the front leg, weight on the back leg? How long are they? How much range do they have? How do they fight? Do they fight tall? Do they fight short? Um, I like the idea of picking up Connor and putting him down. Um, I also like the idea of making good on the promise of knocking him out in the second round with my hands. Um, I think from the first exchange, Connor will second guess himself. I think, uh, I think I take the center of the octagon. I think I start sucking the, the oxygen out of the octagon. And uh, by the end of the first round, he's going to know I probably shouldn't have just, I probably should have found a different opponent. And then I finish him in the second, whether that be on the ground or on the feet, but I'd like to keep it on the feet. 
are you comfortable with the idea? Because throughout your career, you've you've been a you've been a fan favorite. I feel like the general sports fan, they're all going to want to see the great comeback, right? They're all going to be rooting for Connor just because of who he was. Are you comfortable with the idea of sort of being the villain here? Villain? I, I mean, I mean, it's a feel good story, man. That's why we love you know movies with with the the comeback story, right? People want to see a comeback, and people people want to people want to root for the underdog, you know. I'm the underdog on the betting lines, I guess, uh, from what I've seen. Is that but true? People want to see the guy. I mean, I, I mean, I think they're close, and people have talked about how I'm the underdog. Okay, whatever, man. I've been the underdog in most of my fights, I think, at this point. Um, but uh, you know, people want to see a comeback story. People love a comeback story, and honestly, even you know, me thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, if you could write a script and this guy breaks his leg and he comes back and he's he was able to pull himself from the ashes, man, it's it's a good story, right? But um, you know, it also is a good story. The guy who came from from the little mean streets of uh, High Ridge, Missouri, the small guy from the small town who everybody told him not to walk on to the University of Missouri. He does it anyway, becomes a four-time starter, four-time national qualifier and All-American, then gets into the sport, becomes a world champion, then comes into the sport of mixed martial arts. And all throughout the entire time, people said, you're not the right guy. You're not good enough. You should talk like this. You should walk like this. You should do your hair like this. You should cuss a little bit more. You should do this and you should do that. And the guy didn't listen. He kept his blinders on and he makes it to the pinnacle of the sport. That's a great comeback story too. That's a story that people can get behind for the everyday average, average 40 hour work week, blue collar people around the world. That's the story that people can get behind too. So um, I won't say villain. I'm not going to try to be the villain. The villain doesn't, uh, the villain doesn't really interest me. Um, I'm sure I'll have my moments when people don't like what I say, but uh, people will criticize things that, things that they do not understand, and they will criticize things that they are intimidated by. And people are very intimidated by somebody who is confident in themselves, and they are authentic in them, themselves, and they can stand on their own two feet. And I am that man, so I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, but it's going to be interesting, man. There's so many layers to this fight. And the buildup is going to be ridiculous. The storylines are a plenty, and uh, we got seventy three days to sell this thing and get the entire world watching. First of all, tremendous promo and uh, your 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 evolution as a promo artist, nothing short of amazing from when we first met. <laughs> Second of all, I'm being told minus one ten even right now. So you guys, according to the odds makers, are are neck and neck. I would love, okay. by the way, to see a couple press conferences, like old school UFC leading up to this. Uh, it would be so much, with, with your gift to Gab and his aura, of course, is there any talk of this at all? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, obviously this is a, this is a big fight, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I would argue, um, and this is no disrespect to, you know, we, we want to break that, that Khabib number, right? The 2.4. And that oh, was huge dear. because of the animosity in the biggest, you know, the biggest Muslim uh, athlete on the planet. I mean, it had, it had all the and all the makings of of it doing that kind of number. But this one, Connor's comeback, uh, one of the most violent guys in the sport. I mean, it's it's uh, we got seventy three days to build this thing. I know the UFC wants to build it. Man, I'm I'm ready to go anywhere. I'm ready to go anywhere in this country. I'll fly I'll fly to Ireland tomorrow. I will hop uh. on a plane and fly to enemy territory tomorrow and get booed, get pints thrown at me, get every get everything thrown at me, man. And that's not because I want to be the villain or anything. I want to take this thing by the horns, man. I uh I've enjoyed it. Um I uh I'm excited about it. And yeah, there's some talks going on and and we're going to we're still 73 days out, yeah. so we still got so a little bit of time, you know, 9, 10 weeks or whatever it is. So there's going to be some stuff happening and you know, you know what the UFC, it's it, the, the lead up is going to be a lot different than the uh, announcement, which was a little okay, tiny piece yeah. of paper. I think that's a little bit like oxymoron yeah. foreshadowing of how the next 73 days okay, are going to go. I'm glad. Um, and so, and so, okay. So, so here we are. And, and I think that you can make a case. Tell me if you feel otherwise, a win over Conor McGregor at any point is just as big as becoming a champion. Do you feel like, if if it never happens for whatever reason, you becoming UFC champion, will this will this suffice? Will this will this scratch that itch? You be the guy that beat Conor McGregor in the comeback fight, all that stuff. Will this be the thing that you could tell your kids and grandkids about, or are they two separate things in your opinion? 
Man, the, the competitor in me says, you know, you want to be the champion. I always said, even back when I when I got into the sport, when I was in Bellator, all those years, nobody watching, nobody covering my stuff. The, even the big pay per views, Ariel Hawani doesn't go to. They send the <laughs> they send the second stringer, the third stringer, you know. Uh, and I remember all that stuff, dude. I got receipts, and I and I always wanted to become the number one guy in the world. So the competitor in me says, I want that. But yeah, when it comes to making people feel something, when it comes to to doing something that the whole world is going to be watching, you get into the sport for a couple of different reasons. You want the biggest fights to fight the biggest guys under the brightest lights. It doesn't get any bigger than this. So yes, from the standpoint of, I mean, a- after this, where do you go up from this, right? You know, you got this huge fight coming up and fighting for the UFC title is, as a competitor, that's what I want, um, but it doesn't get any bigger than this. So, um, man, the BMF belt, the lightweight belt, the welterweight belt, they're all in my sights right now when it comes to options. And uh, But right now, I'm focused on this huge opportunity. Um, but I want, the, I want to wear gold before I retire. Okay, fair enough. Or and, silver, whatever, whatever that right. BMF belt is. Is that silver, platinum, yeah, whatever? Yeah, something like that. Um, just a couple more, and I'll let you go. Um, uh, we... we you know, we just found out that Dustin on that same piece of paper was Dustin fighting uh, Islam. We found out. Um, do you think he has a chance? Everyone's got a chance, um, but I think Islam. I mean, Islam's good, man. Um, once again, this is me giving a ton of respect to a guy that I want to fight. Um, Islam is very good. Southpaw versus Southpaw. One guy who's uh, much better at wrestling. At this point, um, the ease at which Dustin gets taken down is a scary thing for him. Um, I don't know how you spend the next, uh, it's not even eight weeks, right? Um, Yeah, no, it's like a month It's about eight weeks, seven weeks. You know, I don't know how you spend that much. I don't know how you, how you can make up the ground to be able to stop some of the takedowns that you know Islam is going to throw at him. But Dustin hits very hard. Dustin has the heart of a champion. Dustin is, I would say, the most skilled guy I have fought ever in my entire life from a standpoint of huge heart, Great cardio. His mind is with it when he's in the octagon. He'll he'll he will play possum just like he did with me. He will lose round. He will concede position. He'll do all of these different things to win the fight. He's a he's a certified competitor. Um, with that being said, I think Islam is better than him in every single aspect of the sport, except for the sheer boxing. So. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be entertaining. I will not be there, um, but I'll be watching. Can Armin? And I would love to fight the winner. Armin just went out there, beat Oliveira. Obviously, he sounds like he's going to be number one contender uh, next. I also don't understand why he didn't take that fight. I would have taken it. Um, Even though it's a short turnaround. Man, you don't get crazy. This yeah. sport moves fast. Yeah. The sport moves very fast. And June 1st, you're going to see the lightweight title happen. And then a couple of weeks later, you're going to see the biggest fight, a fight that's way bigger than that happen. And both of those guys are, can make lightweight. So the sport moves fast. So you got to take your opportunities. You got to pounce on them. That's a, that's a very good point. Do you think Armin can coming be- from the guy who just waited 15, yeah, 15 yeah, months? Yeah, yeah. So I get people like, Oh yeah, Chandler. Yeah. You really are pouncing on opportunities. Once again, I never got asked for any opportunities sure, that's over fair. the last 15 months. Yes. <laughs> we established that. Can Armin beat Islam in your opinion? Um, Man, I mean, when it comes just to straight, I mean, obviously he knocked out Benil. Um, he's good on the ground, man. You saw it in the Oliveira fight. He's he's strong on the ground, very strong base. He's a strong guy. Um, I still think, I mean, Islam, Islam's got a lot of guys' numbers, man. He's he's got a he's got a big calling on his life, and he believes it, and he is not fighting just for himself. He is fighting for the entire country. Um, he's fighting for Khabib's legacy, he's fighting for Khabib's dad's legacy. It's it's a lot deeper. And uh it's special. It's it's good. It's intimidating to a lot of people. And uh, but no, I think Islam retains against Poria. I think he retains against Armin. And I think uh, I guess that would have to be first quarter of next year. I would fight him. Okay. Uh, two last quick things. Um, June first, they're debuting the new gloves. It was announced last week. So that means you'll be fighting with the new gloves. Have you tried the new gloves? And uh, if not, I would imagine you'd like to wear them beforehand. So, like, are there any talks of sending them to you so that you can train in them? I just trained in them this morning. Ah, uh, <laughs> I should have known better. I did. I should have known. They're over there in my bag. Yo, I got tickets. Can I see them? Can I see them? Are they different? Come on, dude. Hold on. Okay, okay. Wow, this is fun. Um, okay. 
So he's tried them. It's going to debut for UFC 302. That's the, okay, here they are. Are they dramatically right, different? They Thanks for doing that, by the way. Thank you. Of course. Now, uh, are, is there black, gray, or is this the color? I don't know if the color, because to me, they're more of a gray, right? Oh. But you can tell there is there is a curve okay. here. So there is, it does to me, two things why I think eye pokes are going to be less and less. There is a curve, but then there also is this piece right here that doesn't let your wrist doesn't let your wrist oh, do this as much. Okay. So the less you can do that, the more you're going to be going up and kind of flicking people in the eyes. Um, I will say they're very, they're nice from a, they feel like a memory foam more than they do just a hard piece of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you can kind of do this and you can kind of feel it, feel it, uh, yeah. kind of recover a lot slower. Um, the wrist, the wrist is a little bit interesting or different. I would say the Velcro is really nice. It doesn't seem like it's gonna. Oh wow! Like you almost can't scratch anybody, so that's nice. But they're great. I mean, I trained in them this morning. Um, we did grappling and uh, some striking stuff, and you know, you can kind of tell they do this. And yeah, they, they kind of that's, slowly yeah. recover. How does that work? By the way, they they reached out to you and said we want to send them to you. Did you ask for them? How does that work? Yeah, they reached out and yeah. sent it to me. It's good to be the king. <laughs> I was like a, I was like a celebrity at the gym. Everybody's like, "Is that, is that the brand new uh, ones?" I'm like, "Yeah, come on, check them out." Like, were you the only one? So cool, man. Were you the only one that had them? I'm, I'm the only one on the planet that has these. Uh, Can you believe it? Yeah. No, I'm just joking. I'm not. I'm sure. I'm sure they sent them to other guys. That I bet Orie and Islam got. I mean, these are these are the the ones we're gonna fight right. with uh, for you know 302, 301, 303, whatever it is. Um, I think I'm gonna have to go up a size. I normally wear a medium, um, but we'll see. So, okay. But I mean, they were good. I like them. All right. Um, new gloves. You were there on Saturday. What was your experience with the Max fight? Like, you know, I've seen so many videos. People, how are you reacting? Who are you next to? What are you thinking? Take us inside your brain. Man, honestly, uh, you know, and you can see it because. Uh, social media kind of went through and, and got reaction videos, everybody, and everybody's doing this number and this number. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like doing this. I was literally praying for Justin Gaethje. Okay. You know, it was just, it happened. And I watched the way his body fell. I was like, dear God, please let this man get up. You know, Justin Gaethje, um, I'm a fan of him, dude. I love him. I think he's freaking awesome. Um, obviously he beat me. So I feel, you know, people are like, that's weird that you, you know, but you can have respect. He's, he's the guy he's the, he's the guy, he, you know, he's every single thing about him, the way he operates. So I was just, uh, yeah, I was just, I was like, man, this is one of those times where a guy who's, who's been in some crazy wars, taking a lot of damage, just get up, man. You know? And then obviously he did. Um, so that reaction and then, you know, not surprised by Max's performance. Max is really, really good. Any, any, any Max didn't look like he got touched, you know, which is crazy. Um, I think Max did such a good job of in and out and negotiating and navigating the range to where Justin was, was not able to get in almost Justin's. He took away Justin's technique. You know, Justin was kind of throwing like weird, weird overhand rights and weird hooks, you know, because of the way Max was navigating and negotiating the distance and going to the body, going to the head, pot shot and throwing kicks. He threw that spinning back kick like five or six times, one which, you know, landed and broke his nose. And you saw that from the first round. And obviously that's reminiscent of my last fight. I got my nose broken in the first round and immediately you can't breathe. And he had to spend the next 20 something minutes breathing through his mouth. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was crazy. Uh, he got sucked into the, you know, the point to the yeah. center of the octagon type of thing and ton of respect for Max. Um, love Gaethje. Hopefully he's, you know, takes a, a little bit of time off and heals up and, and gets a great fight. Cause I, I said this, I might've said it on your show last time I was on, man. I wanted to see Justin Gaethje fight for the title. He was, he had a ton to lose fighting on, um, Saturday. Yeah. And, you know, cause if he loses that fight now, he's not in title contention anymore. Now Armin's going to sneak in there or Poirier's got it after beating the number 12 guy, which is an interesting, interesting, uh, say to say the least. Um, but yeah, man, it was crazy. And, and sorry, one last very quick one, cause I'm just looking at your back drop there. You're not at home. You have two young kids. That's a crazy life, right? When you have two young kids, home is a bit chaotic. You're one of the few guys who are at the very top now who leaves his family. You go train in Florida. 
do you find yourself going crazy there? The the the, the silence, the solitude. Um, you'll you'll be there for probably two or so months, right? And I know maybe you'll visit with your family and whatnot. But like now that we're done, like what, is that tough? Is that like jail? Is how, how would you describe this? You know, it's like uh, it's like you're doing. I mean, you're you're you go back and forth because you know you miss them. You know your sons deserve their further dad to be there. You know the promise you made to your wife um, to be there for her. Um, but you also know that you're doing what God has called you to do. And when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it does make it a little bit easier. And it really is for a short window of opportunity. You know, it's I just spent the last 15 months in MMA purgatory, and now all of a sudden, boom! It felt like the it felt like a, a blip on the radar. And these these training camps. They do get long at times. I'm beat up. I'm tired. I'm I'm going through it, um, and I got to pull myself back up every single day and go and and be disciplined and do everything right. And it's very me focused. And when I do go home and see my family, I'm not I'm not the dad that they you know are used to because I'm still focused. I'm still in fight mode, right? Um, and maybe I'm too hard on myself, but um, so it, it's uh, I enjoy it from a standpoint of this is what we have to do. Right. And for many years we, we waffled on, you know, them coming down here at all times. Um, so I can do my training camps, but I made a decision that I'm going to fly home and see them a lot. And if my performance suffers, so be it. I, I will be a dad for the rest of my life. I'm only going to be a fighter for a couple more years. So it's more important to me to be a dad and to be a husband. So um, I fly home and see them often, um, pretty much every single week. So, um, I get my time with them and they know daddy's got to work. You know, my son's no, my son half knows, especially because I've talked to him about it a thousand times. He knows every man has to work. And someday through osmosis, through his subconscious, him seeing the way that I operate, him seeing, um, how the sacrifices that I make, the discipline that I have, he will be a, ridiculously upstanding citizen and a positive con contributor to this earth because of the blueprint and the masterpiece that I'm trying to paint for my two boys. So I rest in that. And, uh, it's hard at times, shed some tears at times, get homesick at times, of course, but it's part of it. And this is the, my calling and shoot, man, we're only 73 days away. So yeah. it, uh, it'll be over before we know it. So I'm really trying to just uh, soak it all in. Much respect, my man. So happy this all finally came to fruition. Good luck in training. Thank you, as always, for the time. It's always a privilege to talk to you, and especially at this moment. Who would have thought from all those years ago? You're about to fight Conor freaking McGregor in the main event of International Fight Week 2024. Pretty freaking amazing. So well done. Good luck. Congrats on it finally happening. And then, of course, can't wait for June 29th. Yes, sir. You're the man, dude. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll see you. Yes, there he is. Michael Chandler, we'll see him at International Fight Week 2024, June 29th. Oh, what a stretch. What a time, right? What a time to be a fan right now. What a time to be a fan of MMA. What a time to be a fan of uh, combat sports, dare I say. What a time. You are always on my mind. You are always on my mind. Can't wait for that fight. Okay, we have a lot more to do. Uh, first, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Yes, we love DraftKings. And as always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings. Oh, yeah. Hey, DraftKings, I do want to let you know right now, as we speak, Man City, Real Madrid, 1-1. Is that accurate, GC? That is accurate. Coming down the stretch. Real Same Madrid game parlay? Led. Oh, KDB just scored. One. Again? No, no, no. He was oh, the one that oh, scored oh, to tie yeah, it. Yeah, 76 yeah, yeah. minute. Yeah, Real Madrid was leading for most of the game. Bayern up 1-0 on Arsenal. Oh, my God. The trouble is the in stretch. Doubt. We're can coming we, down the stretch. Can we lay a little lumber? Uh, you could, yeah. I mean, if you want to bet live... What is, what is that. it? What is it? What is it? Right now. Draw minus 370 in the Man City game. Man City plus 360. To advance, Man City minus 255. Look at us just throwing nice. out live lines. So how could it be a draw? Someone has to advance. If yeah, it, that's that's at the end of the extra time. So even if well. it goes into even if it goes into penalty kicks, then you win if you go with draw? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a win. Okay. Byron minus 3,500 to advance right now. Yeah, I mean, it's 90th minute, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've got that going on right now. Of course, the NBA playoffs going on. You've got uh, night two of the play-in tournament. Uh, GC's Atlanta Hawks 
Got anything on that? 940 tip. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Go be all be up all the way to midnight for that one. No it is, doubt about it. Is it is quite late. Um, that's what happens when you have two East Coast teams. I'll be watching the first game very closely. Heat and Sixers winner gets my New York Knicks. Last night you had the uh, Lakers beat the Pelicans and the Kings saying goodbye to the Warriors. Is this the end? We shall find out. Anyway, the 82 pre 82 game preseason is in the books. It's finally time for the real season. Don't miss out on any of the playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA from the playing tournament through the finals. DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds, boosts, and so much more. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code DMAR. New customers can bet just $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code DMAR only at DraftKings. Crown is yours. Gambling problem call 100 Gambler. Or in West Virginia, visit www.100gambler.net. In New York, call 877 hope and wire Text hope and wire That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available. For problem gambling, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resorts in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issue at cdkng.com slash bball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right. So, uh, let's go to the picks, and then we'll do on the nose. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Hello, gentlemen. How are you? What's that? Oh, good. What Arsenal, was... Arsenal almost just scored. Oh, my gosh. Almost just scored. You're watching this at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I got it on. It's okay. a two-TV, uh, two-screen day, you know? Or three. Three, yeah. Unless you're on. not watching us. Who, me? Well, Paramount can, uh, can do the side-by-side. Oh, Shout that's right. That's right. I like that. Shout out to them. Uh, I don't think we're doing a parlay pals this week. Oh, we're not. Okay. Well, thanks for telling me, guys. Um, you didn't get the memo? No, I did not. Oh, we emailed it to you while you weren't online. Ah. <laughs> you didn't. Yeah, I mean. Well, this whole segment is parlay pals. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Do I you agree. not have any picks? I do. I do have some picks for the for the boxing. Okay, so you're taking um, the weekend off from the parlay pals because all of a sudden you guys are on a winning streak and you just want to protect your record. Not all of a sudden. No, no, no. It's just because it's a... Uh, no UFC. Yeah, no UFC. All right. Might have okay, been. Okay, par- oh, okay, PFL card. Yeah. You know, boxing cards aren't very deep. Sure. And that's it, I right? mean, if the, if, the, if the people want to change, we can change. And we're going to have to hit up, you know, the Venezuelan Vixen. We're going to have to get... No, no, it's all good. And, and what is the plan thing. as far as the two-week break? That's a great question. Okay. All right. That's a great question. We're figuring, yeah, we're, having, 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 yeah, we're figuring this out on the fly. I didn't even think It is about a pretty that. good time to take a bit of a break. No UFC this weekend. Uh, the April 27th card is a little bit, uh, how you say, not the deepest. There is a pay per view, <laughs> and we'll be coming back the Monday after 301. We got to do it. We, gotta, we have to do one for 301. Okay. I think we still do one for Apex 91 as well. All right. All right it's up to you guys. I feel like we do it every uh, every UFC card. So. Okay, so that'll be online. You'll share that online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll post the graphic. We'll okay. The graphic. All right, we'll, we'll what do we got for this week? Uh, I got some plays on Haney Garcia. Uh, first up, Rick may disagree with me here, but I'm actually going to take the fight does not go to a decision. I'm not going to drop some stats on you with this one because Devin Haney almost exclusively goes two decisions over the course of the last five years. I actually think every single one of his fights over the last five years has gone to a decision. Uh, did drop pro gray last time out. Um, but just when it comes skill for skill, pound for pound in this one, I, I think Devin Haney is going to have a major advantage. And then on the flip side of that, Ryan Garcia's path to victory, in my opinion, is knocking Devin Haney out. And and then in addition to that, uh, Ryan Garcia has been dropped three times over the course of his last five fights. Uh, I think this one's going to, going to be chaotic. Uh, and I think uh, if Devin Haney wins, he can win in the late rounds. Uh, or if Ryan Garcia comes out victorious, I think he can knock Devin Haney out, uh, which leads me to my second bet. Plus 172 on that, by the way. Plus 330, the fight to end in round 7 through 12. I think this one will go uh, a little bit longer. These are obviously, you know, a little bit longer shots, plus money plays. Can't really do much with Devin's, uh, with Devin's money line, sitting at about minus 800 to minus 1100 range, depending on what book you're on. We're obviously on DraftKings Sportsbook, minus 800 form right there. Uh, but yeah, I like it to go longer, but I like someone to get a finish. And then lastly, I already mentioned Ryan Garcia had been knocked down three times over the course of his last five fights. Devin Haney got a, got a uh, knockdown last time against Progray. I will take Devin Haney 
to record one or more knockdowns in the fight, plus 168 on that one. So I got three picks for the main event of the Haney Garcia card, uh, and I feel pretty good about it. All three plus money. See if we can keep the uh, the underdog train rolling, and then I will do a little cross promotion, cross sport, just chalk donkey, just soupy, disgusting parlay. Uh, Arnold Barboza, Devin Haney in the boxing, and then Murad and Brendan Lochnane in the PFL. Four legs minus one thirty seven. You know you're in for something good when you got a four leg parlay that play, that pays out. Uh, at minus money. So uh, four bets for the weekend, not doing anything too crazy. Um, you know, keep the units up uh, after a big winning week at UFC 300 and, uh, and you know, save them as we move into uh, Apex 91 and UFC 301 after Ooh, that. Keep the, uh, keep the hot streak rolling along. Uh, so it should be good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, yeah, good yeah. luck. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, dude. Okay. Now let me pick up. Uh... Oh, I forgot. Because I, oh, this is the worst. Why does this always happen to me? Every time I, I turn off my computer, I have to re-sign into everything. Does that happen to you well, too, me? Frank? Yeah. Uh, no. I've got all kinds of problems with this computer. Every time I got to do the two-factor this and that. It's not like a ID10T problem or anything. I don't even know what that means. All right. Anyway, uh, here we are. Da-da. But extra time in old man city, Real Madrid. Oh, is that what's happening? Yeah, heading to the, the extra 30. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we'll keep an eye on that. You can watch along with us, a little impromptu watch along. But for now, it is a very late edition of everyone's favorite segment of the week. It is time... Yeah. It's time for a good old fashioned okay, I got all my questions. I think here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, da, 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 the moment has arrived da, da, da. to hear from the man himself, Ariel. Yeah. Live from the Box Studios in beautiful New York City. How are you guys doing back there? Everyone okay? And now to answer your yep. questions. Perfect. Oh, You've been better, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. You're very animated right now. I like you. Me? Yeah. Who? Me? Um, who me? I, I uh, I feel great. You know, we got a little break coming up here, giving people a little extra meat on the bone so they don't miss us too much. And, uh, then we say goodbye and then you'll really miss us when we're gone. Time now for everyone's favorite segment of the week. It is time to answer some questions. Uh, Luke. Hi, Ariel and crew. Long time listener. First time commenter. I just wanted to share an interesting fact about UFC 300's main event by defeating Jamal Hill. Alex Pereira has become the first light heavyweight champion to successfully defend the title in 1,133 days, UFC 259, Bohovic versus Adesanya, and the first to successfully defend against a ranked light heavyweight contender in 1,526 days, UFC 247, Jones versus Reyes. This is made even more impressive when you consider that he's only been in the UFC for 888 days. With this in mind, I pose this question to yourself, GC and Rick. Is Alex Pereira the guy to bring stability to the crazy 205-pound title picture? Amazing work, as always. Love the shows from Vegas last week. Keep it up, guys. I say yes. What do you guys say? Isn't that incredible? He's only been in the company for 888 days. Probably not. <clears throat> Seems oh. like he's speed running a third title, so probably not. What does that mean, speed running? Like he's trying to fast track to heavyweight to get a, another title shot there, so... Yeah, don't expect that <clears throat> he'll be like a light heavyweight stalwart by any means. I don't Tom know. Tom Aspinall. Uh, that was interesting with the, the picture, media. right? Well, no, he he took the social media today and confirmed that he's going to be on UFC Manchester, and now he's just waiting for his opponent to sign. Oh, okay. wonder if it's Alex Pereira. I was thinking about um, a new segment, like, because cause, cause that's a great... Uh, and then what, what happened on Monday? Um, oh, the whole Deontay Wilder, Eddie Hearn thing. Remember that? A new segment where it's like, end of the show, what I miss? And then you say, well, this happened and this happened. So Tom Aspinall took to Twitter. What else did I yeah, miss? Yeah, he took to social media, announced that it's official for uh, UFC Manchester. Three oh, oh he, announced, he announced Manchester? He said he have, he's officially on UFC Manchester, and he is just waiting on his opponent to sign the contract. What's the day? Didn't say. Oh, okay. 
Um, but you know what I mean? Because like, I feel like I, I go into a black hole during the show. Yeah. And all kinds yeah, of, like, yeah, yeah. I, I ended the show. I was like, what? Deontay Wilder took a picture with Eddie Hearn and he's, he's on team matchroom? What the hell is this? Crazy. Anyway. Uh, well, that's good news. I did like the picture that they posted of him looking over Alex, but I don't think, first of all, I spoke to Alex's team on Monday. They said he's not fighting on, uh, on uh, 301 because they said that he broke a second toe in the fight. And then they posted the video. Did you guys see that? They posted a video of uh, when he broke it and they were trying to like snap it back into place. Yeah. It was he was wildly calm about that. It was crazy. I felt more uncomfortable than he appeared. Yeah, he was like, yep, it's broken. Let's just put it back in place. Yeah. So anyway, I think we see him down the line, and I think we see him for at least one or two more heavyweight fights. There's enough, excuse me, light heavyweight. There's enough at heavyweight for the likes of Tom and at light heavyweight for the likes of Alex. I don't feel like they're going to rush it. Um, Justin, happy Wednesday, Ariel and the crew. From horrendous to tremendous, congrats to the Parlay Boys for the mighty resurrection. Onwards and upwards from here on out. Just wanted to provide GC with some positive closure our Atlantic City meeting and mutual betting slaughter that evening. You shouted me out first on the program last Wednesday, then said we'd make it all the way back on UFC 300, and boy, did we ever. I won back every dollar, almost to the penny, and you had quite a successful run as well. You seemingly manifested this, so I owe you a debt of gratitude once again. Long live the Parlay Boys. Any truth to the rumor, rumor that, much like Yuri, you were standing outside the sports book and just taking in the energy? Yeah, I'm actually surprised no one got a video of that. Yeah, I actually saw Yuri out there. We dapped up. We said hello. Yeah. He was like, you're getting the energy from the arena. I was just like, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to bounce back on these bets, man. He's just like, best of luck. He's like, did you take me plus four, 114? I'm like, you know it, Yuri. And then we went our separate ways. That was Justin that just asked that question, though? Yeah. Look at me with the names, man. Look at me with the names. I remember that from meeting him. Shout out to him. I didn't win every penny back yet, but we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, slow and steady. Anyway, he also adds excellent work from the whole team for all the content provided throughout the entire week as a film industry professional myself. I understand how much effort must have gone into all the prep and coordination. Thank you, Ariel, for everything you did to make 300 even more monumental. Your friend from Queens, Justin. You're right, Justin. It was, it was an undertaking, but they nailed it back there. So appreciate it very much, as do they. Ahmed, hi Ariel. Why is there no pushback on Dustin getting the title fight the same way people were mad at Colby? Both got the shot coming off one win and are 0 and 2 at title fights. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because Colby didn't fight for like two years when he got his title shot? A little bit different, wouldn't you guys say? I mean, I, I understand the sentiment and I do think Justin losing helped. And I do think the fact that Armin said no helped. Think of it that way. They went to Colby first in this situation and just said, oh, yeah, because he weighed in, he's getting this title shot two years after he fought uh, Jorge Masvidal. So. All you need to say is the Armin part. Armin was offered the fight. Sure. And turned it down. It's not the same situation. Yeah, it feels like a circumstantial thing. And then I also, I, I guess something else we missed. Daniel White was talking with... Uh, with Robbie from Barstool and said that uh, Matej Gamrot was offered to Islam and Islam turned that down. Hmm. So it feels very circumstantial for, for DP getting this. It's kind of like the, like the, the Cheeto fight. Like there were circumstances that got him there. Sure. Uh, feels similar here with Dustin Poirier. There you go. Um, we move along. Hector. What's up, fellas? Great coverage for 300. Felt like the MMA hour team really came into their own last week. I'm sure you have had this asked before. But given your growing success and platform, would there ever be a circumstance where you and Dana could have a sit-down interview and have an honest conversation? I know both parties would have to agree, obviously, but I feel like Dana has really leaned into doing media this year. Call me crazy, but I feel like it would actually benefit the both of you and be great for the sport. I'm sure there's a lot of other factors that play into this situation, but would be quite the scene, maybe for UFC 500. I mean, UFC 500 is in, what, like 16 years? Um Thanks for all you do. Love from the 305. I just I just don't see it happening. Um, but never say never. I don't see it never happening. It's not something I'm pursuing. And when you say he's leaning into media, it's a certain kind of media. I don't think he needs me. I know he thinks he doesn't need me, and he doesn't need me. Um, it would be something. It would be a grand old time. And as I've said time and again, more importantly... 
to anyone that I've had a quote unquote beef with or an issue with or whatever the people online want to call it, I am always open to shaking hands and moving on and letting bygones be a bygones with the people that I don't care for and they know who they are, the people that wrong me and they know who they are, the people that may think I've wronged them, whatever it is. Uh, I always just feel like life is too short. You can be mad. You can remember. You could try to forgive. You could try to move on. And uh, I always just kind of feel like that animosity, that, that hatred, that, that aggression just kind of festers inside of you and isn't healthy. It's, it's a different kind of illness. And so I try not to have that. And you can always feel certain things and we're all human and we may like things and not like things, but I, I try to not let them linger and, and, and forgive and forget. And if I got a call right now, I would never forget. I would never forget all the stuff that has happened. And I haven't shared all the stuff that has happened. And maybe one day I will, and maybe one day I won't, but um, I just, I just feel and, and, and not, not even for an interview or a scoop or anything like that. I just, I don't, I don't want to have bad feelings towards anyone. Um, and I don't want to be in, in, in a sort of toxic standing with someone. So I don't know what that all means. Um, I don't think this is happening anytime soon, but uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps down the line. Who knows? Our old friend Ant Evans writes, Dana White announced the comeback of the biggest star in UFC history after getting past a crumpled up piece of paper. My question to Ariel and the boys is, what is the best news you've ever gotten scribbled on a ripped up legal pad page? For me, it was when I got a note passed to me in Psychology 101 from <laughs> Jane Samways that she wanted me to take her to lunch. Alas, Jane actually didn't go out with me because she caught me doing NWO two sweet signs with my mates outside the classroom and pointing my thumbs to myself like Razor Ramon in celebration. <laughs> um, I actually have a similar story to that one. Um, actually, like, shockingly similar, which I guess that is actually amazing. I'll tell the story in a moment. Um, I don't think a lot of the good things have happened via a, a crumpled up piece of paper. Um, how do you guys feel about Chandler's take on the crumpled piece of paper? I kind of That's exactly what I would say. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. You agree with him? I'm no, I agree with him. Uh, I'm interested in this. Can, can, I, can, can a man speak here? Can I give you uh, my, Ooh, my riff on it? Uh, I agree with him in the fact that I like that they did it after the fights, not to take away anything from UFC 300. Uh, but the paper itself was uh, the, the paper and then like the bad acting of, oh, Connor versus Chandler is happening at UFC 303. Look at what happened, guys. Uh, I did not like. I didn't think it was cool. I think they should have had a promo ready to run once everything was done. You know, John Anik, Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier react, react to the main event. That was so crazy. And one last piece of news before we get out of here for UFC 300. Wow, Mac is back. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That's what I think they should have was done. Was that your Hans Zimmer drop? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it's it. kicking off a promo. Rick, why do you think they did it this way? I don't have an answer for you. Uh, maybe to to show Conor McGregor who who is running it. I I I couldn't tell you that that I have an answer because there doesn't there's not a good justification that I can think of. So unless Dana White is asked about it in the future, I don't know what the answer is. I agree with you, GC, about overshadowing it, like doing it on Thursday. A lot of people seem to think that it was going to happen on Thursday is a little bit weird because it takes away to a degree. But I will also say they announced Habib and and Connor on a Thursday press conference before an event in LA. That doesn't mean they have to do it again, but they have done this in the past. I think people would have been excited for 12, 24 hours and then they would have focused on 300. So I don't think anyone would have not bought 300. A. Yeah, can, I, can, can we stop there for a second? What does overshadows UFC 300 mean? What exactly happens? Oh, you my argument or, is or, if or, they or, do or, it or. as they enter the main card, like as you're going into the main card or like right before Max and Justin, you're just like, uh, Conor McGregor is coming back. Like yeah. it wouldn't overshadow it, but it's just like now you're digesting that news that Conor McGregor is officially back while the other fights are going on. Thursday, I would have been cool with too, because I do agree with you. I think what's, people would have reacted. What's the downside? Okay, so before, before you answer that, 
that's, if you recall, how they announced um, UFC 200. It was in the middle of UFC 199. They had the promo, and then Brock Lesnar showed up, and he said, you know, can you can you hear me now or something, or do you see me now, what, whatever he said. And then they reacted, and then we moved on. They also announced Diaz McGregor on that same card in the middle of the card. I think it was during the prelims, uh, to be honest. So they've done all of this before. And remember that one with uh, Izzy where he got he didn't love the promo and all that stuff? So they've done everything before. It just seems like right now... The new thing is to do it in the post-fight press conference. And I could tell you there was a debate as to how to do this. And I could tell you there were some people trying to get it on the broadcast. I think that if you do it on the ABC prelims, maybe as the last stop before 300, everyone writes about it, tweets about it, posts about it. And that is just kind of used as a way to let people know about the UFC. And oh shit, there's 300 on right now. It was just announced during UFC 300 that Conor McGregor is coming out. To me, that would have been... A, a sort of extra layer of promotion for 300 just to put out the bat signal one more time that this is happening and you use Conor McGregor coming back as the last, you know, bit of promotion and push for the card. So if I were in charge, and I know I'm not, but if I were in charge, I would have done a mid-card just to let people run with that news and, oh, by the way, mention that 300 is is on. And if you're one of those people who happens to be scrolling, happens to be online, like, oh, shit, 300, let me buy it. It's on right now. I like that plan. I'm all for that. That plan sounds great. I'm just pushing back against the idea of like overshadowing. I don't know exactly what that means. Like what, what happens from that point? Does everybody go, oh, this Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje fight stinks? Like what, what exactly no, happens? I, 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 think it's, the, I mean, it's exactly what we're saying. Like it just takes the attention away temporarily from the fights. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter when they announce it. It's like by the time we get around to June 29th, the same amount of people are going to be watching. You'll have heard that Conor McGregor is fighting by then, and if you're going to watch, you're going to watch. So, like, it's all sort of a moot point. Uh, but I think if you announce, like, as you're going into a fight, I don't know, I just feel like as big of news as it is, it would temporarily distract from it. I, I, I would present to you that the, the biggest fighter in the sport is worth that distraction at all times, every time. No I'm really not too passionate mind. about this. I'm not going to lie. Like, wh- wherever they do it is, you know... I, I, just, like, I don't uh, think it matters that much. I think most people would agree with you, to be honest. But the same way I feel passionate about the poster and the promos and all that stuff, what, 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 what piques my interest is the fact that it feels deliberate. It doesn't feel I, like a I'll fight that happened. There, yeah. So, so why is is that's the question I asked Rick at the top? Like, why did it happen? Because or, or this is the company, the by the way, that got really mad at me for breaking news before their promo, <laughs> and now your your promos have been resorted to you know, a piece of paper. Right. You know right. what I mean? So so that's just not how big fights get announced. That's just not how it, it, it happens. It could be like you said, like it's the new thing. Like they did it for MVP too. Yeah. Announcement and, of and MVP this is just much comes bigger, on. right? Oh yeah, much, much bigger. But for sure. what I wonder is was it deliberate? Going back to the Rick point, yeah, was it so. a way to say like, okay, like no one is bigger than us, no one's bigger than the organization. We announce all these fights the same way. Like even the piece of paper gimmick <laughs> was weird. Like he could have <laughs> sat up there and said you know, all right, I got some news to break before all of this. Like, even that felt a little bit like they sat back and were like, okay, what's, you know, what's the way that we can make this seem so kind of ho-hum? I don't know. The whole thing was... Well, you you only have to go back to the night before where Dana White at the Power Slap press conference said, we have no deal in place with Conor McGregor. Yeah, that was Which true. is odd to say when you're on the verge, if not already signed to deal with Conor McGregor. So I don't... The breadcrumbs lead me to the to the opinion that it was intentional. Why it was intentional, I could not answer. Don't know. Um, but it feels like a misstep. I don't buy the idea of like overshadowing when you have the most captive audience, when you are looking at the most potential people who are going to buy your pay per views in the future, and the largest way to grow your audience, and you've got the biggest fighter in combat sports. Fire that bullet whenever you can. Fire that bullet, and I I don't know why. Um, and even if it was to happen after the fights in the post fight press conference, whatever, certainly people will find that, but that's a smaller audience than the people watching on ABC. That's a smaller audience than the people watching on pay-per-view take advantage of that and sell that pay-per-view with Conor McGregor with everything you've got. Michael Chandler's talking about, you know, I want to sell 2.4 million pay-per-views and, and do better than Habib. It ain't going to happen on a, on a sticky note, uh, handed to somebody at a post fight press conference. That's not the way it's going to happen. So I don't know. I feel like it was a major misstep. And by saying that you have no deal in place the night before, it feels like 
it feels like it should have been more of like a surprise. Like it feels like you're like brewing something by just completely denying it when the way that you announce it is by just bringing a piece of paper to the table. Right. Like it feels like he kept you were trying to set up a surprise. Calling it internet bullshit. I don't know what that was all about. Like you've, you've announced fights this way. What are you talking about? We're just going off of history. Um, some, uh, some factoids regarding 300 that the UFC has issued. Third highest gate. We knew that 16.5 million attendance. 20,000 new record for a UFC event at T-Mobile, sixth consecutive sellout in 2024 and the 11th straight sellout dating back to October of 2023. Most most watch UFC pay-per-view prelims ever across ESPN platforms. That includes Plus, Hulu, SVOD, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes combined. Most watch UFC pay-per-view prelims ever on ESPN with 1.86 million total viewers. Um, viewership on ESPN grew every 30 minutes, peaking with 2.4 9 million total viewers at 9.48 p.m. Eastern. Would have been a good time to announce kind of here. Uh, most viewed sports event of Saturday during primetime. Amazing. And a couple more. Number one all-time merchandise sales. A GC contributed to that. Number two all-time merchandise sales for any UFC event ever. Only behind UFC 193, Rousey versus Home. Um, highest grossing sponsorship sales for a UFC event in history. All available inventory sold out um and then there's a bunch of other stuff here best performing event on social media in ufc history two 213 million views coming from max holloway's knockout of justin gaethje crazy i like that they posted it right away that's always fun when they do that all right we move on oh by the way what's crazy about Ant's story here is which i think is a story i might have told on the show before when i was in syracuse i was psychology was my minor and uh i had a psychology class this was my second year and and i would we would always sit in the same you know auditorium i remember it very well and i always sat next to this girl that i never spoke to but who was quite good looking and i met her midway through the semester at a bar on a friday night and i didn't really go out much it wasn't really my thing and uh, still isn't really my thing. And I was like, oh, you sit next. I couldn't believe it. Gave me her number. Oh, it was so exciting. I remember it was February and All-Star Saturday night was happening. And I was preparing for an interview with the Iron Sheik the next day on my pro wrestling slash MMA radio show. And, you know, usually Friday night you get the number. You probably wait. What do you wait, GC? You know, you're younger. Tuesday, Wednesday. What's the, what's the game plan? What day did you get it? Friday. Oh, man, Tuesday, Wednesday might be a little too long. Okay. All right. So anyway, I called Saturday. Too soon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. Whatever it was. It was too soon? <laughs> well, I mean, it was either too soon, which I doubt, or it was, hey, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm prepping for my interview with the Iron Sheik on my wrestling MMA radio show tomorrow morning. Either way, I never heard back. Um and so very reminiscent of Ant's story about the psychology class and the note and and then the two sweet NWO sign and uh and and then never hearing back from Jane Samways. If you're out there, Jane, give Ant a call. He's looking for you. Uh Lewis, moderator, Emeritus, Ariel. In this current run of the show, it feels like we keep reaching new peaks and milestones. This last week has been so much fun to watch, listen, and enjoy. The show, yourself and the crew are truly operating. At all-timer levels, something I wondered, how did presenting and interviewing on the sofa compare to the in-studio desk setup? You're without your laptop, desk, trinkets, and tchotchkes, just yourself and the subject. Do you find this added openness and opportunity to read body language makes the interviews feel different? Do you find different reads and avenues to explore when conversating and interviewing this way? Thanks again for the week that was, is, and will be. Love to the entire crew, Lewis. Um, always a very thoughtful question from Lewis. And, and... I totally understand where he's coming from. This is different. This is different than in an arena or at someone's gym or at someone's home or what we did last week where you're in a hotel. I've done the hotel interviews before. Usually I'm going to someone's hotel, but we've done, I did, did a lot of them with BT where it was a neutral ground and it's different. It's different when someone's coming to you as opposed to when you're coming to them. It's different when you're in the studio as opposed to, like I said, the arena I didn't feel like it was so much different than this because they were coming to us and I'm used to doing the hotel interviews, but I will say I really enjoyed it. It felt very comfortable. It felt very relaxed. Everyone was very open. Um, I think they all noted that they were comfortable and relaxed. So 
yeah, I really liked it. It's a, I'll tell you this much. It's a much different vibe when they come to you when they're in your home, so to speak, as opposed to when you go to them. It's just different. The, the, it's just the, the, the openings are different. Um, to me, it's very noticeable and palpable. So I love it all. I don't really like one way over the other, but it's just a completely different vibe. And I love the hotel interviews. They're, they're, they're very relaxed. They're very unguarded, chill. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, Max, hello, Ariel. A question on the potential Nunes versus Kayla matchup. Why is Dana so positive about the idea of Amanda Nunes coming back and doesn't seem to hold any grudge because of her retirement? He clearly hates early retirements, GSP Cejudo. Why is he so open to the idea and does not hold any grudge towards her? Greetings from Germany, my man. You know, when I read this, I was like, yeah, he's right. Because Dana has told us that he doesn't like this. And yet he, he never really seemed to hold that grudge against Amanda. Honestly, this is a question for him and not for me. But... I don't know. Maybe he feels like she did it all and it was justified and maybe she told him before. And those guys didn't. But it's a great point and that's why I wanted to read it. But uh, that would be a question that he would have to answer. Taco Enthusiast. Hi, Ariel. Do you feel pretty confident that they're saving Leon Edwards for the Manchester card at this point with 301, 302, 303 set with main events? Yes, I do. And UFC 305 in Perth. It has to be him versus Bilal or somebody at 304. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's not a chance that that title fight co the McGregor-Chandler 303 card, is there? No. Absolutely not. Especially not if they're going to England three weeks later. No way. By the way, your interview with Mark Coleman was incredible. The space, time, and respect you gave him to open up was beautiful to watch. What a story. What a man. I know you're not at ESPN anymore, and you're never at the fights themselves. And I also know you get a ton of shit from people, but that interview exemplified why the UFC needs you in the sport. Yes, needs you, even if you're not in the building. That's very kind of you, Taco. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that interview with Mark was something else. I didn't really do anything. He told the story, but I appreciate it very much. Newman. Hello, Ariel and crew. Now that McGregor and Chandler has finally been announced in the most bizarre fashion, he notes, for 303 on June 29th, let's do some fantasy matchmaking to fill out the main card. We know they aren't going to add any title fights to a McGregor card. They might add an interim title fight if you know what I'm saying. And they always want to have big names on International Fight Week. So, and if it's interim, no pay-per-view points. What would you pick as your ideal matchup for 303? I'll start by kicking off the main card with Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Namagamadoff. What about the co-main chief support? Uh, I love the idea of Ian Gary versus Colby on that card. I just love the idea of Ian versus anyone on that card. Just to, to, to tie him to Connor. Do you guys have a fight that you want to see on that card? Very much so. No dream fight, but they did announce uh, Joe Pfeiffer is going to be fighting on that card against Mark. What do we got? Is, this is another thing I missed. Yeah, yeah MAB. We... MAB. What is it? What is it? Who's he fighting? Mark Andre Barry. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was very excited. I'm yeah, happy yeah, to see. Yeah. I saw Joe at WrestleMania. Yeah, big body bags back in the octagon. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It doesn't really matter what else they put on it. I'm sure they're gonna try to load it as well. But I uh, like the Gary idea. I like having gotta have Gary, and, Gary and, and Conor McGregor in the same card and why not Colby Covington? Oh my god, it'd be huge. That's all you really need. That's a that's a that's a fine co main. Um, well, it sounds like you were you were teasing. Well, if there if there's else. no interim, yes, but interim then would be interim, the yeah, interim. What division? But yes, G- uh, Gary Gary Colby's the answer for women, sure. That, women's one thirty five. Wow, she said it on Monday. Be crazy. It would be. Um, That'd be nuts. My laptop is on fire right now. What is going? I feel like it's going to like. How old is that thing, man? It's brand new. It's wow. two. It's two and a half years old, but they just put in the new thing, and it feels like it's gonna two and a half years old, brand new. I mean, no, but they put in the thing last summer. Oh yeah, yeah, you had to take it to the shop. Yeah. Sounds like you just got to take it back to the shop, man. It hmm. feels like it's gonna explode, Frank. What do you think I should do? You know what? I think you should throw it in the trash because you're not responsible enough to take I it to the Apple Store. I don't have time. You got to make the appointment. I even this. was like, hand it off to Connor, let him take. Oh, how how nice of you to. Uh, to uh, volunteer hey, Connor to do rising something. Rising tides. So Frank does all best, ships. man. So Frankie does best. Oh, my God. Uh, Spud Greg, during your interview with Kayla on Monday, kept thinking to myself, that last pound is always the hardest to lose. With that in mind, do you have any worries about her making championship weight? No. Uh, she is a pro. She is a legend. She is an Olympic gold medalist two-time. Clearly, you know, she wants to do something. She sets her mind to it. She does it. 
Gilbert, dear Ariel, I believe in the post UFC 300 show you do with PT and Chuck. You said that you knew that the Connor Chandler fight was a done deal a few days before Dana read it off the back of his crumpled laundry ticket. I have two quick questions. Why didn't you break it if you found out? Uh, because I was asked not to. And that's why the 200 thing has always bothered me, what Rogan said and what other people have said. Ask anyone on the planet, including the UFC, including Dana White, if anyone has ever told me this is off the record, it has always remained off the record. And so I will never break that. It's not worth it. No scoop is worth it. No tweet is worth it. No report is worth it. And I was told this, and I was asked to not talk about it. And uh, and you got to respect that. Because I can assure you of this, if I did break this rule, I wouldn't be here. No one would want to talk to me ever again. Ever, ever, ever. I would lose all trust. Um, I know you have touched on this topic before, but are you pretty much done breaking news? Not really. It's just the relationships, the show, the interviews are more important. But if things fall in my lap, I'm just not as... Uh, aggressive, I guess you can say, and it's not as important. Also, I don't write for a website at the moment. And so I don't really need to do it. It's not part of the job description in my life at the moment, but that could change. Um, but sort of felt like been there, done that and don't have to do it anymore. And quite happy about that. Cause it wasn't, it was very stressful as you can imagine. And, and I have no issues with my time doing it, but I'm not Calling people up, what about this? Who's doing this? Who's I mean, it, it used to be incessant back in the day. Um, JD Miami, was it just me or was the UFC's video for Chael an interesting choice? While the fight is obviously legendary, it must have been rough for Chael to essentially watch himself lose all over again. I mean, he did lose, and I thought they, they showed him in a good light. Um, I texted him afterwards, and he seemed fine with it. He seemed happy with it all, so... I don't think that he, I mean, like, you can't sugarcoat it. He's going into the Hall of Fame. By the way, I, I wanted to ask you guys about this because they said it afterwards. It, do you consider Chael a Hall of Famer now because his fight is in the Hall of Fame? Rick, what do you think? Yes. <clears throat> Even though it's not accomplishments, it's just about the fight. Is he a Hall of Famer? If he is a participant in it and it is in the Hall of Fame, then yes. Um, what about you, Connor? I think he's part of the UFC Hall of Fame. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, though. Right, because then afterwards I, I saw them saying, like, oh, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. I, I don't really have a strong take, but I, I wonder how other people feel. Like, it came up with Cub Swanson as well with Duhu Choi. Part of the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah. Not a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, the only thing I was thinking that whole time is where is Anderson Silva? Let's Let's – call out the obvious, right? Like where was Anderson the, Silva? The guy, the guy who won the freaking fight is not anywhere to be seen and not mentioned. And we're just, you know, Chael's in the front row. Is Anderson getting, Silva in the hall of fame? Probably, probably they, not. Didn't they I don't actually even know. Year? Why didn't we go to the hall of fame? Yes. Yeah, maybe they did, yes. They did. Anderson do him last Silva year. was last year. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Frank. Um, the audio guy. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Frank. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, you know what? I'm impressed. Frankie got me there. I'm I'm very that impressed. That was that was really good. Um, what did, what did you ask, uh, Connor? Why didn't we go to the Hall of Fame when we were in Vegas? The actual physical Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's like a it's a wall on a stairwell. Oh. Huh. Why didn't we go to the stairwell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why did you go? I don't know. I didn't know where it was, man. It's... I thought it was going to be like Canton. No, I, I would love for it to be like Canton. Cooperstown. Should, should be. Should be. Um, Santiago, hello, crew. With the addition of Taylor Serrano, too. By the way, I, I mean, didn't really get a chance to talk about it today, but yes, yesterday was announced uh, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, too, is going to be right there. That fight right there. The rematch. The co-main for Jake Paul. No, right there. This one. Right here. Other shot. Main shot. Yeah, right there. That, that right there is going to be the rematch. Uh, excuse me, the co-main is going to be the rematch, this time at 140 pounds. The co-main is going to be the rematch? No, the rematch is going to be the co-main to Jake Paul and Mike Tyson on Netflix on July 20th. What an announcement, guys, for so many reasons. Katie Taylor, matchroom fighter, DAZN fighter, some way, somehow, she's fighting on this card. You see no matchroom logos on the poster at all. Um, Serrano moving from 126 to 140, two-minute rounds, 10 rounds, two-minute rounds, not what she was doing obviously you know prior to this in her last couple fights um and if you're a, a boxing fan who was like this is crap how could you now hate on the event you could just close it afterwards but
But this, I think, brings great legitimacy to this event. Taylor's Round 2 is going to be in front of 70,000 people at AT AT&T Stadium and in front of millions on Netflix. Pretty nuts. Isn't this insane? This is incredible. I'm stoked. Got to to be there for it. I feel feel the excitement just radiating off the screen here. And all all joking aside, like... It's gigantic. yesterday morning, my wife was like, did you hear about Serrano and Taylor? Like, this is happening. Amazing. In the morning, I thought it was great. Um, anyway, uh, he also asks, will Ariel be the host of this event? Um, not host, but, uh, there have been some talks. Don't know what's going to happen. Nothing official, but I'm never really the host of these sort of like WrestleMania, but, uh, let's see, July 20th, uh, big money. I'm going to, um, recap what you wrote. You asked me if there should be a promo bonus coming off of the, uh, Moicano promo that has gone everywhere. No, I don't like that because I kind of feel like, you know, I sort of feel like then people will try too hard and it'll be fake and inauthentic. I also don't like when they press them, like, give us a name. We need a name. Like, yo, man, he, the guy just fought. What do you, chill out. Um, but no, I don't think there should be a promo bonus. That wouldn't be a good idea, just like the Twitter bonuses weren't a uh, good idea. Uh, Pecan Pie up in this asks me about Armin Sarukian turning down the title fight. You know, I, I don't blame him. DP, excuse me, uh, Chandler brings up a great point. Uh, he says, like, yo, man, this thing could pass you by. What if I win? What if Connor wins? You might not get that title shot. It's a tremendous point. It really is. Um, six weeks rematch. You're probably not getting another chance after that one. Uh, tough one. And I'm sure it was a really tough decision. Drick has had to go through it. It all worked out for him. So ultimately, I don't blame him. But I mean, he brings up a great point. The winner of June 29th could possibly usurp him, but I I feel like he thinks that they'll go do something else and he won't be. If not, it's got to be him next. Um, Takes a lot of confidence to do that. Some stones. Ultimately, if there wasn't the threat of that, I I say a thousand percent he made the right call. Cross is asking me about the people who are involved in the rankings and uh, he says that most of them are from expired websites and websites that haven't posted in years. I mean, it's sort of like when they find out that dead people have voted in elections. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, he's asking me who's actually voting on these. I don't. I don't know. I really don't. And I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone just moving and shaking it. Um, it's bizarre. You go look at the 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 websites, and I love when Dana sits up there and he's like, "You guys vote on this." I'm like, "Who are these guys that are voting on this? Who are these people?" Um, working for, you know, rock station websites and websites that don't exist or don't up is, is very strange, um, that they base things off of this, but why is Max Holloway ninth in lightweight and Justin Gaethje is third? Uh, who the hell knows? None, none of it makes sense. Um, this is from Ozzy Jamal. Okay. So he wants to do rapid fire for us. If we are interested in these upcoming fights, Charles Oliveira versus Gamrod, yes or no? Yes. Sh- yes. Um, Justin Gaethje versus BSD. Yeah, of course. Yes. Hell yeah. Armin versus Islam Dustin winner, yes. Yes. Diego Lopez versus Movsar Evloev. Yeah, really. Hell yes. Me. Shout yes. out to Jed Mashu. For sure. Uh, Jim Miller versus Benil Dariush. No. No. Yeah. Big no. leap. Um, Bobby Green versus Patty. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If now, into now, it. now that now Bobby had his fight, Hinato, who, who is Patty's next fight? I, we just need to know. Is it, 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 it going to be Hinato? Is it going to be Bobby Green? It's got to be one of these guys. Right? I need they it to be a skill jump. Like, they, I they, they, they can't like, go really off the test. grid and give us some rando, right? I, they could. No, it's got to be a could, name. But it it's needs to be a name. name. It needs to be a name. Also, he's got all these guys calling him out. He's talking about them, too. It's got it, Bobby Hanato. It's one of those guys, for sure. Max Ilya. Yeah. Oh, 10, God. 20 out of 10. What's, yes. what's bigger than so, yes? So good. 10 times yes. Yes. Ilya got me fired up today. He's not a fan. Um, Yuri Ankalaev. Mm, I want to see. If that. Yuri is not fighting for the title, I want to see uh, Yuri versus Jamal Hill. Yes. I'm with Connor. And, and Ankalaev... And Pereira? 
I guess. He, he yeah, Uncle I mean, Ayev deserves sense. that. I mean, yeah. he, he hasn't lost in, in no. forever. And he, I mean, he, he should have gone the, uh, the media title shot after the draw. Like they went And it's totally... a guy that could potentially grapple uh, Pereira, which which could okay, cause issues for him. Okay, can I ask you something him. about that? Do we Please. care about the quote-unquote answering of questions with Alex Pereira? No, absolutely not. Are you I kidding don't. me? I don't want the questions yeah. answered. I want him to win a, a, a heavyweight title as well. I want him, yeah. to, I want him to have like a 15-fight MMA career that had... Uh, him as a double champ at one point, uh, belt across three titles and like a uh, fourteen and one record. Like I want it to be okay, ridiculous. So we're locked in right now. We're on the same page. On I want it to be yeah, the most legendary in. thing ever. The best case scenario is he just fights John Jones next, gets the heavyweight belt, and then just retires. <laughs> and he just had a twelve fight career. That's like the most ridiculous or a thirteen fight career. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. I love it. Poatan. Roundtree, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, I'd like <laughs> to see that for sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. one's saying Khalil's ra- name right now, and that's crazy. Bo this Nickel, guy did. Jack Hermanson. <laughs> uh, he's laughing, and no one saying his yeah. name is crazy. As if he's just like, crazy. they're all ducking. He's him. the boogeyman. They're division. all ducking Khalil. Yeah, I don't mind Hermanson for uh, for Bo Nickel. That's, funny. that's a big freaking that's, step up. That's but a if big he loses, step. If he loses I mean, that, then uh, Bo Nickel versus Joe Pfeiffer. We saw this with Joe Piper. Like yeah. Hermanson's not the guy you wanna you wanna uh, learn how to fight in the octagon against. I mean, that's a big leap. Not to say that he can't beat GM, him. Uh, Mike Heck threw out GM three on Saturday. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Um, Is I'll, Bo Nichols' next move headlining a fight night? Is that kind I don't of mind the, that either. I kind of like him being the pay per view guy. I don't want him. I like some him Apex. being a three round kind of pay per view guy. But yeah. I mean, but pretty crazy a, to a him. Hermanson, him being like, oh yeah, like this is one of the crazier cards I've been a part of, and like he's been a part of like yeah. 285 with John like Jones and International Fight Week. Like he's been on some pretty big cards. Can I say something? There is a a trickle down effect. You do get the rub. Like to me, I view when I view Bo, I'm like, yeah, that's a pay per view packed arena, Las Vegas guy. The fact that they keep putting Khalil on the Apex cards makes you feel like he doesn't have that moment. He doesn't have that shine. He doesn't have that buzz. So. If I'm him, I think that's accurate. Do you think? I mean, both... think about Ankalaev, right? Like, you know, he, like we we just need to see him more in a in a big spot. That's yeah. that's what we're missing. Do you think Bo would say yes to headlining a card, but it's at the apex? Fuck no. I I, I would I would say I would much rather be on a pay per view opener or even a pay per view prelim than that. I'm saying they offer it to him. Hey man, we'd like He'll you to fight it. Jared Mishart oh, headline maybe he takes at it, but like, UFC Apex ninety five. He'll take it, but I agree with Ariel. That's where yeah. he belongs. Uh, Aljo Ortega That's where he belongs. Hell yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I sure, do really sure. love Aljo Mofsar too, and then Figgy Yan. Yeah, but it seems like oh Figgy Yan for sure. Kind of, yes, like, like if it, it can it happen, feels yeah. like they don't want it. Who would be next for Figgy? Because Figgy, I like Figgy had wanted Jan, and then Jan kind of like didn't want it, and now it seems like Figgy doesn't want it. Now he just wants a title shot. I, I would love that fight, but I don't. I don't know if it'll materialize. It's a great Figgy, fight, though. Figgy Cheeto. I'm down for that. Oh. Figgy Song Yudong. That's a fun one. He's such a welcomed addition to 135 because they've kind of been knocking each other off, and now he gets to hop in. He's. I feel like one more, and then he's he's knocking on the door. There's just so many people knocking on that door. I I, I get it. <laughs> he also writes, congratulations on your new moniker, Mystic Mensch. After foreshadowing in your Mighty Mouse interview last week, people getting their black belts after scoring knockouts. Did you see that? Uh, Alex Pryor that getting great. a black belt. Yeah, that was really good. Thanks for everything that you all do. Amazing week of content. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, Gary asks if all number one contender fights should be five rounds. Yes, but they very rarely dub fights number one contender fights beforehand. But yes, in a perfect world, uh, would love it. Would absolutely love it. Because I I, I did sort of feel like um, Oliveira Armin should be five rounds. And then, and then, like, is Costa Strickland a five-round fight? Uh, uh, El Peruano, Ariel. Hi, Jacqueline. Is one of the funnier moments in recent show memory. Listening to Asim Zaidi talk about his wife last week made me wonder how was, how has Jacqueline influenced your career in the show? Also, shout out to El Cubano. Come back and be go. Yeah, where is El Cubano? He used to be first. Um, I mean, I've said this before. Like, if I didn't have stability, my wife. My kids, if I didn't have that, I don't think I'd get to anywhere near where I am now, wherever that is. Um, 
the fact that we've known each other since we were so young, the the friendship, the camaraderie, the connection, all that stuff, uh, it just goes a long way. The trust. Um, so yeah, it just, you can't put a price on that knowledge, that confidence that you get when you leave. You don't feel, I, I, I was never made to feel uh, guilty for leaving. I was never, never made to feel like I should be staying home or told that I should stay home. And, uh, you know, back in the day, I used to travel a hell of a lot more than now. Um, so it's, it's just been huge. Like that's what you want in a partner in crime, so to speak. That's what you want in someone supporting you. That's what you want with someone having your back. That's what you want with someone who's allowing you to chase your dreams. We got engaged and I started my website, jerrypark.com. I had no job. I had nothing. I was not earning any money. And I'm starting a website where I'm interviewing fighters that I meet off of MySpace. It's crazy. And never questioned it, never doubted it. Always had my back, always supported. So, um, yeah, that's that's all you can ask for, really. And uh, so I feel very lucky. And then you have the stability of home, and then you have the kids who give you balance and perspective, and 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 motivation and drive and and happiness and and a good distraction. And it's just yeah, uh, feel feel very very lucky. Now I will say we are headed to penalty kicks in this Man City uh, Real Madrid tilt, which is quite wild. So we're going to keep our eye on this, and maybe even a little play by play. Stay tuned. You got it up on your computer now too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this is this is must see TV right here. Um, Samuel is asking me why I always tell fighters not to read the comments, and then I address the comments sometimes. He makes a great point. I just wanted to read that to hold myself accountable, but he's right. I do say that to the fighters, and I do address them sometimes. And so you're right. I need to do better, and uh, I will work on this, Samuel. Thank you for calling me out. Now, here we go. I'm actually quite nervous. I wonder if my boys are watching right now. I think they have soccer. Julian boys Alvarez. Want Man City to win. Yeah. Well, yeah. my older son, uh, my oldest son, uh, Oliver, loves Man City. Julian Alvarez up first. What a scene this is. And they're at they're at Etihad, right? Yeah. Man, this is it. The treble because I believe they're going to win the Premier League. I think they'll win FA Cup. They could go back to back treble treble. Never actually, been done. They might be at the at the Bernabeu. Man, look at Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker sweating. Okay, here we go. No, Champions Etihad, League. Sorry. What's that? They are at the Etihad. Sorry. Just had to do a little double check there. Um, Andy Koufax says that Diego Lopez looks exactly like a young Jim Lampley. Vidal Sassoon hair notwithstanding. And I thought about this, and I actually think it's fantastic. Jim Lampley with the... With the, the 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 jaw, the chin. It's a great call. Julian Alvarez up first. Here we go. Well, quite behind me. And oh wow. He what he scored at that point? Uh no, he yeah. Many seconds before that. Oh well. How's that even possible? I don't know. Refresh your browser. Yeah, I just did. All right, so he did score, by the way. I didn't even actually finish yeah, yeah, the yeah. thought if anyone's uh, <laughs> following along. Uh, now we have uh, Luka Modric. Of, uh, by the way, can I get a shout-out for like knowing the people by their faces now? I mean, a couple of years ago, it wasn't quite the same. I mean, Luka Modric has the bound or No, come on. Um, Ederson in goal. And here we go. Luka is stopped. Is stopped. <laughs> But now we're synced up. Now we're synced up. Oh perfectly. my yeah. God! What a save by Ederson. Oh, he's angry. Oh yeah, I, I kind of feel like I need to call my son right now. Um, oh my God. That I don't is know who a, I want to win. That is a huge save, Ederson, the Brazilian native. Okay, back to the questions. <laughs> Did the Max KO change my stance on the BMF? I mean, I think that KO happens with or without the BMF. BMF is fun, man. It's fine. I don't it's care. Fun. Yeah, I'm not, I'm there not. it is. He's come around to it. Just take it for what it is. It's a gimmick. It's fine. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the old man. I'm not the old man on the lawn telling the kids to get off. You're guaranteed to get a sick fight. This is something fun. Oh my god! All right. So yes, I'm fine with it. Anyway, here we go. Bernardo Silva just what was that? Oh, Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva just shot that? it straight at the goalie. What was that? 
Ah, uh, you know yourself, Bernardo Silva. What was that? That's bad. He just kicked it right to the goalie. That's but, bad. By the way, I, my son would know this. Real Madrid goalie. What is his name? Oh, is it Thibaut Courtois? No, no, no. It's not because he's injured. I'm going to look this up. Wow. He really shat the bed there. No thing about the BMF belt. If it does go Ilya Max and they're both on the line, that would be the first time uh, a champion would have the BMF belt. Okay. So that's an interesting thing. Oh, here's my guy, Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham. Hey, oh, Jude. Gotta be oh, him. easy work for Jude. No problems right there. No problems. No problems for Jude Bellingham. I mean, this is incredible theater right now. Jude Bellingham, like a cool-ass customer, right? Just walking up. Uh, no problems. I love Jude. By the way, I was DMing with him a couple of uh, days ago. Did you know that? No. Okay. Did you wish him good luck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're the man, Jude. Okay, this gentleman I don't know. Who's this? Who's this? He's a good bloke, number eight. I need my son here. And here's Man City up, and he saved! He oh. got saved! <laughs> ah! He blew it, number eight. Andre Lunin, the Ukrainian national, with the big save on... I don't know who number eight is. Oh, Holland's out, huh? They sat him down. He can't do it. Wow. Okay, we continue. <laughs> <laughs> to the questions we're just gonna oh my god Andre I love the BMF there it is it's all the clip we needed right there did I yes that's it okay the distracted I love the BMF dude now here we go here comes Real Madrid looking to take the lead and a little bit of stutter step and they score back wow. to the net Real Madrid can I say I'm sort is it weird I'm, I'm rooting for Man City uh, I'm rooting for Real Madrid. Really? Yeah. I, I do love Jude. Oh, this love one. Jude. It's Portoporia. Yeah. But I, I'd like I'd like to see them go back to back, even though they what they've they've got 115 infractions. Yeah. yeah. Also, you yeah. know, let's get some shake up here. You think so? Yeah, let's get some shake. Uh, I mean, Phil also Foden. we're saying this. I mean, Real Madrid has also won, I think, 14 or whatever. Here's our guy Phil Foden. The youngster, the English national, and he puts it in the back of the net, 2-2. Two, two. Ooh, he's got a little thing on his hand there, huh? He's got a little thing on the fingers. Ah, uh, Phil Foden. Uh, Rick, are you locked in as well? Rick's out of here. Uh, Matt is asking, where can he get a, a Who Me t-shirt? Working on it. Coming, I promise. Um, ooh, Who Foden. Me? Foden walked by that other dude on uh, Real Madrid. It was a little, uh, a little showmanship there. Uh, Dublin 1929 is asking me about why no matchroom Eddie Hearn involvement. I think we'll hear more about this in the coming weeks, but ultimately I think they... Oh, here's Real Madrid. Ooh, back in the net. So this is it. This is it right here, right? If Man City misses this... Yeah. Win and then Real has to... Or get it in and Real has to kick or... No, it was that the fifth. Was, was that the fifth or was that, it... was, that was Real's fourth. Oh, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, anyway, I think we're going to find out more about all this. Okay, here we go. Oh, Ederson going up there. The goalie. I love when this happens. <laughs> I love when this happens. The Brazilian national. Oh, look at Pep. Pep is nervous. Ederson wearing the gloves. Here we go, Ederson. Back in the net. Woo! Right in the corner. Wow. Well done, Ederson. Cool as can be. Oh, uh, yeah, know yourself. Goalie versus goalie. Now is the goalie going to respond? This is nerve-wracking stuff. Or Brian Tucker says that uh, his stream is lagging, so we're I'm way sorry. ahead of him. I'm sorry. Uh, this is this is Champions League quarterfinals, the defending champs against El Galacticos. I mean, what what is better than this? I mean, this is it right here. This is for it. Oh, my God. This is it. Yeah. This number 22. Who's number 22? I want to give the guy props. He's, he looks like a, a good young man. Oh, uh, Rudiger. It's uh, Antonio Rudiger, the German national, to send Real Madrid to the semifinals. Ah, oh, and he puts it in wow, the back of the net. Go. Yeah, now let's yourself, go. Real Madrid. The kings are dead. The witch is dead as the entire team converges midfield. Oh, and it is silent. Stunned silence. At Etihad, 
A rare moment of defeat for Pep and the boys. They have not tasted this in quite some time. Someone get Dakota Decheva on the phone right now. We'll do oh, it. We'll, yeah. we'll do it. We'll it's do a little round table with Ilya. Oh, uh, they did it. <laughs> As the Real Madrid supporters are in full force, celebrating, rejoicing on cloud nine, Jude Bellingham in his home country, running over to the supporters. Uh, they hope for a different scene at the Euros later on this year as Jude, of course, will be representing England. But that is it. So Bayern and Man City, no, Bayern and Real Madrid advance. That means no English teams left. No English teams left. And I do want to say hello to my son who is watching right now. And I do believe my wife as well. I told them to watch my play-by-play to listen. Maybe I was the one that uh, that uh, informed them of the news. I'm sorry. I was rooting for Man City. I think we all were, right, GC? You were rooting for them as well, right? No, I was cheering for Real Madrid. I thought they made that. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, was just, you know, I was a little kid watching. You're wearing your, you know, no, 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 no. I, we need that German representation in the. Do uh, we? In the Do final. we? I mean, we already have one team. In, oh, you want Germany versus Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's boring. Yeah, yeah. We could see that in the Bundesliga. What do we need to see that? <laughs> no, I, I just need one team. I just. Oh, need one he hit team. the post. He hit the post. The game winner hit the post and went in. Brilliant. He almost Brilliant, botched it. Ah, uh, yeah, know yourself. Wow, what a scene. These are the champions. Sing with me, guys. The champions. We got to end on 24, right? Shout out to Kobe. Let's end on 24. Great questions. Great day. Oh, look at Vinny Jr. up in there. Vinny Jr., let him know, Vinny. Backed you all along. Vinny fired up. Oh, and they're dancing. Yeah, they just took out the defending champs going to the semifinals. I'd be fired up too. So 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 now the 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 semis are um uh PSG against Dortmund and Real Madrid against uh Bayern. Bingo. Let's I ha- go. I hate when it's the same country in the final. It doesn't feel special. I'm going for PSG against PSG Real Madrid, not a bad final. I mean it's a legendary final. Yeah. The Killian Mbappe Cup. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Look at nah, you. Give me, give me BVB Real Madrid. Okay, I could live with that. I could live with that. I could live with that. Rick, uh, let's go to you. Your quick thoughts on what we just witnessed. Magic. <laughs> like, just <laughs> tremendous stuff. Give me the Das Klassiker in the, uh, in the Champions League final. That would be... Uh... BVB versus Bayern. Sure, 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 sure. We'll all drink out of boots. Gentlemen... It's time to go. What a day. What a time. What a show. What a week. What a stretch for us. Um, A final reminder, you will not see us until May 6th, which feels like a long ways away, but it's April 17th. And in total, that's four shows, two weeks. But I do want to remind you, we gave you two extra shows last week. So in, in, in reality, it's really only two shows. And I do also want to remind you that we gave you a Saturday show back in February with the whole time if you're scoring at home. In any event, it is time to go, Frank. You can hit my music. Wow. When are the semifinals? What a day for Ilya. Two Come, weeks. Comes back on the show and his, uh, his squad wins. What a time. You are always on my mind. You are always... On my mind. Oh, my. You guys going to Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney on Saturday? Who, me? Gonna try to. Have you been to Barclays? I have, several times. Frank, have you been there? I have not. Are you going? No. Can't be bothered. Missed an opportunity. Mm. We had a malfunction at the junction. Yeah. <laughs> Could be worse. Uh, would you like to go? Yeah. You want me to get you a pass? Um, you could be if my... you could arrange that. I mean, I could I hold could the say, microphone for you. I could say I need my own audio guy. No, I mean, everyone does. Well, I could say, like, the audio is so perfect on my show. Why wouldn't you want to have him work on the show? Good point. All right. A lot of tickets left. Uh, according to Oscar, it's going to be sold out. 
I heard him say that. He also said over a million buys. Well, you can get in for like 120 bucks. Not bad. Not bad. All right, Frank. 120 it is. Uh, Yan Chanan, Bo Nickel, Yuri Pochaska, Mike Perry, Oscar De La Hoya, Mike Chandler, Iliad Sporea. Thanks to them. Thanks to them. Thanks to you. Back on May 6th. Hey, Diamond Bison. Peace. I'm out of here.